Welcome to Atari Age Day 2023 as presented by us. Yeah. <laughs> Zero Page Homebrew. Oh boy, do we have a big day planned for you oh, yeah. and the developers and us and the cats. Yeah, who are running around somewhere. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see on the webcam over here, so a huge stack of games. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> 22 games. That's awesome. Yes, we're going to be going through unboxing 22 new Atari Age releases today mm -hmm. and talking to 17 different developers today. Oh my God. So some of them have made multiple games. Quite prolific group we have. <laughs> um, so I'm very, very excited. Um, the games that we'll be unboxing today, uh, RT, EXO, uh, Bot and Tom, Robot Z, uh, Odin Nexus, Growing Ties Deluxe, Electro Ball, Berry Fun, Harpy's Curse, Ooze of the Goo Gaiden, Game of the Bear Too Much to Bear, Nova Gen Volume 1, Rocket Ranger, Defender of the Crown, Penalt, Quantum Tunnel, Million Molly, Death Merchant, Plum Luck DX, Immunity, Karamuho, and Scorch. Going across 2600, 5200, 7800, Lynx, Lynx and Jaguar. Jaguar. Yeah. That's oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> it that's is a awesome. lot of games. And a lot of systems. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'll be unboxing. Tanya will be playing. Yeah. We're not going to be really getting into the playing of the games too much. We won't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, so we're playing it. But, we'll just uh, be kind of showing the game on the screen, yes, yeah. but not getting into too much into the nitty gritty of the gameplay. You can look at other videos that we've done of the gameplay. Yes. We've, we've played a Quite lot a of these Quite a few of them. Games. I was actually going through them because I will be doing a lot of the playing and I was kind of reviewing which ones we had done. And yeah. there's really only a handful I think I personally haven't played before. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, there's lots of videos out there, long extended play <laughs> videos if yeah. you want to watch hours them, hours. you know, yeah. after after Atari Age Day. And, Yes. Um, and also quite a few just out there on YouTube as well, like playing these games. Although yes. you should be watching Zero Page first <laughs> <That's> <laughs> before right. you go to those other those other uh, content creators. So, yeah. But yes, there's lots of videos of them if you want a more extended play. Yeah. So we'll be talking with the developers about 20 minutes each uh, for each game. Um, but first up, uh, we're going to be talking with the man himself, Albert Yoruso, uh, the person who... Uh, kind of conglomerates all this together he's he's the um place who def who releases all of these games atari age he runs atari age he uh it's pretty much a one person operation at atari yeah. age <laughs> i don't know how he does it but let's uh, bring him on this is al yuruso welcome al hello to atari age doing? day 2023 hey how are you hey. doing today good you can hear me. We That's can great. see you. We can hear you. <laughs> we fixed all the issues. Good. I think so. We far. hope so. We hope so. If anyone, if anyone uh, hears anything, just jump in the chat. You know. But yeah. If think... if there's anything amiss, if you yes. can't hear somebody or something's too loud or too quiet, just just scream, yeah. scream, chat as best you can. <laughs> yeah. Just alert, 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 alert. So welcome, Al. Great um, to be here. It's good to see you guys after a couple months. Just a couple months this time. Yeah, yeah, we last saw Al at PRGE. Yep. Um, yeah, helped out at the Atari Age booth. Yes. Put a lot of thank these you. games together. Yes, I, I think know. I folded a few of those boxes. That was, a, <laughs> yeah. that was about 800 yeah. games that we assembled uh, the day before the show. So a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. Love the background there. Thank you. Uh, very festive. Yes, those, those <laughs> lights have actually been up there all year, but now I can turn them on and off. <laughs> You know, for the holidays. Yeah, just like most people's uh, Christmas lights outside their house. They just, yeah, they they leave them so long. It's like, ah, uh, they'll be good till next Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Are you speaking from... Um, so... Okay, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so 22 games. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Again, it's, you've I know. overloaded yourself. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> so one of the things that Atari really wants to help me with is streamlining the physical production process so I'm not spending 80% of my time building games. And shipping games. Yes. And there's definitely overlap yep. in what I, between what I do and what they do. And they can help me with a lot of things, such as accounting, uh, managing royalties and paying them right. out every quarter. Instead of doing it once a year, as I've been doing, they can do the 1099s, just all that stuff that I have to do now. That'll be a big help. Oh, good. They can put up the money so I can get you know large quantities of flash base boards for all these different systems produced, which is one of the things we're really going to work on in the first quarter. Uh, this way, I'm not soldering nearly as many 2,600, 5,200, 7,800 games, Jaguar games. Jaguars are a huge pain in the neck because they those big QG problems they use. 
Uh, so that'll help immensely. Mm. We're going to do a new 2600, 700 uh, board uh, shell that doesn't have any compromises that we've seen from, or I've seen from a lot of third party shells. Uh, and nice. then, you know, without the crazy dust cover, dust cover mechanism, which is t unnecessary and just causes <laughs> so many problems, takes longer to build the games. Sometimes those springs come loose, yep. you know, and the board dislodges or whatever. Yep. Uh, Sometimes they catch catch when you yeah, put them in. It's yeah. like, why isn't this going in? It's like, ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the goal is to really have a whole bunch of cartridges that are have the boards on them. I can just put them in a fixture, program them, test label, put them in a box, and it's done. And that'll be just, oh, great. You know, that'll be, you know, a quarter of the time to build these games uh, versus what I'm doing now. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately yeah. get people to, you know, I'm going to set up a new Atari facility at once we move. We're going to be moving out of Texas pretty soon. Uh, you know, kind of a, either a standalone facility or, you know, soft space somewhere. We yeah. can actually hire somebody to help do a lot of these tasks, like uh, assembling games and shipping games, which allow me to focus, you know, on, on you know, direct interacting more with the homebrew community to get new games in the Atari Damn. age. Also, You're not moving to Canada? Are you moving here? No, but like, I could help you with that. It might be close to Canada, though. So <laughs> it'll, be, it'll certainly be a lot closer to Canada than where I am in Texas right now. Uh, that's, that's guaranteed. pretty far. Unless we move to Canada. <laughs> so, or Australia. Yeah, or Hawaii or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Yeah, every so, shipping would be really expensive for everybody in, from Hawaii. Yeah. So, or Canada, oh boy, Canada, yeah, yeah, Canada as well. Or Canada as well. Yeah, we yeah, have bad, terrible. bad shipping it's prices. Oh. Yeah. So, so they're going to help you streamline a lot of this stuff and let you have more time to do uh, what you want to do, rather yes. than you know a lot of the yes. paperwork stuff, which is pretty boring. Well, not just paperwork <laughs> stuff, but just the physical production of games is you know very monotonous. Yeah, uh, it takes a lot of time. Uh, it has to be done you know, one way or the other. So, you know, it, it ends up excluding yeah. me from doing a lot of other things when I'm doing that. And, of course, right now I'm working on all those last chance orders. Uh, you know, that's basically going to be my focus until I get all those damn things out. Uh, so it's just a ridiculous yeah. number of games that people purchased. Uh, and I wanted to get people, <laughs> oh, I I wanted to give people the opportunity to buy them because that was going to be it, especially with the boxes, too. So I had to order, you know, additional boxes for some of the games, labels, manuals. Uh, but I have all those materials. Right. And uh, it's just a matter of just slogging through it and, and getting them all out. And I did, right yeah. before the show this morning, uh, yeah. I got all the new games. So all the new games are now in the store. Everything's live. I added the SNS oh, Atari great. adapter so people can purchase that separately. There's now three games in the store that take advantage of that. Uh, Petsky Robots, yep. RD, and EXO. I, I may have gotten those screwed up. There might be there might be a different game than RD and EXO. But, uh, and then yeah. I, there's an Atari Tat in the shirt now for the first time. We had these made for the oh, great. So those are finally yeah. in the store. Yeah, after nice hats. The shirts that we made, you know, for, for a PRG, which has PRG 2023 <laughs> on, the, on the sleeve here. So I can't. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, just the, oh, and all the 2022 games that are still in the store uh, can now be optionally purchased with a box. You don't have to get the box with them anymore. Uh, so I was scrambling, oh, wow. Yeah. So I was scrambling to get all that yep, done great. before, obviously, this deadline of the show today. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, because people are going to be putting in a lot of orders, yeah. so you want to clean up and make sure everything else is in order as yes. well. Yeah, yeah, so I spent a lot of time in that. And, and again, just to be clear, none of these games that are in the store now, these new games, none of them are going to ship till I get through the, the last chance orders. Uh, there's no way in hell yeah. I, would, I would do that uh, because I know people are <laughs> first in, at first the out, right? exactly. Yeah, uh, so yeah. that's that'd be my main focus, and then uh, at least I'll have an idea of how many games, and I do have a lot of leftover games from PRG for these new games, but still, I'm just going to sit okay. on I need to sit on them until I get through these last chance orders. I will get all the yeah. developers' games out this next week. I need to email everyone, get their address, so the developers will yep. get their games well before everyone else. Uh, so those, I'll get those out pretty soon. Uh, yeah. So, they also, for first quarter next year, I'm working on getting that new store online, finally. Uh, it's Great. It's going to yeah. be either Shopify or BigCommerce. It's going to be much better than the existing store. It'll let me get the digital downloads in the store, finally. Uh, and just fix a lot great, of other things. Great, great. Uh, you know that you know it's an old the so software that's being run now is pretty old. They've been updating it with security updates and things, but really haven't been adding a lot of features to it. So it's pretty far behind relative mm -hmm. to anything that's you know relatively modern. Uh, yeah. So uh, and one other thing I just want to mention is the Twenty Six Hundred Plus. As far as homebrew games go, yes. I know that pretty yeah. much every uh, homebrew game will work with the first uh, patch that's going to be shipped pretty soon. Or you know I don't know exactly wow. when, but it'll. Probably be in January, or February, the latest. Twenty six hundred plus. Now or, you said you said homebrew game. Yes, because almost none of, none every homebrew game. None of wow, them work right now because of the yeah. version of Pro System that's uh, seven hundred Pro System that's being used. It does if it's not in the database of games, it doesn't you know know what yes. it is, and it won't even try running it. Uh, so that's why the right. old games run, but none of the new stuff does. But that's been fixed. 
uh, with the help of so there's going to be community. like a it's going to be like a cat and mouse every time a new homebrew gets released uh, you need to push an update to add that to the database I'm guessing or uh, is it going to be like more of an open it'll run anything no I think they have another solution uh, that won't require having to, to continually do that uh, but, oh, great. but we'll see because I know I'm not originally I was going to generate the MD5 checksums for all the homebrew games but I don't have to do that now which is great yeah. Because there's so many of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, this, yeah. This, that first update is going to be really big. It's going to make all these 700 homebrew games run. And I swear, I get I get so many messages on eBay now from people. Will this game run on the 2600 Plus? Will this get you the 2600 and 700 oh. games? Which is kind of astounding yep. how, many email, how many messages I'm getting. Because that's only been out for a little while. So, they, you know, they must be selling yep. a lot of those. Uh, so that's I, I think so. I see it a lot on social media. Just yeah. constantly. People holding up the... the yeah. The 2600 plus beside their face, and they're like, I got it, I got it. Yeah. So there's a big excitement for the yeah, 2600 plus. Yeah, people definitely, you know, they're, they're excited about it and getting these updates out that improve the compatibility, not just with legacy games, but especially the homebrew stuff. That's what I'm focused on more than anything is making sure all yeah. these games work. We're going to try to get all the melody, you know, the melody stuff to run. If we can do that, that would be amazing. Uh, you know, yeah. all of John's games, and just there are a lot of other uh, games that use the, the melody, a lot of even the Atari Basic games, some of them use melody. Uh, so that'll be a huge help. Right. Plus, plus some of the area games that use the Sarah uh, uh, extra 120 bytes of RAM. Uh, those do work. Like the original games from back in the day, like Defender 2, uh, do work fine. Yeah. But the, some of the Homer games don't work. And that's just a matter. It's not running it properly. And, like it doesn't realize it's a supercharger uh, 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 SC game, the Sarah game. Uh, so the game's often booted yeah. up. But then they're all, you can see they're all screwed up where obviously it's using the RAM for things and not working right. Right. Uh, so that's the other thing, right. and I know you know they they've gotten Circus Convoy to work, for instance. Uh, yeah, and just you know, recently. Yeah, yeah and you know I know Ben wants to get Ben from Play On wants to get Pitfall Two running, for instance. Uh, yeah. So oh yeah, well, so we'll obviously see. a lot of people are going to be popping that into their system. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty exciting, and we're not going to put that homebrew compatibility list out until we get this first patch released, and then test against that. Yeah, and then you know we'll have a much smaller set of uh, games that don't work at that point. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, you know, even even games like Millie and Molly and Attack of the Petsky Robots and stuff are running uh, on the 20 kind of Plus now. And those are oh, uh, two wow. of the, some of them are advanced. I don't know about uh, Ricky and Vicky uh, yet. I don't, and I don't have one of those to test, uh, which was stupid. I should have bought yeah. one of those. Uh, so. That's that's going to be the 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 watermark for yeah. for high compatibility is yes. is Ricky and Vicky, especially for with sure. the audio too uh, in that game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, how, how are my 20 minutes up yet? So. <laughs> <laughs> you're, get, you're getting close. Okay. Um, I, I did have a couple oh, questions. No, play, yes, please. Uh, I've gone for on you. now for 15 <laughs> minutes, so please ask, ask away. Uh, so uh, every every previous year, you've, you've pretty much made a huge dump of games once a year, and it's usually at PRG, as yeah. we can see here again, this huge stack beside me, 22 games. Um, are you going to try and work towards uh, uh, multi-releases like twice a year, maybe, uh, in the next year? I know you, you've always wanted to work yeah. towards that, but it always ends up, it's a, it is a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That. Longer term, that's absolutely going to be planned. The plan for 2024, that's probably not going to happen because the focus is going to be get yeah. the store moved to new software. We need to move. We're going to try to move in the first quarter also, and that's obviously going to be a huge time sink. I have to get all these, you know, yeah. you know, hundreds and hundreds of orders out for the last chance games. Uh, you know, this that's is all true. the first yeah. part, of the first quarter so far. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. uh, what else? I'm leaving other things out. Too. So realistically, yeah. You know, so I'm not still working 60, 70 hours a week, you know, come May or, you know, April or May, or June. Uh, it's, we're probably yeah. not going to do any, you know, more like a release in the spring. Uh, there's going to be some things like we're going to do the EXO Collector's Edition. I'm going to get the AWA uh, right. collection out as well for the 8-bit and 5200. Some best special projects like that definitely going to get done. But it won't be a big drop right. of games in the spring. It'll probably be in DRG again. But next year we should really be set yeah. up. Oh, yeah, the, those new circuit boards and the cart shells. I want to have those fully into production by June. Uh, so I can use them for a yeah. PRG coming up. But come come this time next year, absolutely. The plan is to do you know release every couple months of a smaller number of games and just keep doing that through the year. And sure, at PRG you can still have a, you know maybe five or six new games, but not twenty. Uh, you know, cause, <laughs> and, and this yeah. this will help with games that they'll get more attention individually and as opposed to being a, a you know part of a big release of games. You know, it's it's much easier to to get everything ready you know, in smaller chunks instead of doing 20 games uh, all at once. I mean, yeah, huge and, amount of work. And people support. panic. 
and people panic when they see the the number of releases and they go oh my wallet and yeah. they don't want to buy a lot of them yeah. so spacing them out throughout the year is going to be a big big relief for people because i saw the the uh, flyer that you included oh, yeah, yeah. with the shipment yeah. and it's like oh my god it's like yeah. 21 games i think on there yeah, it's like oh he set himself up again for yeah. 2024 Yep. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's it's and there is there are a lot of games in the pipeline uh, for 2024. And the, yeah. the good thing right now, you know, I'm going to start working on these much earlier, uh, you know, than and yeah. not have surprises come PRG or not racing to get things done to last minute. It was a lot better than last year. In 2022, uh, a lot of the boxes didn't arrive oh. until Tuesday after the show. Uh, this year, that yeah. only happened with that was... Jaguar and Lynx games, uh, and that was don't <laughs> yeah. even get me started on that. That was that really pissed me off. Because uh, I should have had those long before <laughs> yeah. then, uh, and yeah, of course that was the box quite a debacle. Are always the most fun. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So get things. You know, I really want to have. I don't even want to be worrying about you know printing anything like come the last month, except for you know flyers maybe or things you know pr price sheets and, and placards for the you know for the displays. Uh, but I don't. Oh yeah, you don't want to be rushing. It. Yes, I mean I always say that, and you know intentions, best intentions, <laughs> everything. Those certainly, there's always some flyers yeah. at the end, but. I really want to have a lot of these games yeah. well in advance of the show. Uh, so we'll see how that goes this yeah. year. So, okay. uh, Another question. Yes. Uh, this year's uh, big release, again, includes two Lynx games. Yes. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first for Atari Age yes. to release Lynx games. Yes. Um, was, was there any challenges in, in sourcing, like the boards or the shells or even creating new sizes for boxes from your printers? Uh, no, the uh, the shells. You know, I I bought a whole ton of shells from Carl at Songbird, uh, so I'm good on those yeah. for a while. Uh, boards. I mean, there's common reference design for the links, so that's not you know. And the, the links, the circuit boards, are pretty simple. Uh, you know, there, there's no bank switching, and you know, just a chip and a, you know the EEPROM and and uh, uh, or the flash ROM and then the, an EEPROM. You know, to save games for games that need that. Uh, you know, and okay. then and so they're pretty simple. Uh, then uh the, the yeah the boxes manuals and labels yeah those are all unique sizes so you know i had to print all the, that stuff for the first time is always fun uh it should go a lot faster you know for for future releases because I, I love the links uh you know i bought one yeah. the day they're they came absolutely out. adorable boxes I know, they adorable are, boxes I, know, <laughs> I need to get an appropriate size bag for those two because those boxes are so tiny relative to the jaguar and yep. 2600 200 700 boxes uh so i need a smaller yeah. bag for those but yeah so this is it did take way too long to get these two first two uh games out and you know i have to give uh you know kudos to the developers for being impatient for those two games to get them out but now that the hurdle of yeah. getting the first couple games out is, is over uh it'll be much easier to produce links games additional links games down the road uh yeah so yeah i mean i'm excited about that because it's, it's such an amazing system and i wish it had kicked the game boy's ass back in the day uh but unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately that wasn't yeah. the case yeah but they're, they're set to it is an absolutely game. amazing system. How yes. much, how, how much uh, power it has yes. in it? Oh yeah, like small resolution, but the power behind it yep. is is mm -hmm. astounding. It reminds me of the modern Pico Eight yeah. almost, which is like a, a virtual console that never existed. It's got really low resolution, but the, the pixel pushing that it has yeah. is is amazing on the links. So, oh yeah, yeah, the, the, really impressed. Yeah, the two D sprite rotation and scaling and everything else that it had too. Uh, yeah, it was a really powerful uh, system, especially compared to the Game Boy. It had a color screen. The color screen wasn't the greatest, yeah. but it was color backlit, so you didn't have to use the, that yeah. magnifier with the the, with the, <laughs> you know, the, the light, the light on, on it. it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but the battery life sucks, and that that helped kill it. Uh, you know. That, yeah. And, you know, and it didn't have what didn't have as many games coming out for it, obviously, as like the the Game Boy did. Uh, you know, everyone yeah, had a Game yeah, Boy. Of course. Uh, if you had a Lynx, you were kind of an aberration back then. But it was such a badass. <laughs> and the Lynx, too. I love it the is, Lynx, too. Yeah. The, the form factor of that just amazing. You know, being able to flip it yeah. or being able to rotate it 90 degrees for vertical games. Just, you know, and, you know, it's all neat things like that. Uh, so. Yeah, it's got a lot going for it. And uh, it's great that it's found its way to homebrew and people are embracing it in the yeah. homebrew scene because it's, it's a really great system. It is. Yeah, I've got the Lynx 2 over here ready to go for the <laughs> Lynx games today. Oh, yeah, I'm kind of curious modded to see how for you our, do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's modded for VGA out. So, just, so yeah, uh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's my, the two I have that I use in the show also modified for VGA out. It's great. 
Yeah, it's really great. Well, your time's up. Okay. We're going <laughs> to kick you off <laughs> right. and get to the developers. Yes. But uh, I would love to have you on the show again yes. in the near future to go in depth more about, you know, the changes that yeah. have happened recently and what we can look forward to in the future, because I'm sure there's lots and lots to talk about. Oh, with definitely. That. Yeah, we could go on for a lot longer than 20 minutes on that so we will yeah. we will maybe we'll maybe when the uh new updates come for the atari uh 2600 uh, plus um to give more compatibility to homebrew that would be probably a real really good time sure we could do to, that to coincide it with that yeah. yeah we'll plan on something definitely so yeah well, I'll, let, I'll, I'll let you get on with the show i look forward to watching for the next 13 hours uh and <laughs> Minimum thirteen. Minimum, minimum. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I have, I have, I have. I'm prepped. I've got my food, water, drinks, and uh, you know other things Excellent. to do while watching this the stream. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> have fun. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much. You're thanks, Al. Yep. Talk to you guys soon. Talk to you soon. Yep. Bye bye. Excellent. One down. Twenty two to go. Because <laughs> he didn't have a game to show. Yeah, yeah. there we go. <laughs> um, so if you want to um, queue up Money Funster, and uh, we're going to be talking with Lewis Hill I, uh, first off the top. Get yeah. the video going? Yeah, just okay. click on the video. That sounds good. And we'll uh, connect offline. There we go. So next up, uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Lewis Hill and also known as Muddy Funster Online from Muddy Vision. We've got two games from him. Uh, there is. Remember to move the mouse out of the way and double click to make it full screen. And we won't, uh, we didn't uh, have him on at two in the morning this time. Oh, he appears to be a frozen. Uh oh. <laughs> we'll might see what be happens. us, might be him. Um, so we're going to be uh, discussing two games, RT and EXO, from him mm -hmm. on the 7800. Are we going to unbox or unbox yeah. during our, oh, our conversation? Yeah, unbox during the conversation. Okay. Oh, we've got him back live. There we go. He's excellent. moving around. <laughs> A little bit more pixelated, but uh, excellent. Okay, so let's uh, bring him on. And the first game we're going to be taking a look at is RT. So we're okay. going to be unboxing that, and then we'll pop in the game. Okay. And then you can play. Here we go. Welcome, okay. Lewis. How are you doing today? Good. Thank you, James. Thanks for having me on. Hi, Tanya. Hello. A little bit, a little bit earlier than last time, where we uh, kind of mixed up the <laughs> AM PM time zone. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, 8, 8 uh, PM is from... much better than 3 AM. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more awake. A little bit more conscious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that, but you know, we learn. We live. We learn. <laughs> So uh, we're going to unbox your first game uh, of two. My goodness. Yeah, there's a bunch of people that have two games out. You guys have been yeah. working working hard. Um, first one is Arty. So let me move all these out of the way. And uh, Not a lot of space, but here. Do you want to put them down here? Yes, please. Okay. And I think I handed you Arty. I think you did. There's, we're going to need that one. Yes. <laughs> Bought. Sorry. So um, let's just talk a little bit about the artwork first, because that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So there is RT. Let me bring up it in the uh, big screen here. There we go. So RT. The um, packaging artwork was done by John Calsano, Artari Bar 2600. And yep. uh, he was actually at PRGE this year. So I was luckily be able to meet him for the first time. Yeah, and I was, I was gutted I guy. wasn't able to make it this year because I would have loved to have met John just to personally thank him for the work because he's, he's pretty much done the artwork for all of my games, I think. Um, and I would have just loved the chance to have met him in person just to thank him for his efforts. But he's uh, such a talented artist. He really is. And so versatile. He was showing me yeah. his uh, portfolio and I was like, wow, there is a lot of different styles that he's really adept at. That was the cat, by the with, way. With the, um, oh. with, with the art, I mean, I... I gave um john a bit of a this is kind of what i'm thinking and then he brings that to life you know he then goes away and he starts to make um sketches and then the, the sketches then develop and become more fully formed then the color gets added and the detail 
and it's I find it such a fascinating process to watch these the ideas. I mean, I I communicate a few ideas, and he brings that to life. It, it's amazing. Oh yeah. Um, so, what kind of ideas did you send over to him for the the box design? I guess that was the first thing. Is like the the front of the box to yeah. kind of develop that. So 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 really, we were talking about. Um, it's the game has a number of different graphical themes for its different zones, and I wanted it to be, you know, um, the 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 arty apprentice or one of the apprentices um, coming out with a successful rescue, or you know, and just showing off some of the, you know, the cameos in the background and some of the different critters and creatures that you you face in the uh, in the game. Oh yeah, because here in the manual, it's got. Uh, the bats, snakes, and spiders. So that was always like uh, it's a callback to original manuals. When you look at the manual, yeah. and you go, "Oh, that's what it's supposed to look like in real life," <laughs> and yeah. and you could almost you almost can imagine it in the game when you're playing. You, 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 you let your right? room, you imagine, you, you see some of those old Atari games, and you see like half a dozen blobs, but that's a bat, or that's a <laughs> spider, or that's a that's the enemy mothership and it's you know your brain fills in the blanks and does the rest and it's you know we, we kind of wanted to go to that in the um in the manual a bit of a throwback to those old style exactly and um the inclusion of the poster like where does the decision I, i've never asked this where did this does the decision of the poster inclusion come from is it al going this cover art is amazing we need to do a poster or are you going to Al, it's like, it, I think we should include a poster in this. It, it varies. Some some titles, I'll be talking to Al and I'll be thinking, you know, look, I think a poster might work really well here. And sometimes Al just makes it into a poster and then just tells me later, by the way, we've got this poster, it looks really cool. It's like, <laughs> it, it totally does. <laughs> Artie yeah. was an Al, yeah, AXO was a, was a me. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, let's boot up the game. Um, okay. Let me get controller away from the cat there yeah away from the cat uh someone asked yes atari had a bit just just almost bit one of the braided cables and it flashed oh my so god so i'm gonna have to keep an eye on this little guy he's he's hiding by the side of the laptop here yeah. so. luckily we've still got it working yeah cool. i was like oh my gosh <laughs> al al said in the chat he Bad printed cat. six six posters this time which is the most ever Oh is, yeah. yeah, so lots of posters. And and at the Atari Age booth at PRG, of course, he's got all the covers. All oh, those blown enormous, up. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, really, really big ones. So let's uh, get the game going here. So let me just okay. Okay, one second, everybody. Pokey detected, safe save device detected. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. It's uh, it's like doing uh, it's running its checks. I love that. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> for the for the cartridge release, I mean the Pokey detect it's a bit redundant. We know there's one in there, but it, it's just really if you're running the ROM yeah. version. Yeah, because there are some multi carts that have the option having a Pokey chip in it. So but they may not have one in there. Yeah. Yeah, so do you have a fallback for non-Pokey to go to TIA, or is it just silent and you punish no, those the, the people for is, not getting a Pokey? Yeah, the, <laughs> the fallback is you get no music. <laughs> and it's the silence. Yeah. But you did the sound effects um, through TIA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. So let me just make sure the volumes are good so it doesn't uh, overwhelm you. Okay, so... Um, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the team that uh, yeah. you have here uh, that helped you make the game. Obviously, you did the coding and graphics. Uh, Bobby Clark did the music. Mike Sarna is referenced as Code Guru, um, <laughs> and uh, Matt Smith, a music music help, and John Calsano, Atari Boy Twenty Six Hundred packaging artwork. So, how did this team come together? So, it usually, it comes along with me having. Um, some kind of fever dream mad idea for a game that I start then throwing a bit of code together 
when I've got something working, um, that's when I'll usually be reaching out to folks like Bobby um, to, you know, to enlist him and get him on board if he wants to do some music for the game. And then, then I'll, you know, wrangle up some testers. And that's usually, um, I'd, I'd be very remiss if I didn't mention uh, Steve, Robert, and um, and Jesse, because those guys really torture and abuse every build that I can make um, to ensure that they find every weird glitch and Jesse is the master of the weird glitch um, right. I think he's found more weird glitches than Tanya did with coppers when she when she repeatedly managed <laughs> to jump through the stairs, something I couldn't never do no matter how many times I tried <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's so, the power of the diversity of testers and the diversity yeah. of even consoles, because Sorry, consoles are quirky. They, they yeah, all yeah, have their yeah. own personalities, and um, it's yeah. to, to make sure that you get all those bugs out, the more testers, the better. And really good testers that are uh, good at the game or good at finding bugs in yeah. the game. Yeah, and, and they're good at trying things that I as the developer or the programmer i didn't think a player would try and do and then they try and do That's those right. things and it's like, okay <laughs> we need to put some fixes in for that or well, anti anti jesse code as we call it um but uh, but but yeah and I, i've put i think i've listed mike there as the code guru because whenever there's whenever yes. i hit a roadblock which, which happens um mike is a fantastic go-to person to to ask for advice or to to, to just you know Mike, I've got this problem, and I've been beating my head against the wall. Can you offer me a suggestion? And Mike is so fantastically right. generous with his time, um, and he, he is a super, um, uh, just a super guy to have around and help him with the community. It's a, such an asset. Um, Matt is the in the older games, uh, the way we had to be playing pokey music. Um, there was a very prescribed process to get the music into the code, and, uh, okay. and Matt was a fantastic help as. Um, almost like a pokey code wrangler to get the files <laughs> that Bobby would produce into a format that we could then use within the game. Um, and Matt's help there was just phenomenal. I tried it once and I just got, a, a, when you ran the code, it just screeched. It was like somebody had really done something horrible to a cat <laughs> with a hot poker. Oh no. Um, <laughs> yeah, you don't want that, so I, not pleasant. I went yeah. back to Matt and was like, mm, <laughs> need your help. <laughs> And, and uh, I mean, in general, the community is really great for that. Um, just putting a question out there and there's either somebody who's an expert on it or somebody uh, who has encountered it before in their own game. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing it's always exciting when it's something brand new and everybody's, oh, that's something we've never encountered. And they all jump on it and try and figure it out because they know they might run into it in their game in the future, too. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of developers that out there that either stick to original games or do ports or homages. And you're one of the few that do both interchangeably with your past releases mm. uh, of different games, you know, Keystone Coppers and, and RD as well. Um, they both take different skill sets in terms of design and creativity. Um, so which do you find easier to make? Because there's somewhat of an expectation, say, with Artie yeah. or Keystone Coppers uh, for people, right? And in an original game, there's no yeah. preconceptions with that. It's like, it is what it is. It's a blank slate, absolutely. I think, I think with the ports, I think the challenge there is you're probably going to be in a position where no matter what you come up with with your port, there's probably going to be somebody that doesn't like it because it's not true enough to the original or <laughs> there's going to be some feature that you had to adapt. Um, you know, the, the 7800 for all of its um, amazing bits of stuff that's inside things with, it, it's still a, a console of the, you know, the mid 80s, you know, and sometimes when you're trying to port some of these games, you can't do a one to one port. That's why I tend to prefer to go down yeah. a route of an adaptation rather than a port. I like to take the bits of the original that I liked and then get rid of the bits yes. I didn't like and then bring in other bits that make sense. Um, yeah. Coppers was a more one-to-one, -one, but I think RT was more of a definitely down the homage um, inspired by Ruth because there's a lot of stuff I rejected and there's a lot of stuff I brought in. 
Yeah. But and, if I had a the, the, um, favourite, I'd, I'd say probably is the originals. He's made, I, I prefer to do originals than the ports. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. might be a surprise. <laughs> yeah, since you've done a number of ports and and do you, yeah. The next question. Um, oh, I already covered that. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, is that your phone? Huh? Spam. Um, so what what kind of reception have you gotten from the community for uh, Artie and EXO? Is it is it uh, exceeded your expectations? Um, massively, yeah. I mean, for me, if if one or two people play the game and like it, I'm I'm happy because they've <laughs> they've they've got enjoyment from what I put together. Um, EXO, yeah. when that released on the VCS a little while back. Um, the reception that that had, I mean, I got so many messages and things, it was, I was quite blown away by it, to be honest. I was quite surprised by the response and the reception. And there was a whole other, like, set of um, content creators that are into the VCS were making videos about it and, and stuff like that. And, and that was not not a, not a level of expectation that I had. I, I didn't expect it would make more than a dot rather than a, a, a splash it was you know very very unexpected <laughs> um i think Artie's had a lot of reception because of the the dotted line you can draw to similar games um so people right there's a bit more pick up and play about that but exo is a bit more complex um but the reception for both yeah. has been has been pretty good so far um, I'm, I'm 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 pleased by that i'm quite humbled by it yeah with with ports you get a lot more um attention let's say because it, there's a built-in uh, audience of people who've enjoyed the game and obviously yeah. you enjoyed the game the originals as well um by by porting it um so i guess some people would do ports because there is a um a built-in audience for them um and what what was your motivation to do the port of Artie? is it was it for the love of the um the original game that you paid homage to because all it, everything's very different in this game like the the maps are very different and it's it's yeah. more it's definitely more of an homage to it i i, I love the style of play in the original um up until the point where you, the the controls that i i absolutely yes. hated the controls in the original i bloody uh, they were horrible hated. the game was amazing yeah. um and, and in truth, I, I was on the original. I was never actually very good at it, so I wanted to make a better version <laughs> with 7800 style, more colourful graphics, taking advantage of the system with a really good soundtrack, but with a control system that I liked. So that was very selfish, really. But that was that was one of the motivations <laughs> for that. No, but I got to thank you for the the revamping of the control system in in Artie because that was, to me, also the. The only drawback of the game is that slight hesitation when you push up, and it just it that that's the thing that killed me over and over again in the game. It's yeah. everything else was enjoyable, and I think controls are such a big part of gaming. It, you don't want to be fighting the controls to to play the game. Absolutely, you want to be feel like you are accomplishing something in the game and overcoming yeah. the puzzles in the game or the difficulty of the of the game and not going ah why isn't it moving left right why doesn't it go up those stairs easily why can't i fly quickly out of this situation and um it you know already really solves that issue and makes yeah. hero a playable game i think on on that topic most people were pretty um unanimously behind the having the controls this way than the the old way um uh, there were one or two great. people who preferred the original and i guess these are people that enjoy really? <laughs> shutting their fingers in doors and stuff like that you know they're proper <laughs> you know masochists it's yeah. like well whatever you know it's all good unfortunately i couldn't put both in um yeah i i, I didn't have enough room it was oh. like it was either one way or the other um but yeah i mean it's one of those it's a port i think 
but like I said, sometimes you won't please everybody. But if I've pleased enough people, then I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there's always going to be somebody who's like, oh, you didn't do it exactly this way. But I mean, this the maps are different and um and some some developers do have like original maps original controls and then their revamped mm -hmm. version just like you know there's modern takes on 80s games being released on modern platforms yeah. and they include the original and extend it over but uh yeah. obviously you can't always do that you can't always include absolutely everything from the original there's just there's limitations in terms of there's not enough room or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so partic let's... particularly with Arty, because I wanted to go down the, the idea of having the different themed areas, and you would have had to have made a choice yeah. of, if you, if you effectively include a second game, that concept would have had to go. And, and I, I, I wasn't prepared to compromise on that. I wanted to keep that in because it was a bit of a hallmark of, of what I'd like to do with some of the games. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to uh, the second release, also on the 7800, which mm -hmm. is EXO. So let's uh, unbox the next one. And always during these events, I end up with a super, super massive pile <laughs> of unboxed pile of games manuals and, and boxes and uh, stuff. Hand them, work, to, hand them to, my, to me. I'll work, stack them on this side. Work cut out for me. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll trade you. I have to. I don't know if you can put them now. I can kind of um, put them back together. Yeah, a little bit. I'll put it in the box, not in the plastic. How about that? Uh, okay. Yep. And the best thing. <laughs> I mean, you are an expert at it now. A butter knife under the flaps, and then just. Yeah. I've seen that uh, that way of doing it. I don't quite understand it, but I'll have to try it. <laughs> One of these days. Okay, so let's. Uh... Take a look at the next game, EXO, which stands for Elite Xeno Operations. So let's get it out of the plastic first. Prevent all the. There we go. So um, let's read off the credits here for this game. Uh, Lewis Hill, code and graphics, um, a Bobby Clark for music. I don't have any credit for the box art. Mm, that was John. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll have to update my yeah. listings then. Yeah, he he. Um, a, again, it was a few ideas and a bit of guidance from me, and then John went away and created a bunch of proofs, which we worked through, and we developed those into um, uh, the the what what you see on on the box and the manual today. Oh, very nice. Yeah, it just. The diversity of his talent is incredible because this looks yeah. absolutely nothing like all the other ones, just like he does. So he's super, super talented. Well, let me get this out. Now this is a thick manual. Oh, there we go. Put this back in here. Leave it out. Leave it out. Yeah. Leave it out for now. Too much trouble. <laughs> So, oh, uh, you're going to be trouble. Nope, there we go. So let's take a look at this manual. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about the manual and the um, different control schemes that you have for this. Do I have some notes on that? Let's see. Yeah, I'd just, just to add into the controls conversation, um, RT... Um, just jumping back to Arty for a sec. Arty supports the yeah. um, the SNES, the SNES to Atari, and the Mega Seventy Eight Hundred. Um, EXO doesn't um, because it, it was just it kind of predated when those technologies became available for us as developers to include in the games in an easier way than than they are today. Um, so EXO doesn't have the benefit of those. Yay, spell my name right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for the thank you. Um, so, you have uh, Bobby Clark again on uh, sa uh, music on this, this game. Um, yeah, the, the, the music for How many games have you collaborated games. with him on it? Oh, whoa, there was uh, Danger Zone, um, Coppers, 
Um, RT, EXOs, that's four. Yeah. So let's pop this in. But the, um, the, the music on EXO, um, we started off with a couple of tracks. And then as I developed the idea and, and the game kind of grew and, and became a, a, a bit of a beast in, in terms of its scope. Um, if ever there was a really good example of scope creep, EXO is that. <laughs> yeah, because it's such a it's such a huge, game. huge yeah. game. Um, yeah. In terms of level, music, graphics, and from my notes, it's almost four years from the inception to release. Yeah, July July 2020 was when I first started to um, code for EXO. When I was starting to okay. learn the uh, the 7800 in, in 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 a in a more of a, a competent manner. Um, but to be honest, that the project itself probably goes back to, I'm thinking, uh, 2017 was when I had a very, wow. very rough, nothing like the version you see today, but a prototype of it on the ZX Spectrum. Um, that's where EXO oh. started life. Oh, yep. on the ZX Spectrum. And, I didn't know that you yep. did programming for that uh, system. Dabbled. I wouldn't say anything like I do with the um, <laughs> the 7800, but I dabbled. Um, but I might throw some screenshots of that into the EXO thread at some point, just as a you can see how the game developed. Um, yeah, but the music for EXO. I mean, Bob, Bobby's music there. I mean, it's like 15 pokey tracks, um, and I think Al um, did mention earlier, and he let the cat out yeah. the bag a little and bit. We're planning has... to do a. Oh. I don't think that's us. I can hear. I can hear a buzz in the background there. Oh, one second. Yeah, it's it's frozen on the screen. Oh, okay, that's why. Okay, I can fix that. Always fix. Always uh, freezes in the most uh, flattering way. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, looking at that. One picture. second. I blame the cat <laughs> on that. That's for sure. Let's get him back. There we go. You're back. <laughs> yeah, I blame the cat <laughs> chewing on the HDMI cable yeah. for that one. <laughs> um, yeah, we're talking about the ZX Spectrum. Um, I've always been fascinated with that uh, that system, but yeah. the the color, the way they did color on it is, is always like, oh, it's yeah. very different from any other system. Very, it's very, like, very different. It's like, okay, that part of the screen is this color, that part of the screen is this color, rather than this sprite is this color. It's a very interesting way of doing it. It's super um, unique in the way it, it handles the um, the attribute clash. But uh, that, that's where yeah. that, that's where um, EXO started life. And, and just, just a word on, on Bobby's music, um, we ended up with uh, 15 really excellent pokey tracks. Um, and I think Al let the uh, the cat out the bag a little bit because we are planning to do a um, um, a collector's edition free XO, which would include um, an audio CD. Yes. Oh wow, that's that's awesome because I know there's a lot of games now that are doing um, audio releases, either you know digital releases or even vinyl mm. or CDs. So that's that's really exciting. That's awesome. And you don't see that very often with games from, you know, this era. No, of no. Like the 7800 with, with Pokey. Uh, definitely not with TIA. Oh, but no. <laughs> that, that might be stretching. That might it. be You'd challenging. Be, there's some good... Yeah, that might be challenging. Maybe we do an 8-track eight, eight tape release for the TIA stuff. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Ab absolutely amazing. Or even a cassette. Uh, then I could play it. I don't have any way to play 8-tracks. It'd be more of a shelf thing. <laughs> Um, so this game taking that long, well, from the 7800s, it's three and a half years. Um, so how do you fight off like possible burnout or being overwhelmed by the scope and size of say a game like EXO? Because it is, it is very, very large it, it, and it takes is. a lot of programming, testing, uh, development, graphics, just everything, music. It's, it's huge. Well, I think with um, with EXO we have the, there's five levels, um, five bosses, um, and a bunch of other stuff you can do as well. With the there's, there's the story, there's all the cutscenes, the cinematics, and I think the question's a really good question, James. And the way I would answer it is, yeah. um, 
with EXO, I, I kind of split the game up into chunks, um, into almost like modules. So a world becomes a module. Mm. Um, um, a boss becomes a module. And I work on those and I set myself short-term goals with, with those bits, with those chunks. Um, yeah. And the other thing I'd like to try and do to, to kind of preserve my sanity when a, with, a, with a project like that is have a second project. I have another project running simultaneously that I would go to that's completely right. not EXO. It's completely nothing to do with it. Um, I mean, yeah. bear in mind from when I started EXO to when I completed EXO, I completed Coppers 2048 and RT, pretty much. So, uh, right. so side, yeah. pro side projects were quite good. <laughs> yeah, to distract yourself and, and do something completely different. And I, and I absolutely agree with you on the way you would break down the game into manageable chunks because it's quite overwhelming to have to think of the whole game as a whole yeah. and you go oh my goodness i have to think of 20 things all at once it's like no just break it down concentrate on one thing let's do graphics today yep. let's uh talk with the the music uh the person who's done the, doing the music today and not just feel overwhelmed and i think that yeah it can be extended to anything you do in in life and that's how i usually take projects because if i think about like doing zph as a whole thing you wouldn't do it's it. like oh my god <laughs> I, w I wouldn't do it because i i talk with developers like you every day like i talk with so many people every day and i have to do research for shows mm -hmm. and uh do this and the atari homebrew awards but breaking it down into you know, just focus on one thing at a time. But I think and that had, really helps. had I have seen in July 2020 when I started really talking about EXO as a project, had I have seen then what it would become <laughs> with the amount of hours that went into it, I think I'd have given it a big old nope and moved on to doing a, <laughs> a, a port of that's something exactly else. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's, that's exactly right. Like, um, you know, starting off ZPH way back in 2018, I was just, you know, throwing in some games and playing some games, but never, I would think, you know, to get to this level. Yeah. So you never, you don't, don't necessarily focus on the end goal as, as the be all end all focus on what you're doing right now, yeah. but have in mind a nebulous end yeah. goal because you might give up because you might get overwhelmed with the whole thing so that's that's good advice for any developers anybody who wants to take on making uh, a game for the 2600 7800 any of these platforms yeah is to you know s start small don't don't and, think you're going to make and, the and next it doesn't have to greatest be perfect game. first time you know it's you know yeah. the old saying if at first you don't succeed try and try again and i see some folks in the in the coding forums and they haven't got they haven't created Sonic the Hedgehog with their first try and it's like well neither did the guys that made Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> that's right that's not their first game uh, exactly uh, yeah um so before we wrap this up anything else you'd like to say about uh the two releases or EXO in particular anybody else you'd like to thank no I, I think we've covered it all off um you know Bo Bobby's music is amazing and the audio CD really will do um justice to those tunes um, again, Mike and, yeah. Mike and Matt for their help and support. Um, uh, uh, Jesse, Steve, and Robert for their un unwavering support on trying to break my games every time they get them. Um, <laughs> and Al, I mean, I mean, to be honest, the, the work that Al does behind the scenes, um, and, and also um, oh, Fred yeah. on the hokey stuff, this goes unseen yeah. and unnoticed a lot. And that shiny yeah. box with the cartridge and all the gubbins that goes with it, you wouldn't, <laughs> you know, you're not going to get that without all that stuff in the background. Um, yeah. The, the, the only other thing I think I'd like to add, James, oh, and, and of course, you, you and Tanya and the cats and the team for you know, supporting developers. <laughs> definitely the cats. Definitely the cats. Uh, with my big bets on the um, who's going to win the bell ringing. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't lose your shirt over that. Don't bet uh, too big. <laughs> but just a couple of, couple of final comments from me. Um, I think we've got um, a stream coming up in a few days, which will show a new project. That'll be interesting. Yes, have, um, that's right. Quite, yeah, quite a few new bits and pieces planned for 2024. So, um, yeah, be very That's good. That's very exciting. Yes, uh, on Tuesday, we're going to be premiering uh, mm -hmm. Luce's brand new game. It's That's a right. secret game, so we don't 
we can't reveal anything so you make sure you tune in on uh in two days from now yes be playing his new game very, very excited. excited about yeah. that yeah it's always it's always an honor and a pleasure to uh debut anybody's game especially yours it's uh it's always super fun mm -hmm. to discover it with everyone else uh that's watching i'll be yeah with my notepad <laughs> ready for tanya's um bug find <laughs> bug finding i'm sure she'll find some yeah wall, wall breaking actions in the game it's like yeah. how did you get to that place like, you're uh, at world negative one how did you get there <laughs> <laughs> or jumping onto the moon you yes. know, that was one oh, of my favorite uh, bugs that I yeah, found. In yeah, in a Bruce Lee game. That was, yeah, that that was, was really fun. funny. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, Lewis. My for pleasure. On. No problem. Thanks for having me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the reactions from the wider public once uh, this gets into the hands of people mm -hmm. beyond PRGE. Superb. <laughs> thank you, Lewis. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, let's switch back there. Excellent. So, so far so good? Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to get uh, Thomas Jentsch on the line, we're going to be talking with Thomas Jentsch next about his new release, Bot and Tom. And we'll just clean up this area here because we've got a whole minute before that happens. <laughs> clean your stuff up. I'll do that quick. Yeah. Do you want me to get Or are you reboxing? I, I'll rebox. Oh, great. I'll rebox while you open Yeah, if you one. can get them on the video there. And we'll switch over to them when we're ready. Right. And if you could pass over uh, Bot and Tom. You can see on the yeah, right hand side it. down there. Someone made a uh, sarcastic comment about, oh, trying to find treat. space for all the homebrews. If we, if we, <laughs> um, if we end really early on a interview, I can re-enable the cat treats yeah 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 we're keeping it out for now but yeah, yeah. just just so nobody triggers it and the yeah. cats go insane well they went insane so you had to actually just throw some chicken feed down for <laughs> yeah, them i noticed I threw some yeah because <laughs> they were waiting <laughs> and that's why we do it early <laughs> <laughs> is it connected no no okay it would sh or maybe is it oh it is oh it is connected we just can't see them yet okay and that's why we do it early. fair enough or maybe he's going to be doing it silently. Uh, Thomas, we can't hear you, so if you want to type anything so it comes up on the screen, we can answer back. Oh, oh there yay. we go. Excellent. So, I think it's about time. Bring on Thomas. So let's just get the bot and Tom out of the packaging here. And get ready for him to come on. Oh, it's being naughty. There we go see it at that side side view okay let's bring him on hello thomas how are you doing it only oh, oh. via stream oh no. interesting let's see what's going so on. let's fix that we're going to go away from him for a second okay and i'm going to check our settings here because he can't hear us i'll just make sure it's good on our side here check Check, check. Yeah, it is good on our side. So you may want to check your side. Oh, can't Thomas. hear him either. Oh, oh well, no, we wouldn't. We wouldn't yeah, be able to Never hear mind. Him. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. How do I get rid of that now? You could try connecting again. Yeah, we'll try and connect to you again. That's weird. Please hold. <laughs> oh. oh, what's happening? Can you hmm? deal with that? Just, just press the video again, or? Yeah. It's not. Uh... Let's restart okay. Skype. <laughs> okay. Oh, wonderful. Uh, it'll only take a couple seconds. In theory. In theory. <laughs> Hopefully. There we go. How is everyone doing out there in, in the chat? And chat if you labs? do have any questions um, for our guests, just type in big letters question mm -hmm. and then put your question beside it. There we go. And we should be able to um, 
get to a couple questions. <laughs> Your homebrew experience is important to us. Please stand by. <laughs> yes. We should just have the cats meowing Merry Christmas. You know, meow, please hold. Meow, 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 That would be a feat. That would be a feat. <laughs> and I'll take the time to switch over. Can you hear us now? Thumbs up, thumbs down. No thumbs at all. Oh, no. That's not a good sign. No? No? No. I mean, we could work with the delayed <laughs> him hearing us That's through pretty bad, big yeah. thumbs down. Oh, oh no. no. Okay. What is going on here? No, it's not. I don't think it's don't our think side. It's our end. No. Yeah. We're going to blame Thomas. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. It might be routing your audio. I would check the settings in Skype to make sure. Well, not even that. I don't know. I don't know what. Yes. Can you? Oh, I heard. Oh, I hear. We can hear you. We which can is hear good. you. Yeah. And you can see us, and we can see you, but he just can't hear us. So there's something over on his end that the audio is not routing from Skype to his headset. Yes, that's, yeah. there's a huge delay. <laughs> huge. <laughs> yeah, there would be a very, very massive delay. But we can try that and just kind of put the question out, wait, and then let you just run with it. Mm -hmm. um, so for now, we will do that. Um, and uh, so let's, I'm going to unbox it, unbox your game, ah. and then I'm going to let you talk about it. Oh, maybe it's better now. Can you hear us? Check, check, check. Hello, hello. Yes. Yes. Yay! Okay, Real that, time was, conversation. that was strange, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome, Thomas. Yes. Hi. Hello. hello. And um, I just want to make a note that uh, Thomas has uh, eight Atari Homebrew wins from games that you have worked on. <laughs> oh, so well, very you... prolific. Could be, <laughs> I like, don't okay. count. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so let's uh, take a look at your game and another artwork from John Calciano Calciano Atari Boy 2600 let's call him that yeah <laughs> so if you want to talk about how that came together how did you uh, get um, associated with John for the oh you can blame RL because I was looking for a, <laughs> for a designer and um, yeah maybe I burned too many people in the past um, so Al had to come up with someone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the only one left. Maybe it's it's Atari Boy twenty six hundred. Yeah, but, beautiful, but he's um, great representation of the game. Yes, he's brilliant. Where these two cars are attached to each other. <laughs> yes, he, he came up immediately with the right idea, and except for the cars, where we had a lot of discussion <laughs> about how the car should look like, <laughs> but everything else is. Um, was there right there from the beginning i i love the panicked expression of the orange car on yes the yeah the, <laughs> the blue car is having a good time but and the orange, the orange car, car is, like, is not so happy that's which exactly is how reflected in like. the game yeah. yeah that's what i want yeah. to share <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's wonderful because controlling the orange car is the di more difficult one yeah in the game it's depending on um, the top car i mean it, it has no chance it, uh, it can't do nothing <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, without controlling the top car, the the orange car is totally uh, on its own. And and the beautiful artwork on the cart again itself. And you've chosen uh, or Atari Boy Twenty Six Hundred has chosen the classic blue and orange scheme that work well together. Yeah, that's from the original. I mean, uh, when I found the game, it had almost this scheme. I think it was blue and red. But I like blue and orange. Somehow I like it better. And so I made it uh, yeah. more like this. So you see in the game, it has the same color scheme. And it's got some uh, illustrations there that look like they're straight out of a driving manual, which is awesome. Glad you like them. There was a discussion about this as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, the history of this game is a bit um, well, confusing. Um, when I found this game, it was on a website from um, Game Maker Game Jam, 
So there's a tool. Okay, yeah. And I found the game, and I've, it's it's. I think it's Flash or something or Unity, and it plays really really cool. But it had, was lacking something. It had only one life, and um, it was repetitive, and so. Did we lose him? You lost him, but you moved away from him. I think you just need to oh, flip the screen. Yeah, Sorry. that is the wrong one. Hold Let's on. do that one. There we there go. go. Sorry, Sorry about, about that. that. Uh, continue on. So, um, from... yeah, when I started developing it, um, I took, after it was working, basically, I took a longer break. And in between, someone else came up with the same idea and said, oh, I make my own version of this game. <laughs> <laughs> and you presented it here. And I'm, oh, uh, I was yes. a bit in a stage of panic because what can I do? I mean, <laughs> he came first, and I cannot do the same game. Right. And um, so I talked to him and said, "No, it's okay. Um, you can do your own." I, I said, "Okay, but you can finish and release yours first because I don't want to interfere with your release." But from then on, he didn't continue. So I waited. Oh no! I waited some time and. I remember you played the game and had some um, suggestions, and so, yeah, I thought he would do this, and but he didn't. So I waited, I think, a month or so, and then I yeah. went live with my idea. Yeah, it's happened a couple times. It's pretty rare that two people come out with the same game at the same time, and mm. I think it's more common with games that are adapted from modern games because the modern game comes mm. out and people go oh that would work really well on you know this system or that system yes it's very appropriate and and this one is really really appropriate for uh the 2600 it utilizes it is, um yes. the the abilities of the 2600 quite well there's two cars there's two sprites you could even and they're not even on the same horizontal plane, so you could use just one one uh, player character for that. Yeah, the tricky stuff was, was were the obstacles because they had to be, yeah, uh, they had to be some variation, and they had to be generated in a fair way, and um, and these are sprites as well. So yeah, you have to make it at, yeah, or missiles. Yeah, so you can see sprites and missiles and a combination of of both right so yeah it's uh because you wouldn't be able to use the play field because you w wanted the smooth scrolling exactly of it, right yes that was important for me because the game plays so fluid and i i didn't want to have staggered moving something like which is not moving nicely so it and um yeah i it came along quite well and um finding the right difficulty is always the same problem to me yes <laughs> don't make it too hard <laughs> don't make it too easy but i think it's yeah in the end after some play testing i think it's okay and um yeah it works well because that's hard to find that balance especially right. like you give it out to say play testers or in beta form for the general public and you'll get various feedback on it's too easy, it's too hard, yes. and you're like, okay, which which do I believe? And it's hard from your perspective, because you play the game so much during the testing of it. I think a lot of developers maybe tend to put it towards too hard for everyone else, me and too. because it's become become too easy for them. Yes, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm making my games, the, ten the tendency is clear, it's, they are on the hard side, yes. <laughs> but I like 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 the games hard. If it, I, I'm if a game is too easy, I think you get bored out. You you beat it in an hour or two or yeah. three, and then why should you come back? And it's not in That's the right. it's not in the back then. These games were also not easy. So no, arcade games were hard. The console games were very hard. Um, because they in the arcade they made them so you put another quarter in yes but at home there's no quarters so you have to get the playability out of the games when you buy them and you still have to think about that yes when you're making homebrew games people are putting money down for the games and you want it to be challenging to have longevity but you've also put in different variations of this game how much 
extension from the original game did you did you make? Because you put in like power ups and things like that into this one. Yeah, the power ups are were easy. Were easy. The hardest part was um, creating the obstacles on the fly. So I right. I had to develop an algorithm where the top car can maneuver and still the bottom car can survive and still can be controlled and not making the game unfair. It's not perfect. And yep. one solution to this was the energy bar. Because if it would be lives, you would lose lives and uh, that seems unfair. Right. Some parts are right. not beatable. So I'm pretty sure there are some parts which, which you can't do. But they are quite rare. So um, yeah. I'm, I made the energy bar which gives you a lot of um, yeah, hits before the game is over. Yeah, because you said the original game is just one life and you're done. And you found that, and I would find that very difficult as well. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good move that you made for an energy bar, and and uh, yeah, that makes it a little bit more enjoyable. And and it's not like you know we we go back to Arty, where there's an expectation when you're uh, taking a game that's really classic and people played it a lot, and if you changed Arty to like something just energy only and no lives, it would be like, well, that's very different. But this one. It's a modern game. Maybe not many people have played the other one. Right. Um, and somebody uh, in the chat asked a question. Is it a two-player game? Is there two players? Yes. Because there's two players on the screen. Yes, you played this variation once. It's a co cooperative <laughs> version where um, I think I share up and down. One player does up and one player does down, which is really, really hard. It's, it's, oh, it's so it hard. Is. It's so hard. <laughs> you but start you start arguing with your, uh, yeah, your fellow spouse. <laughs> your spouse over yeah. it. It's like, I needed to jump. And yeah, because, why didn't you jump? <laughs> because it, it plays similarly to the one player. Because if the blue mm. is up in the air, the orange, they both don't act independently. They still have to act cooperatively. Right. Yeah. So it's in the true sense, it is a cooperative game where you have to cooperate. Actually, I had, <laughs> I had you two in mind when I did this variation. It didn't cost too many fights. <laughs> I thought it would be funny to see how you play it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's very challenging, but I mean, we didn't put a lot of time in the, to the two well, player one. So it I think... was doable. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but you really have to get a feel for the, the momentum of the up and the down. It was good. I enjoyed it, but yeah. it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have to, I think you have to practice a lot and have good communication yeah. of like what is expected from the other person in terms of moving and you don't want to sabotage the other person either. No, <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, you have to um, be respectful with with each other. Else, it would be a fight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Smitty B says destroying relationships is a sign of a great game. <laughs> That's yeah. right. It, it's, it brings emotion to the, yeah, to the exactly. game. Yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> but it's, it's, um, it's just so, for fun. I mean, the real game variations oh. are here. Oh yeah. yeah. So you have a knack for bringing, for making games or bringing games to the system that are incredibly addictive and have that just one more try kind of like the, on the surface, they seem very simplistic, like the, the look of them, but the gameplay has a, has a lot of depth to it. Yeah. So what, what caught your attention about this game? when you first saw it, that you're like, okay, this is one that I want to bring to the 2600. It, okay, at first it looks simple. That's good for the 2600. You, it doesn't depend on graphics a lot. And yeah, it's a very unique control scheme. I haven't seen this before. And I thought, and it has to do with momentum, with, with gravity and uh, physics. Ah, there you go. So <laughs> everything is in there. So it, it's something which looked natural for the 2600. So maybe that's yeah. the reason why I was not the only one doing it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. And, and I see games pop up on other systems that I go, can that be done on the 2600? Or I see them as like, oh, that's naturally suited uh, for the 2600. Mm -hmm. And you do like games that have uh, gravity. 
<laughs> that's for sure. This one doesn't have, uh, uh, let's thrust. say, momentum and thrust. <laughs> no, no. But this one definitely plays with uh, gravity. Right. It has physics. So. And physics, I, I mean, it's the physics are tweaked a lot. Um, so this, there is no gravity really in it. It's... Um, it's varying between top and bottom because the gravity is different at the bottom and whether the top else the game would be too hard so there's a lot of cheating on the on the physics <laughs> yeah it's it's more like an uh the cars have a rocket underneath them and they're attached by an elastic band yes. that's mm -hmm. that's more like it than gravity acting on them because yeah, something like if that. anything if it was gravity, it would be like a very, very strong gravitational pull of the line, which doesn't make any sense at all. So, <laughs> but games don't have to make sense; they just have to be fun. And you've definitely accomplished it with this. Mm -hmm. um, so, anything you'd like to add about uh, this uh, super fun, addictive, Wonderful. yes, twenty-six hundred game before we let you go? Mm, no, I, I see a question from from Atari Beer Pong. If there's a limit, the rubber band spread. It, it's there's a natural limit limit coming from the from the physics uh, from the parameters. So the length can be you know, as long as the physics allow it. Theoretically, it could be the whole screen, but the physics don't allow this, or the parameters of the physics don't allow this. So you can be every. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, the the length it depends on how long you hold the joystick down. Yes. Um, for the top and bottom, and I think it it and maxes. And the momentum of the top. Oh yes, yeah. The bottom car depends on the momentum. Can only go as, as of... long as as far as the. The top car. Yeah. yeah. The force the top car puts mm. into it, if that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. And uh, one thing I missed um, the the multiplier that was a late idea from somebody in the forums. Which is really mm. cool because it, um, yeah, it gives you bonus when you play perfect. So that's something for the people who want an extra challenge. And they made huge scores from this, two hundred thousand points or oh. something. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, you can. So it really rewards the better players and the people who put in the time to practice it. In the score, yeah. yes. In, uh, in the progress, not so much, but in the score, yes. Yeah. So people are. People like me who go for levels uh, have a different goal than the people who go for high scores. So it works for both types mm -hmm. of um, game players. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's um, about it, yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for coming on and uh, talking about your brand new game. I'm already looking forward to your next game, <laughs> whatever it may be. Always I'm one not, at a time. I, always one at a time. It's, it's always easy. one at a time. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm always um, delayed by the release of the game. When the, when the new game is not released or, or finished, at least the manual ah. is done and the boxes. I I don't start doing a new one or I don't doing much with new ones. So when when it takes too long for yeah. the store, then I'm delayed. <laughs> so I I will accelerate and maybe I will do more games. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all on Al. There you go. You heard it. Yeah, very different from Muddy Funster's approach where he likes doing multiple games and get distracted. You are like very, very focused on one game, making it perfect, making it, uh, getting the manual done and everything, and then done. Move on to the next game. Right, right. That's, that's how yeah. I work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Always a great pleasure to talk with you, Thomas. Yeah, thanks for giving me the time and your stream. You know, it's great. I mean, it's focusing on homebrews, and this is something which is really, really great. Yeah, I love it. I love showcasing all of uh, the community's hard work, mm. and it deserves it. Like, people may think, oh, it's just 2,600 games. But no, these are really fun games. It's, it's really well all about the gameplay. Yeah, 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 really a lot of work put into these games. So it's it's... I almost have a sense of duty <laughs> to, to to do this show and to show off all these games and it's and these games deserve it. So thank thank you so much, Thomas. And, and I will and not we'll, finish uh, the call. Be, be, yeah? I have to remind you of something. <laughs> uh oh, uh. here we go. I have to that I have to make my own game, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so hard. It's so hard because 
I love doing the show so much and almost all my spare time, it's like, oh, I have some spare time. I should get prepared for the next show or, you know, see what new games people are posting. And then I go, ah, now I'm out of time. And I know I, cause I've just a binder full of game ideas, right? Oh yeah. I can, I can, uh, I can attest to that. <laughs> and I think they're all pretty decent ideas, but yeah, it's just, Finding I don't want to neglect the show. It. Yeah. I that's, know. that's the guilty thing. I don't want to neglect the show, but uh, yeah. Thomas is, will keep me, keep me honest keep and him keep, honest. keep yeah. me <laughs> working, thinking about it and keep me feeling guilty. If, so yeah. that's it. If you can't do it yourself, maybe become a game designer and give it to somebody else and do it. Let him do it. There you please. go. Uh, you go. Maybe, but uh, I, I really, I really want to do a game. That's the thing. You want to yeah. get into the coding of I, it. I do, and I've coded yeah. before, so I, I do want to do a game. So I would, and I don't. That's always hard. And I always think, oh, the de the designers have their own games. They, you know, don't peddle your ideas, <laughs> right? <laughs> As that thread says. Some people are looking for ideas. Some people. So you are. never know. So, yeah. yeah. But I, yeah. I do want to do one. So yes, keep on me. Keep at it. <laughs> Promised. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you uh, so much for coming on, Thomas, and we'll uh, see you online. Bye bye. Bye bye. Excellent. Here we go. All right, Let's I will put that, that away. Yeah, always. Uh, I'll do that. I'll do that here. Yeah. Always love Thomas's games because um, they are. Very playable. S sorry, oh. give me all the plastic bits there oh, so that they don't they don't yeah. pile up there. So. Excellent. Next uh, person we're going to be talking to is Chris Spry, Sprybug, about Robot Zed. I'll grab that from down here. Excellent. If you want to uh, cue them up when you have a chance. Right. Sprybug. Sprybug. Text Rich says, we're both rocking great shirts today. Just saying, yeah. Yeah, I love um, my Asteroids shirt. Yeah, we went back to the same booth this year at PRG where she got this well, in 2022, and they didn't have this I don't know if it was design. the same booth. It was oh. it was kind of a random t-shirt booth, but they definitely didn't have it again. And I, I was happy to pick it up because oh my God, yeah. not only did they, they, they print the Asteroids design, but it actually has like a... Uh, what do I want to say? Like a tie-dye tie -dye effect going on. So yeah, a really good pattern happy, of tie-dye. This is with my shirt. just kind of Atari some shirt. fake retro looking. <laughs> Atari shirt. And it's like printed kind of badly. So it gives like this almost extra weathered look. Which is really just the bad printing. Hey, Chris. Let's get this full screen. So we'll have you on in a second. So we've got... Uh, Chris Spry on the line here. Let's bring him on. Hello, Chris. How are you doing today? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me on, by the way. <laughs> oh, no problem. Thank you for coming on. Sure. Um, so we've got your new game, which I'm so excited about. Uh, ever since I first saw you working on this, I was like, oh, a platformer that has power-ups. And oh, my God, I was so excited. So I'm so happy that it has been released now in box so let's switch over to the unboxing of it all right there we go robot Z. so talk to us a little bit about um the artwork here because i only have one credit to this whole game which is you is that something you set out to do to do all the music the artwork the uh, game design the programming yeah um i did I, yeah, I originally you know, wanted to do the game, of course, and the music and all that. And I was going to hand off the the artwork, actually, to somebody else that I knew that was really a really good artist. But uh, we just couldn't uh, make a connection. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and do it myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did a great job there. Thanks. Got the robots on the front. So let's open up the package. All right. I don't have the best Take internet that. connection here, so every once in a while it does kind of lag for me. But see if you can get through this. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> and it, it prioritizes the sound, which is which is the important part that we can hear you. All right. There we go. So let's take a look at the manual. Thank you. 
program, music, graphics, manual, and artwork by Chris Spry. You're like a VHZC doing your absolute your whole game all all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so was it was it overwhelming? Was it a lot of work to do everything all by yourself? Yes, <laughs> that's an easy yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the manual's awesome. I love the uh, multicolors dividing up everything. That's great. Thank you. And you've got all the different, the, the prerequisite different stages for any kind of platformer. The ice, the sky, the mine, oh, the sand, sorry. the lava, and the junkyard. Yeah, I wanted to have every level be unique and have its own properties. That's excellent. So let's pop in the game and I'll uh, start with the asking you some questions. All righty. Okay. Going to be using the regular joystick on this one? Uh, we've got, yeah, we are. It's just for simplicity's Good sake, luck, so then. we don't have to swap out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different. We've got um, up as assigned to a second button, so that oh, nice. will help. Oh, okay. That would I was great. just looking at the... <laughs> yeah, we've got a special uh, joystick here, a ZPH joystick from Double Down. Double Down, which, yeah. Which uh, I Can specific, like, yes. custom joystick made for me because I, I know a lot of games have up to jump for them. Yeah. And I was right. like, oh, well, even on the, like, the Commodore around. 64. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. So there you go. So what are we? Jump? Uh, jump is the action button. Uh, shoot is, shoot. is up. Okay. And it's... And it's unusual to do it that way, but it actually works really well because yeah. of the necessity for priorita prioritization because there's a lot more shooting. Um, there's a lot more jumping around than shooting. Okay. Yeah, I, I was never a fan of games where you have to press up to jump. So, because you're moving in a right. direction and then you can... I, like move left or right and want to jump and then you end up jumping like over and you don't want to be doing that things like that so yeah i thought it'd be better just to have it as fun and the, your game also supports the genesis controller for those uh yep. who want to have two separate buttons yeah that's so the one would one. be jump and one would be shoot yeah mm -hmm. um so development of this game started quite a while ago. If if uh, looking back, it I have it dated yeah, it back to at least 2000, 2014, and uh, I've definitely been a, a a fan of this game as as soon as I saw it because it it satisfies a lot of what I like in platformers. Um, so, but the game has also been th through a number of iterations that are that make the gameplay quite different. Yes. Um, but still held on to the the core mechanics of you know going through a maze, shooting enemies, getting their getting their abilities. Um, can you take us through some of the changes the game has gone through? All right, start on that. That it was uh, quite a process because um, I had so many different ideas for this game, and it was um, just figuring out okay, what can I do? What can't I do? What's not working out? Um, and you know, all that stuff put together over time, and you realize, oh, this isn't working. And then you have to start over again. <laughs> and then um, different uh, different uh, like, uh, things where... I, I even at one time I tried uh, DPC Plus, which is like uh, using an arm chip in the, in the cartridge. And one problem I had yeah. with that was I wasn't able to scroll, and I was limited to how much... Uh, space I had, so I couldn't do all the music that I wanted to. So like, okay, so I, then I dumped that idea, and I went back to the original. Um, yep. And at one point, you oh, had well, like so almost. Um, you had right now in the in its current state, you have kind of a set area where you fight in, and it's like about three screens wide. Um, right. In pre in one previous iteration, you had almost like a continuous maze where you wouldn't really backtrack. You would keep going till the end and then you would go to the boss. Right, there was no uh, reason to backtrack and I wanted to, um, since you had that capability, I wanted to, you to do it. Uh, and in an earlier version of the game, the one before this, 
um, you could you didn't have to defeat the enemy and just keep going uh, without having to fight anybody. Yeah. And I had a beta tester who beat the game pretty easily, and I thought to myself, well, I've got to make it more challenging somehow. I've got to make you want to do things. So <laughs> right, right. So that was the, one of the changes I made was okay. Now in this one, you have to defeat four robot bosses in the next section of the level. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's fairly unique in a 2600 game to get these kind of different abilities and power-ups. Um, and obviously this is uh, influenced uh, by, by Mega Man. Um, oh, yeah. How, how, much of, how much of Mega Man... Like, were you a massive fan of Mega Man? Obviously everyone is, but it, <laughs> yeah. And were yeah, you uh, at the outset trying to make a a kind of port of Mega Man, or did you kind of try for something that just reminded you of some of the abilities of Mega Man? Because this is like, there's some things that are the same as Mega Man, but some things that are very different than it. Oh yeah, um, I had an idea of, um, of I wanted to make my own original game, because uh, I had done, you know beforehand that were, you know, demix essentially of uh, other uh, popular games. And those, <laughs> those, yeah, those games were more of a, a me wanting to see what those kind of games would look like on Atari. Then after I got those out yeah. of the way, um, I wanted to make my own game, but um, uh, I was inspired by games like Mega Man and uh, Kirby and Kirby, some yes. modern element uh, implementation, which this has, because it's it's different every time you play it. Um, with because there's a uh, for every level there's eight uh, eight possible sections that you can okay. possibly have to go through, and you only have to play through four of them, of course. Um, so every time you play it, there's a an element of a randomization where it can be different every time you play. It. As you might go into a section you've never been in before. So I wanted to add that element, have power-ups to do this. Um, and yeah, so I really love I really love the randomization of the game, and that adding that in adds in a lot of repeat gameplay for for yes. the game because you never know where the enemies are going to be or where you have to position yourself. To be able to deal with those enemies, so the game is is really pss, 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 that cat is is <laughs> the game has a lot of replayability uh, factor because of that. And is that something you set out to do uh, when making these randomization mazes? It was uh, yeah, it was uh, something I always wanted to implement from the first iteration of the game. Um... But uh, it was a difficult thing to try to do because of, you know, the limitations of the Atari. You only have so much RAM and ROM. And yep. so I had to kind of be clever about how I did it. And so, like, the cert uh, early, I wanted to uh, have just, I just didn't have the, the memory to store all this stuff to be able to do it. So, right. so I thought, okay, well, if I do it like this, other way, I could, it might work out, and I kept, you know, fudging things until I wanted to work, like brute force the thing. <laughs> and sometimes uh, the limitation of the machine actually forces really interesting outcomes, and, um, and in this case, a really makes the game very diverse and replayable because of that those was, limitations. Yeah. When I made this, I, I did have uh, the limitations in mind, like with the colors of the, the characters. Because like, um, with originally the Atari was designed where player one, player two would just be one solid color. Yeah. And I thought, okay, let's let's take that aspect there and have it so every enemy is its own color that has its own power up. And then when you change your power, so that that'd be a a good way to have that implemented into the game. Yeah, it makes it really straightforward knowing 
like eventually you kind of memorize the colors it's like okay this color has this type of shot and this color right. is this type of shot so it's so strongly associating the enemies with that color is uh is really smart and makes it a lot easier to wrap your head around uh the different abilities that you can gain and, yeah, and it's also um, there's in the a question from yeah. yeah exactly the the manual will help you out in that respect. It has all the enemies. Oh yeah, there's a lot and, of info different... on there because it's not a, a very straightforward yeah. game, like a, a typical Atari game would be. It's it's more on the lines of like a, a Nintendo type game where you kind of have to know a few things about yeah. it to be able to to uh, utilize everything. Yeah, it's it's uh, not a it not necessarily not a pick up and play game, but you do have to know just a little bit. Um, I mean, you could figure it out as you play. Like um, Tanya's figuring out some things as she uh, yeah. plays, but um, but reading the manual is very very helpful. I do have a question from the chat. What do the orbs you pick up from the enemies do? Are these power ups of different types? So what? Maybe quickly go over the different types of things that the enemies drop. Well, um, it depends on the enemy. Um, there are certain enemies that don't have a special power, like those blue. Uh, Robots that shoot at you that don't have a special ability that to give you. If they drop anything, those are your health points that it can possibly drop. And there's two types: a small one, which will give you five, or a big one that'll give you ten. And yeah. then the enemies that can give you a power up, those orbs will will uh, strobe uh, a rainbow color as on the ground. And when you pick those up, you will get the power of that robot and uh some powerpoints as well uh 10 powerpoint the ability that you have uses those powerpoints so you need them and also on top of that you can use those powerpoints if you end up losing your life uh later in the game once you get past the first level um you can use those to to revitalize your uh, robot Z so they uh you can uh continue I didn't want to do a life system or I wanted uh, a kind of system I wanted a kind of system where you only had one life, but I didn't want it to be where you die once you died that was it. I wanted to kind of be somewhere in between or say, okay, there give you a second chance, how am I gonna do that? Well you have PowerPoint still. Let's just have it so you put in a chamber. Use some of those and you can continue on if you have them. But if you don't, well, then you're yeah. going to lose Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very nice balance between lives and continuing, just straight up continuing. Because, yeah, when you have those PowerPoints left over, it's like, oh, how many PowerPoints am I going right. to dedicate to what uh, yeah, to give me an never... advantage or disadvantage? Yeah. And in the main menu of the game, you can there's an option where you can transfer those over back and forth. So when you go into the next level, you can kind of set yourself up however you want. Yeah, between firepower and hit points. Yeah, it's it's okay. a really great system. Thank you for subscribing, Bruno Sticks. And I've I have one more question um, sure. for you. Um, did you? Did you specifically avoid too direct of being a Mega Man game based on past experiences? Or did it just naturally happen? It's like, oh, I don't want to be... I want to kind of make my own game, but I like these aspects of Kirby and Mega Man. Oh, yeah. Th those games are always an inspiration. I always enjoyed those type of games with the power-ups and how you use the uh, kind of uh, enemies you run across. Originally, I did want to have different boss masters. I just didn't have the the space in the game to be able to do that. But um, uh, the main idea was was what you're playing pretty much as far as how the power ups go. I wanted you to accumulate them as you're playing the game for different enemies. Um, and so that's the one constant of this game, really, from start from where I first started to to the that part of the game of uh, accumulating your power ups. That, that's like the different. That's more of the lines of like Kirby, where as you're playing, you can actually get the different powers as you're playing the game from the yeah. different enemies you're into. So that's why I always call it like a mix of, of those two games together. 
Yeah, it really is. And I I haven't been able to beat the game yet, but I'm looking forward to beating the game. I think I got four of the bosses done. Nice. It it is it is very challenging. It is a very challenging game, and I think it's you've struck the right balance between uh, difficulty and playability and ease yeah. and, and hardness of it. And, that was a difficult thing for me to try and figure out. Um, I kept yep. tweaking things at, towards the end to try to not make it too easy, but not try to make it too hard as well. Um, so, yeah, that is a difficult, especially on uh, more complex games, that's a difficult balance to try to, to do. Especially when you played it, it like hundreds of times and it's easy for you, but then you have to think, <laughs> it's like, well, it might be too hard for them. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and different levels are have different difficulty too because every level has its own it's not just a different color. They have there's like the ice level where you're slipping and there's yep. Yeah, it's it's very very different and I find different levels easier than others so I'm like, "Oh, yes, should I do the hard it. one hard one hard one first to get it over with or should I do yes. the easy ones and kind of accumulate some health and accumulate some firepower so yeah it does depend on which level you want to try uh -oh. first oh there you go oh, it, we're it back. froze on me for a second there but um yeah. yeah that's the way that's the way to go is to figure out okay what's easiest for you or hardest for you and then kind of plan your course of action uh, based on that, and that's 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 why I tend to do right play it as well, and yeah, that works out best for me. Yep. So, anything you'd like to add before we let you go? Uh, well, again, like uh, thank thanks. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, having me on. Cheers for you know making sure things were working, especially you because that towards the end there you uh, helped me out testing it on the real machine, and made sure it was all good to go before uh, being yeah. released. So thanks a lot for that, of course. Um, thanks You're to everybody at the welcome. Eternity Age forums, too, for uh, giving me some pointers and helping me out with a few questions I had here and there to try to figure things out. Um, Albert, of course. Uh, anybody else I may have forgotten? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Atari Bear Pong has, Atari Beer Pong has a question. Is there an ending to the game? Number yes. of levels, or it just keeps going? Yes, there is an actual ending. Um, you have to defeat all, I mean, you have to uh, complete all nine uh, levels and rescue all eight of your robot friends. And there's a nice special ending. That's one thing I always try to do with my games, is have a nice little like, pet scene special kind of ending like you would with any other game. Nice. Yeah, Tanya finally made it to the boss. I'm going to die. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, thank you so much for coming on, Chris, and yep. uh, we will see you online. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Okay. So how are you doing with the game? No. Oh, oh. dead. Oh. Well, you got to see the boss. <laughs> yeah, got to see the boss, which is great. Might be the so best. So if you want to yeah. <laughs> disconnect... Here we go. And uh, connect with our next guest, which is Alex Kraken, Lord Kraken. Okay, let's package this up. And I'm going to let you package it up because I need to connect up uh, a link system. There are a lot of names in this list. There's a lot of names, but they're all in favorites. It should be all in the top. Oh. Might be under Alex something else. Do you have favorites in here? Yeah, they're just there. Oh, just at the top. So they're just, just scroll. Ah, there we go. Oh, there he is. Up to the top. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Alex. <laughs> okay, let's get the 7800 out of the way for now. Set up <clears throat> the links. at the links for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Get everything set up. Yep. I want to make sure I have it prepared before the next guest on. Hopefully everybody's enjoying the previews of the games today. Hopefully I'm not uh, absolutely <laughs> well, not a, getting destroyed playing well, these games either. It's so. not about gameplay today. Well, showing it off a little bit at least. Yeah. Showing off a bit of the game. Yep. Hey, we've got him here. Yep. We'll have you on in a couple seconds here. 
after we set up change out systems to the links. Let's plug in the joystick. Sorry, kittens. Cats do like to get in the way. So. They do like to get in the way. Yes. At one point in time, I was trying to have like all the systems set up on the bench, but that was uh, a big impossibility. Mm. It was just too much, too much all at once. Okay. Are we happy? I think we're happy. Okay. Let's give that a go. And switch to the Lynx input. Input number six. Thank you for subscribing, S. Ramirez. Ramirez. <laughs> okay, next person we're going to be having on Atari Age Day 2023 uh, is Alex Kraken, known as Lord Kraken on the Atari Age forums, uh, to talk about his game Odinexus. If you want, oh, it's right at the top. Excellent. So let's bring him on. Welcome, Alex, to Atari Age Day 2023. Thank you for coming on. Hey, James. Uh, hey, Tanya. Thanks for uh, having me. Hello. Excellent. And I'm very excited to present your game Odin Nexus in the box. Um, I've been looking forward to this game for so long because I love shooters. I love shooters, as you could tell when uh, I was playing the game last on the show. You did, you did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let's unbox this. So if you want to talk a little bit about um, the packaging, which is I, um, William Thorpe did the packaging art. Correct. Bitjag. Correct. Um, well, first, <laughs> that's the very first time I, I see the, the box uh, finalized. So, I mean, we spent quite a lot of time doing, I mean, William did all the, the hard work. Uh, but a lot of back and forth <laughs> conversation uh, to try to get something a bit different, you know. Um, I mean, the context is a bit sort of original, I would say. Uh, it's kind of like a mix between mythology and science fact fiction. So we we try we wanted to try to catch that in 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 the game and even more in on the cover art. So we had a long uh, discussions together. Uh, me, uh, my graphic artist, uh, uh, Agadona, and William uh, and Albert as well, and uh, so we try to, yeah, to, to design something that uh, is somewhat different uh, than what you you would usually see in a, in a shooter. Um, yeah, hopefully um, the mix of sci-fi and Greek mythology as uh, yeah uh, that will you will yeah, you will like it. Yes, you you can see here it's. Uh, uh, Gorgeous. The, the artwork is absolutely stunning. Stunning. And I'm sure if Al could fit a big uh, poster into this box, I'm sure he would have liked to. Um, because And we were playing some of Bitjag's um, time-lapse artwork mm -hmm. before the on the beginning of the stream, before we actually started the stream on Twitch, mm -hmm. for people who were watching on, on Twitch. And it was just fascinating um, watching his process. And uh, yeah, he's absolutely amazing uh, artist. And it's great that he actually recorded the way all of his uh, work to be able to show it off afterwards. And he, he's been posting, uh, posting his time lapses in the Atari Age forums and his, on his YouTube channel as well, uh, including the Odin Excess uh, artwork. So you can see kind of the, the stages and mm -hmm. betas of the artwork. So the artwork that didn't make it. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. So how much back and forth was there between you and, and Bitjag on the artwork? Um, I mean, fr first he asked us like well, what we wanted to see on, on the cover. So a couple of uh, email. Uh, and then very quickly, I think he came up with um, four of, no, six different uh, proposition. Uh, like you can see yeah. one actually, this one that you were just showing, like it's on the last page of the of the manual was one oh. of the proposition. Yeah. 
and he reused that proposition to illustrate the, the manual. So we had the uh, from the the basic ideas, he sketches uh, different uh, different options, and um, yeah, I think we we sort of voted uh, me, uh, Agadone, and Albert, uh, and we all agreed on that this one was a bit more special. Um, um, you know, it's it's an illustration. I mean, maybe you'll see that more um, wh when you play the game. But it's it's kind of uh, we're trying to revisit the the Odysseys, like the original uh, mythologic story, uh, in a in a science science fiction fiction concept context. Sorry. Uh, and here, what you can see on on this picture is basically Penelope waiting for Odysseus to come back, and now he's back, and he has to fight the one of the final bosses. Actually, it's not the final bosses, but one of them. Um, so yeah, I think. Um, um, yeah, it's it's. Um, I'm, I'm, we are very pleased with the art. Uh, yeah, we, we couldn't have done better. Uh, so yeah. Excellent. I'm, uh, oh, there we go. Just trying to get the uh, system up and going. Yep. Um, you can yeah. see you in the background there, turning it on. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Okay. Unfortunately, we're gonna miss. Oh, I'm gonna restart it. Just one second. Yes, I know. It's the worst. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm going to restart it so we don't miss anything. There we go. Odinex's Journey to Ithaca. So what was the catalyst uh, for this game? Um, what what started you making uh, a shooter? Um, okay, first and foremost, I mean I've been a big big Atari Lynx fan since since my since I got my first one. I think I was ten or something like that. Uh, and when, when Zaku was published, I think it was 20, 2009 or something like that. Uh, that was one of the oh, actually it was the second big homebrew game on the Lynx. The first one being uh, Alpine Games, uh, I assume. Uh, and I immediately ordered it. And back then, it was very easy to get games from the US to Europe, uh, pretty fast and pretty cheap. <laughs> so I got the game, and I was like, "Wow!" Actually, I didn't even—I mean, I played that console like crazy when I was a kid, but I didn't remember or I didn't even know that certain things were possible, like huge sprites and, and uh, smooth animation. And actually, it was. It's just my my memories were a bit blurred. So I thought, okay, so how hard could that be? And I, I was actually visiting some some French forums um, here on it. Uh, hello to everybody from from this forum. It's, there is probably at least fattest on the chat. Um, and then I realized like that there was a bunch of people that were pretty active doing like small games. And then I looked into it, and yeah, you could actually code the game in C, which for me was you know C is sort of my limit. I mean, I can do some assembly languages, but I wouldn't dare to do a full game in assembly. So when I realized that it was there was like actually a library to develop uh, a trading game in C. I, I started working on, on some stuff. So one, one the first game I, I tried to to make was a Bomberman, Bomberman clone, which is sort of okay. finished, yep. but not completely. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm guessing multiplayer through uh, so, linking so, the links. So that's up. the part that is not finished. And then at the same time, there is a, <laughs> there right. is someone who actually made a, a Bomberman clone, which is multiplayer. So yeah. Um, that's what uh, keep me uh, working. On. I mean, yeah, I wanted to finish the game first. Um, so yeah, so I start uh, I start playing around and uh, back and forth. And uh, but you know, it's it's hard to. It's very easy to come up with a working prototype. It's so much harder to actually <laughs> yes. finish a game. And then there was um, yes. sort of like a, a break for a couple of years. And uh, on the 30th anniversary, there is this website called uh, Atari Game uh, Igor, uh, which is I think pretty famous in the Link scene now. Who decided yeah. to you know to to try to to, to make something happen and. Uh, he started uh, interviewing de developers uh, like me and uh, creating this uh, really cool website, Atari Gamer. I think now it has been renamed to Atari Lynx Vault. Uh, so if you need any yeah. information about the Atari Lynx games, etc., like that's the place to go. To go. Uh, and long story short, uh, so he he started like uh, encouraging people to contribute, and then at the, at the same time, uh, I, I don't remember if it was he started that or he did that just after, uh, but. Either them or Silly Venture, they they had uh, like a comp game competition for 
uh, the 30th anniversary. And my first idea was like, okay. oh yeah, my, my favorite game of all time is Another World. So I'm just gonna make, oh. or try to make something One second, similar. one second, hold that yep. thought. I have to uh, fix something here, you just cut out. It's like it's got a time limit or something. Yep. Okay, you're back, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, I don't know where I was, but basically, long story short, uh, City Ventures, they uh, organize a, a competition, a Lynx competi gaming competition uh, yeah. for the 30th anniversary. And I realized like making a game like Another World would be <laughs> was a bit too too uh, optimistic for a, a game jam. So I, I thought, okay, let's yeah. try to do a shooter. And uh, I was in contact with uh, uh, Agadano, who was uh, uh, already uh, working on Jaguar games. And he made a couple of mock-up, and I was like, hey, you know what, instead of going sci-fi, why don't we try to do something a bit different? And I suggested to go for um, um, a, a mix between Greek mythology and sci-fi. And yeah, he started to sketch a couple of enemies, that first level here. And I was like, wow, that, yeah. that's pretty cool. And I can actually stream whatever you want uh, on the link screen. You know, the, the links is not tile-based, it's, it's just basically a sprite machine. And with a few uh, okay. technique and uh, optimization, uh, we uh, I was able to to stream any kind of uh, image directly from the cartridge onto the screen. So that gave uh, Agadano the the possibility to you know to, to draw whatever he wanted. So um, so yeah. yeah. So we had uh, I think one or two level made for this uh, jam. So that was November 2019 actually. So four years ago. Um, and mm. you know <laughs> like from one or two level and then. You know, a bit, a bit rough in, in, in the, on the edge uh, to more flesh out uh, experience. Uh, it took a while. Uh, and then I think the big problem was uh, first adding more content. So more art, more enemies, all the design. Uh, I mean, a shooter is kind of like an easy game to make, but not when right. you want, you know, a prototype like this. Probably the easiest prototype you can make is a shooter. But to make a full flesh experience, it's <laughs> yeah. it's a different story, especially when you start having a ton of graphics, etc. So there was there yes. was many many times where I basically faced uh, links limitation, uh, not enough space and not <laughs> enough memory, and you know I was just trying uh -huh. to like okay now yeah. I was telling uh, my artist like ah, now it's over like we can't we can't push anything anymore, and then I was just <laughs> thinking a bit and we're like okay maybe I can move that things here and there and yeah so it took a while uh, and I think around 2022 so a year and a half ago something like that I was almost done uh, and that's then yeah. that's when I decided to have a, a second baby <laughs> so oh, no. so yeah uh, that takes up a bit of time <laughs> let's yeah. say that yeah, for for um, for the past year or so I, I yeah it was really difficult to do uh, anything meaningful during uh, my spare time because I had no spare time um, but uh, around last summer, I was like, okay, now the baby is finally sleeping a bit better, so let's do that. And uh, I think <laughs> for two or three months, we just, uh, yeah, we just work hard. And uh, yeah, we wrap up everything, and that was perfect because that was just when, in time when uh, Albert had, uh, yeah, um, decided to uh, to start yeah. publishing the game. So gonna, um, yeah, perfect timing. I was, I was going to ask about that. Um, how did the association between uh, Atari Age and yourself in terms of publishing and distributing the game happened because like I said, uh, talked with Albert uh, at the top of the show, yeah. these are these two games that we're gonna be showing today for the Lynx are Atari Age's exactly. first yeah. two Correct. Lynx games. So the decision for you to go with Atari Age rather than maybe another um, publisher or distributor, how did you and Al you know, link up in that way. Obviously, Al is very well known. He's not like yep. a new person, but yeah, how did that happen? Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know uh, about uh, the other Atari machine, but on the links, there is a couple of uh, person, uh, company who have been around for a while. Uh, Carl from Songbird, yep. that I salute, by the way. Yep. Um, Songbird, yeah. There is a Fades from Yasuna in Europe that is also has been around for a while, uh, or at, at least as a programmer and for a couple of years as a an editor, publisher. Uh, but what happened is, I think, yep. is Albert was the first to reach out to us. And uh, so we didn't really think about it. It was like, OK, why not? Like, that's kind of like, yeah, that's, that sounds pretty good. I mean, looking at what yep. uh, what he published on uh, Jaguar and uh, other Atari console, we were like, yeah, it's, that's probably going to be a quality edition. So yeah, that was a no-brainer. Oh, yeah, but 
honestly, I think it's, it's it was just the first to ask, <laughs> and we thought, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah. Um, there was no reason to, to 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 say no. It's like yeah, that sounds like a, a good experience to have anyway. Um, and now, yeah, it's it's kind of funny because with all the recent development, it's it's kind of like yeah, um, Atari, Atari through Atari Age is publishing Atari game again. So yeah, that's kind of a, yep. a fun story. Yeah, in the end. <laughs> <laughs> as I as I say yeah, to some kind of a bonus, I guess it's like an official Atari game. Sort almost? of. I don't know. Kind I, of? <laughs> I guess Albert can, can confirm or not. I guess it's not an Atari <laughs> official game, but it's an Atari. Yeah. Uh, Adjacent what, what do you call game. that? Uh, sister <laughs> company or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Atari sister company. Yes. Yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, w one thing I wanted um, to to say because I I think we had the same problem. I think the color are a bit off. Um, I know. Yeah, I, I tried very quickly before the show yeah. to to make it better, but on future shows, yes, I will. I'll I'll try and get the colors correct, but. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's uh, an issue with my VGA adapter. The mm. colors are a bit off. It might be something I might be able to do in post yeah. uh, through my RetroTink, my upscaler, to adjust the colors. But they're they they are a bit off. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a bit. A bit off, uh, it was a bit. Uh, an artist could could tell probably better, but it, the green is a bit too strong. So you you see, it's a, it's a bit greenish everything. Um, right. But yeah, it's um it's too much green green in the browns. Yeah. 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 So this is not what it would look like on an actual Lynx. This is because of adapters and upscalers all and capture cards mm. manipulating the image. And it's something I struggle with <laughs> constantly because I have so many different systems I hook up to this mm. and um, each one treats things differently. And obviously the Lynx was never really meant to be a, a dockable system. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the game does look a little different. Yeah, I see someone in the chat is asking about music in stream, so I, I don't I don't know if he's talking about this specific game, but maybe a word on on the music uh, because um, that's okay. uh, I think the music is pretty pretty decent, and that uh, that's thanks to the work of yeah. uh, the help of Micah, so uh, pretty pretty good mm. uh, uh, Atari musician. Uh, <laughs> music are not it says originally music from here. Music adaptation. So, is it um, pre-existing exactly. music that he? Yeah. So, um, so there, there. I'm listening to two kind of music: uh, rock and metal, as probably half of the developer game developer in the world. Uh, but I also like cheap tunes. <laughs> yeah. um, and sometimes when I'm like, okay, like I'd like to to just discover some new sort of music, I just go online and just check for uh, mod music. And one day I just came across a, a, a musician, uh, which name is uh, Drozerix, um, and I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. And I started listening to all these songs, and I was like, wow, that I really like this kind of uh, very energetic, very melodic music. And most of these songs, if not all, were on four channels. So I thought, okay, that's that's something okay. I can work with. And I started to try to convert them, but um, I'm not a musician, so I, I, I had okay result, but not perfect. But I could see there was some potential. So first I reached out to him. I managed to, I mean, he posted this, this mods maybe 15, 20 years ago. And there was an email and I just brought this email and the guy answered. And he's like, yeah, I'm still around wow. actually. Uh, and um, <laughs> nice. uh, apparently he's also involved in the retro gaming community, but more on Game Boy, if I'm not uh, mistaken. But he told me like, yeah, sure. If you want to use the, the song in your games, no problem. Um, so yeah, with that authorization, I, I started to ask people around and I, I I knew Micah was actually playing around with Cheaper, which is kind of the mod, uh, the main mod tracker tracker on the on the links or for the links. And yeah, he he just said, yeah, I can have a look. And I think the the same day, just a few hours later, he had already converted one one of the songs like like so well. I was like, wow, dude, like <laughs> we need to talk. And then yeah, he just converted all the <laughs> I think seven or eight songs uh, from Drosdricks, who okay. are now in the game. So we had we had some limitation because you know we have four channels and on a shooter you you can't you can't I mean you technically you can use only one channel for uh, for SFX but you will have collision you know you'll okay. have so many stuff happening so we had to use uh, two channels uh, if 
anyone knows better technique, please tell me. So basically, he converted all the song <laughs> on four channel onto two channels, but he's doing some some kind of tricky magic, switching the instrument on on one single channel too, so that uh. there are more more instrument uh, 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 at the same time. So yeah, kind, kind of uh, nice. musician magic magician. If you. <laughs> <laughs> Very musician, magician. Exactly. That's hard to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, just to touch on uh, before we let you go on the bosses, they are absolutely mm -hmm. massive mm -hmm. bosses on the screen. Is that something that's easy to do on the links? Because on other systems, it's like, well, this would overwhelm the system. Yep, um, like you would use up all your resources with sprites or tiles or something. So there is. So you basically need two ingredients. So the first one, you need the talented pixel artist. Uh, that the first things, yeah. and uh, we had one in the team. Uh, the second, the second one is basically a RAM uh, limitation. Like you, you just need to make sure that you have enough RAM uh, to just load your sprite. Um, so if you look carefully, uh, the sprite, the, the, the big sprite, they yeah. are animated, but not entirely. It's like we just, uh, we just selected right. one part of the sprite that is animated so that we basically the, the animation is just a small overlay over the main sprite uh, so that's very visible with the first boss you know like this big cyclop uh, he, he, only the eye is animated so basically the whole enemy is in memory but the animation is just the eye so it's a much smaller one um, so yeah just right. make sure like it's, it's a lot of memory optimization I just make sure like okay I need I think it's like two or three thousand kilobytes for uh, for a boss, something like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so if you have that, the pixel artist and enough memory, it's just out of the box. Uh, the Lynx is, uh, is a fantastic system. You, you don't have to play with like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna like, like in many 8-bit games, when you, when you would see something big on screen, you would have no background because they would use the tiles, like the tiles of the background to draw the, to draw the monster. Uh, while here, no, right. it's just, just yeah just draw sprite as many as you want so your only limit is wow. ram and bandwidth um so yeah right well very powerful system exactly yeah um yeah so um anything you'd like to add or people to thank before we let you go um <laughs> yes uh i, th I think we, we try to <laughs> To, to put uh, um, all um, the people who help us uh, in, in the manual, but uh, more generally speaking, like uh, yeah, my my co um, what would what would I say co developer, uh, so Agradana and uh, Miker as well. Um, so they've been uh, I think we've been a really good, really good and efficient team, uh, and we never uh, argue for too long, and uh, we never fought. So that was that was <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, obviously, that Albert. Is good. Who, yeah, um, yeah he's, he's super busy, but uh, you know, when he puts <laughs> the focus on you, it's uh, it's very efficient. It's like uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, at every age, I mean, I'm there every day. Um, that's kind of my little break uh, from from work generally. So um, yeah, I mean, sometimes <laughs> there are some arguments, but I try to keep my distance. I don't have the time and energy for this kind of stuff. Yeah. But most uh, of the people are really nice. I stay so, out of the arguments. Yeah. So um, yeah, and Jeremy, all of the relax uh, fun in the world. I hope um, you will enjoy the game. Um, yeah, we, we have plans for the future. Um, maybe with the same license, something like that. We have a few ideas we're playing with. We'll see. But for now, yeah, we just uh, want to enjoy the, the game to be out. Um, and uh, yeah, it's finally there in the store, I see. I think Albert put it today, so. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's available for people to buy. All the games we're going to be playing today, yep. uh, including Oda Nexus. And I think anybody who has a Lynx that uh, enjoys shooters is going to just be really, really happy with mm -hmm. this game. I found it just... It's it's a perfect balance yep. of difficulty, like, like most of the games we're going to be playing today. Uh, really, really well balanced. Um, because I think Homebrew, because they don't have this rush this limitation of we have to get it out before christmas or before june or something like that people can take their time to wait until the game is well done well balanced it can take one year it can take five years it doesn't matter yep. so yeah it's great great job on uh odin Nexus. it's absolutely stunning yep. thanks James. 
in all aspects. Thanks, thanks a lot. And just maybe one last thing, uh, in, a, in, a, in a couple of months, if, if people can't finish the game, because that's, that's the one thing I love all games, I hate their difficulty. Uh, so there, there is a cheat code in the game to, to get okay. much more lives to, to make sure you can finish the game. So in, I think in a couple of months we will just uh, uh, release a cheat code so that people can uh, can finish the game, but I mean, Excellent. I don't think the game is very complicated. At, at least when you when you play it the first time, after you unlock mm -hmm. a slightly dif more difficult mode. But we yeah. try to balance the game so that yeah, it's it's not this kind of game where you want to throw your <laughs> your console through the window. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's it's not it's not overly difficult. It's not unfairly difficult. I was able to finish the first pass round. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't know that there is a second harder pass through. There is of yes. the game. <laughs> so there so there's still still more room for me to play this game. So I'm looking forward to doing another uh pass through of the game. Yep. So thank you so much for coming on Alex. It's been a pleasure um talking with you and playing your uh stunning game. Yep. Thank you James. Uh -huh. Thank you Tanya. And uh yeah. hey William I saw you are in in the chat I didn't see. <laughs> oh excellent. <laughs> So we will talk with you soon, yep. and we'll see you in the Atari Age forums. That's for sure. <laughs> see you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Excellent. Yeah, really fun, 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 fun game. Um, looks like you're doing pretty good. You made it to the second boss? Oh, the second round, but... Uh, uh... Yeah, it gets really hard if you don't have the power-ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, like, like the triple shot where the, the 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 upper level um when you die and then you go down a level and then you can't get it back and then it's like oh, oh this yeah. suddenly becomes a lot harder. That that is yeah. the, the bane of any uh, But that's how shooters work. <laughs> shooter. <laughs> you got to uh, keep your power-ups or you're in trouble. Anybody who plays shooters, yeah. Yeah, you're in yeah. trouble. But uh, yeah, I found the game. It's it's at the exact right mm -hmm. level of difficulty mm -hmm. for me anyway. Uh, when I was playing it on the show last time, when we did the uh, premiere of the final version of the game. Yeah, it's hard, but it's at that level where you just want to keep trying. It's not yes. so hard yes, that you give up on important. it, and that is, I think, a really key thing. Yeah, there was a black bar covering part of the chat. Uh, I do apologize for that. That was because I had to quickly <laughs> manipulate the links for my new setup. And oh, because it's I see. not properly done through the retro tank, because usually I shrink the sides. Yes. And the left hand side of is was not shrunk. So it was expanded so, out. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was covering some of the yeah. some of the chat. So I will yeah. uh, fix that for this next game. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which is Growing Ties Deluxe, mm. if you want to grab that from the pile. And this is done by Dr. Ludos, the mysterious Dr. Ludos, who uh, will not be able to join us today, but he did submit a written nice. um, interview of sorts. So we'll be able to go through that. Nice. Uh, which is why I gave a little bit more time to the last uh, developer. Um, yeah, so we're a tiny bit behind. So That's okay. That's, we'll be, it happens. We'll, we'll, get, we'll be able to get through this one pretty quick. Yeah. Because we don't... We just I just have to read out the You're statement. reading it out, yeah. Yeah, so let's take a look at the unboxing of Growing Ties Deluxe. Uh, let's see. Which one do I do without the interview? There we go. Oh, there is Growing Ties Deluxe. Very nice. And this also includes two bonus games. Uh, three bonus games, oh, Time wow. Loop, Fishing, and Gift Catcher, oh. which we did show um, when on we one of the did streams. The I didn't do it, but I remember I, I did have a look at the stream before, and, before and today. And those so. games are amazing. They're yeah. not just throwaway games. They're, they're just little they're really good, fun, extra, extra, extra games. games. Well, I guess yeah. that's where the deluxe comes in, it right? It is deluxe. Yep. It is a deluxe. So let's take a look. Here's the back of the box. And... Let's take a look. At Very it. colorful. I like it. Oh yeah, absolutely great artwork by once again Bit Jag William Thorpe for doing the packaging. I guess that's what Doctor Ludo's looks like, somewhat. <laughs> we'll never know. We'll never Mysterious. know. Mysterious. Yeah, the 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 artwork was great, and we were also showing video of this um, before the before the stream on um, Twitch, and there's the cartridge. Let's flip through the manual really quick here. 
very uh, very on brand. It's got the wood background uh, for the store, the tie store. Nice. It's got a whole bunch of ties all over the place through the manuals, through the manual. So A to grow the tie, B to cut it. I'm not sure if you've played this. Have you played I this? I haven't. Before? I did okay. watch the, the the stream. stream. Okay. So it looks fairly simple. Yeah, it's fairly straightforward. And then there's the bonus games. We probably won't get to the bonus games. But we'll today, play grown But ties. we did play the bonus games on another day, so That's, you can take a look. You can always have a look at that, yeah. Yeah, you can take a look at the other stream. And Dr. Ludos does a lot of Game Boy games, as you can see in there. Hmm. Uh, there we go. Very so nice. Those Lynx in. carts are so small. I yep. love them. <laughs> Very cute. Tiny little cartridges. Tiny little cartridges. <laughs> Let's pop that in. Okay. And I will adjust it so it will look proper. Oh, I think it's already good. I don't need to adjust it. Excellent. Bonus game, start game, level select. Yeah, start, start game. A, grow the tie, B, cut the tie. Can we do a treat time? If we get ahead of yes, time. Yes, yes. Right now, we are not ahead. But there may be chances later for that. Okay, growing ties deluxe. Ooh, I Here's see. the in right up for that. Make sure I've got all the pages here. And if the volume's too loud or too quiet, I noticed the volume was too quiet for a little bit before I adjusted it on the last game. Just let me know in the chat. Um, there is an alert that you can do actually as well. Um, let's say alert, alert, there's something wrong with the stream or something. Okay, so Growing Ties Deluxe. Um, about the game and packaging, uh, about the team. At first, the game was a solo project yeah. developed from scratch over a quite a long period of time. Alongside the journey, I got a very kind offer from Carl Forehand from Songbird Productions, who created the very catchy music for the game. The game itself is published by Atari Age, with a lot of work from Albert E. Russo, as it was his first Atari Lynx release. And last but not least, Albert commissioned the talented artist William Thorpe to draw the beautiful cover art, but also to design and create the manual and boxes. It's a, f it's like formal attire kaboom, Reverend Tulsa. Yeah, says. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is. a little bit, yeah. Not quite as uh, intense as kaboom. Kaboom is like, blows my mind. Um, so talking about the process uh, of the game, uh, getting it to the state that it is right now. Um, the creation of the game was quite a lengthy process with three major milestones. First. It started in 2015 as a web game created for a game jam. During the Ludum Dare 34 event, I created a prototype version of this game from scratch in 48K, bad cats, um, using Adobe Flash. I received great feedback on this game during the event. Uh, players seemed to enjoy the core gameplay idea. Of course, the game was lacking in terms of content with only a single level gathering 20 random patrons. A hobbyist game developer, I didn't, as a hobbyist game developer, I didn't have further plans in mind for the game at this point. Hey. Back up. Matt doing a very good job. Uh, but I was glad the players enjoyed it. I even ported the game to mobile right after the event and realized, realis, released it as freeware like the web version. Uh, number two, as so the second inception of the game, an Atari Lynx remake for a coding competition in 2019. Uh, during the summer of 2019, to celebrate a 30th anniversary of the Atari Lynx, Igor Kroman, arguably the number one Atari Lynx fan, organized a programming competition for AtariGamer.com. People had the whole summer to create a brand new game for the Atari Lynx. This greatly motivated me to study deeper how the Lynx works and how to make games for it. One thing that fascinated me by studying the Lynx is how I was able to stretch and resize any sprite on screen. So I started thinking how I could use this unique sprite resizing ability for a game. I remembered about growing ties where the s tie sprites are growing on screen. Moreover, the original web game graphics were drawn at 160 by 120, not far away from the 160 by 102 resolution of the Lynx. And that's how Let's get Remake Growing Ties and the Atari Lynx project got started, with the goal of enhancing and extending the original web game, while at the same time adapting it to the mighty handheld. 
At the end of the summer, I submitted the game to the competition and got very positive feedback. It even ranked number three position. The result astounded me as there were a lot of very good and impressive games submitted during this competition. <laughs> and the third, an enhanced version for cartridge release, which is the one we're showing today. Uh, growing pains and family ties. That's a mix of the two. That's funny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, motivated by this good feedback, I decided to continue working on the game, adding more levels and more game modes while also polishing the overall experience. Meanwhile, I was also discussing growing ties with Albert Iruso from Atari Age, who already published my Atari 2600 game, Sheep It Up, back in 2018. Very fun game. At the time, Atari Age didn't have Lynx games in his catalog, but Albert was very interested in releasing games for the handheld. However, he warned me it would take some time, as there was a lot of work to create the PCB. Shells, manuals from scratch, as he didn't have any template yet. In late 2020, I was approached by Carl Forehand from Songbird Productions, another homebrew publisher specialized in Atari Lynx and Jaguar releases. He was also interested in publishing the game and offered me to compose music for it, as he's also a talented developer and musician. I told him that already had a deal with Atari Age, but he still offered to compose music for the game, fully aware that it was going to be published by another publisher. It was a very cool move for him to do so, so thank, thank you a lot, Carl, for your help, now that the game features very catchy music. Which we can't hear, but I'll turn it up a little bit. There we go. Uh, as you can see, the Atari Lynx homebrew community is really wonderful. It's filled with great people... Uh, that are more interested in helping each other and keep the console alive than turning a profit. That's a very positive attitude. The software development for the deluxe version of Growing Ties was comp completed at the end of summer 2021, but sadly that's also when a huge chip shortage crisis hit the world, delaying the physical release of the project. While I was waiting for the crisis to resolve, I created other, smaller Lynx games for various game jams ran over Atari Age forums. As I just told you, the Atari Lynx homebrew developer community is very friendly and likes to create new games just for the fun of it. In total, we had to wait about two more years for the Atari Age to be able to publish the game in physical form. Positive side of this chip shortage delay is that I included three small Lynx games I created while waiting as bonus content on the cartridge. Wanna come up? I hope you enjoy them too. At the end, almost four years of additional efforts, I'm happy to, that Albert kept working on the physical release materials yeah, and that cro couch gro compliant. You have not couch compliant. Not <laughs> compliant. Someone was playing with the <laughs> playing with the things, the alerts. Uh, no, it's couch compliant. It is. Yeah, so far we haven't had to touch anything. <laughs> um, it was also almost an eight year journey from the original web version prototype to the fully featured Atari Lynx game cartridge you now have in your hands. Hope this game will give you as much fun as I had creating it. Um, this was my first Lynx game ever. Uh, this is about any difficulties making the game. So I learned a lot about how the Lynx is working internally. I'd like to thank Ale Alex uh, Thyssen for his wonderful... Hey, bad cat. Bad kitty. Wonderful tutorial series on how to make Lynx games using C. It allowed me to learn how to make a Lynx game. Huge mention to Atari Age 2, especially the Lynx programming forum. That is a gold mine of information regarding Lynx programming. Uh, reception to the game. The prototype Lynx version received good feedback over the Atari Age forums. People seem to enjoy the original game concept. I also enjoyed watching you play the game on ZPH. Thank you. Uh, regarding the full version of the game, as it's just been released, I haven't gotten any feedback yet, but I'm eager to see what players think of it. Hopefully, they will enjoy it. And anyone you'd like to thank? Uh, I'll first by thanking the people who worked directly on the project, Carl Forehand for the music, William Thorup, and Albert Uruso for the physical release. I'd also like to thank the wonderful Lynx Homebrew developers and player community over at Atari Age Forum, as they are very welcoming and helpful for this project. I'd like to make a special mention to Kerry Caxonen, who created and is still maintaining the complete C-based tool chain to make games on the Lynx. I'd also like to thank Nop90, who released the game template using Kerry's tool chain that was really helpful to get me started making Lynx games. Last but not least, I'd like to thank Igor Kroman, Korman for uh, running several Lynx game creation events since 2019 that continue to happen each year, which is happening right now, actually, the Lynx Jam. Uh, back in 2019, after spending the whole summer... Oh, yep, sorry. Did we start it? I was hoping you would. <laughs> you were going to hit a... Uh, almost done. A break point there. I don't, I don't know what's happening, but... Yeah, it seems to be kind of rebooting or something. I think it might be my uh, power supply. The power supply? I was having some trouble. Oh, see? 
having trouble again. Having trouble. Oh no. Okay, well, we'll finish this out. Okay. Without that Read on the it screen. out. At least yeah. we got to see a fair amount of the gameplay, so that's good. Yes. Yeah. Um, back in 2019, after spending a whole summer developing the game for the Atari Age competition, I had a feature complete beta version of Growing Ties, but up to that point, I was only testing the game on an emulator named Handy for PC. Indeed, while I did have and still have an Atari Lynx 2 at home, I didn't have a way to run my game on it yet, so I'd like to give another round of acknowledgement to Kerry Caxonen, who agreed to manufacture and sell me 3D printed homebrew cart. Link's homebrew cart with a beta version of Growing Ties on it. It was extra cool for him to do so, not, not only because he was a participant in the programming competition too, but he was also busy manufacturing cartridges of his own game on duty at the time. Also a very good game. So Kerry, really thank you a lot for all your help on this project. Uh, anything else you'd like to uh, add? For those who want to see more of my work, I'm creating homebrew games for several consoles that I like, mainly the ones from 8 16-bit generations, Game Boy, SNES, Mega Drive, Genesis, Neo Geo, Ooh, Neo, Neo Geo, Geo, Atari 2600, Atari Lynx, Game Gear, Master System, NES, etc. Wow. You can find my, all my games here at drludos.itch.io. Nice. I also have a Patreon page where I publish prototypes and beta versions of all my projects early, which is at patreon.com forward slash drludos. Very nice. So there's some more information on how to get uh, more information on other games other, he has yeah. made or is making. That's awesome. Um, okay, so let's get the next person on the line, which is Mike Letow, nice. for two of his games for the 2600, Electro Ball and Berry Fun. Let's pop this out. Disconnect it a little bit. I'll switch it over when we're ready to go to the next system. <laughs> oh, excellent. He's on the line. We'll switch over to you shortly, Mike. I will uh, and package this up and get his probably two games ready. Electro Ball and Berry Fun. Berry Fun. And You're able to hear us and see us, Mike? Yes? Thumbs up. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're first going to start with Electro Ball. So let's switch over. And then chat with Mike. Hello, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Excellent. So thank you for coming on today for our Atari Age 2023 for all the new releases from Atari Age. And you've got two. I have. Two releases. Lucky you. Been busy. Very fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a look at uh, the first one. The first one we're going to take a look at is Electro Ball. So let's get that on the screen. And stunning, stunning uh, cover artwork there. Amazing cover art. Yeah. Uh, so who did this? So uh, when I uh, when we were getting the game ready for publishing, uh, I essentially have no artistic skills of my own. So I was... You know, fully dependent upon Al to uh, reach into his, his many a stable of many talented artists, and uh, as luck would have it, Vladimir Zuniga himself, VHZC, uh, was the one who offered to take on the uh, cover art. Um, I had uh, I had sort of a vision board, but I you know kind of the feelings that I would like for it. Uh, I wanted something that would that looked futuristic, uh, a, a futuristic look from the early '80s. Uh, and so I sort of had a vision board of, you know, lightsaber battles and, you know, Tron and, and uh, old epics titles and things like that. Uh, so there's that requirement. But then there's also the requirement of, of trying to visualize these sprites, which is, you know, basically, you know, an eight by eight character. And so you had to have a ball and then you had to have a screen in front of it. And Vladimir just knocked it out of the park. I was, I was, uh, you know, I, I was just blown away by the, by the artwork. Yeah, he's he's an incredibly talented developer, but on top of that, he's an astounding graphic artist. Uh, he does all his own artwork for his own games. He's a one-man band. And uh, it always astounds me when I see him working on other people's games at the same time. So 
Uh, you're very fortunate to uh, <laughs> to have the talented uh, artwork from VHZC. Yes, I mean, this perfectly captured what I wanted in the artwork for the game. Yeah, it, it really does like um, enhance the vision of what the game is like in real life, right? Right. <laughs> if you could bring Electro Ball into real life. Oh, it has a different different artwork on the cartridge. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a lot of uh, sample artwork and uh, was able to apply it for the cover and, and for the, the cartridge. And I really dig the, uh, the, the title. Uh, you know, it has a, the Electro is in, in bright red neon and then the, the ball is in, you know, uh, cool blue lightning. Yeah, it looks absolutely stunning. So let's boot up the game. All right. And ho going. hopefully you'll be able to capture the uh, Atari H splash screen that I was able to uh, grab from the forums. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice when you have that, that little intro. Oh, 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 they got it. Just barely. <laughs> I'm going to oh. try and re reboot it again uh, now that I have the volumes adjusted so we can catch that again. Because it's very, very quick. Yes. There we go. Okay, so here... I think oh, you have to... That's right, we're going to switch in. over the controller now. Yeah. Back to the 2600. I got the Twitch stream going right to my to my left, so if you see me looking uh, over there, that's... I'm seeing what's on the screen. Check, checking for any... Uh, checking quality control, right? right? <laughs> Um, so let's talk a bit about the um, process from beginning to getting this game on cartridge. How long was the development time? Uh, well, the on, development time uh, Electro Ball? was very long. Um, so I, uh, you know, during the uh, summer 2020, uh, you know, I, I was scrolling through social media and I saw an ad for, uh, you know, learn to program for the Atari 2600. And you know, that was a time where people were, were you know, making sourdough starters or, or learning a, a language. I said, well, I could learn a language, it's, you know, 6502. Um, so I took a, a, the course by uh, Gustavo Pezzi, uh, uh, who uh, now hosts his course at Pacuma.com. Um, and uh, so I started, I started learning that. I started looking for any tutorials I could find. Uh, Andrew Davies' uh, book on uh, coding for yep. 600. Uh, Daryl Spice figures, uh, collect tutorial. Uh, I was uh, looking at uh, all sorts of Atari Age forum posts. Uh, I looked at uh, Dennis Debro has a bunch of really excellent uh, breakdowns of uh, you know the original cartridges and, and well commented code. And so just based yes. on on you know those four or five sources, I was like, okay, I'm ready to, to try a game. Uh, you know, the first several months were, uh, I was trying various game concepts, but they were a little bit too advanced for, for my skill level at the time. Uh, and at the time <laughs> yeah. I, I was, you know, sometimes I was wondering, what, this is this is supposed to be entertaining. Why am I doing this? I'm very frustrated. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, eventually uh, I, I, I was able to settle on a concept. It was actually, you know, I was watching the, the, the ZPH stream where uh, you feature yep. Carl G's RC Sumo bots. And that kind of uh, oh, yes. picked up an idea, like, oh, I, I really love this momentum-based, uh, you know, movement. And that reminded me of uh, Hat Trick, which was a, a game that I used to play, uh, still do, uh, where you know that was one-on-one -on -one ice hockey, where you have goalies. It was like, well, you know, I have the goalies, that could be the missiles. I have the, the players, that could be the sprites, and then the ball is the ball. Uh, so it's like, well, yep. I have, and you know, based my, my first game, I wanted to not do anything fancy with the display kernel. So, you know, once I defined the ball right. and the sprites and the missiles, I wanted to be just that. Um, so, unfortunately, yep. this this game really, uh, you know, was able to take advantage of that, and then uh, was able to do things like you know, change the background for the grass. Uh, Yep. Uh, I uh, used Andrew Davies' asymmetric playfield code to come up with a, with at the time was a time bar uh, as a count out okay, yep. that way. Uh, and you know, so I finished it. Uh, you know, uh, I uh, and then when uh, you uh, showed it on your stream, 
uh, you know, it was an 8K game at the time, and you had to use the select and reset switches a lot to change between uh, the, uh, the options. Um, and, you know, I got, so I, sh I shamed you into couch compliance? That's right. Is that it? You, you helped me <laughs> the term couch compliant. Uh, so I, I took the feedback. I was like, well, okay, so let's, uh, you know, Jane didn't like the fact that they had to get up and, you know, start flicking switches. <laughs> And so it's like, well, you know what, uh, you know, I got inspired by you know, some of the menus from Daryl Spice Jr.'s games. And I was like, well, let's yep. just, you know, make it so you can do everything from the controller. Uh, and, yep. you know, I, I, then I did, you know, I, I, I coined the cheeky term, you know, couch compliance. Uh, you know, my day job, yep. there's a lot of, uh, you know, you have to be compliant to certain standards. So I said, you know, why not? <laughs> uh, and so and thus, you know, that, uh, you know, homebrew history was made. That's right. And, you know, the couch compliance is almost uh, born out of the modern sensibility mm -hmm. of having everything accessible from uh, the joystick rather than everything on the console, because modern consoles have an on button. That That's it, really. Maybe a reset, maybe a disc eject if it's like previous generations. But um, you go back to the 2600 and there's lots of switches, so people want to take advantage of them. But um, we're now doing homebrew in 2023, and so a lot of modern sensibilities start to creep in to homebrew games. So I really do thank you for putting the menu in there, and it really gives a sense of modernity for uh -huh. uh, the games. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also uh, something for a lot of developers to shoot for. You know, can can you make it so that you know everything can be controlled from the controller itself? Yeah. Um, I love head-to-head -head two-player games because I usually have, you know, I almost always have a um, co-host on the show, yeah. and I I find that uh, humans are unpredictable when you play against humans. Uh -huh. So it really, you know, steps up the gameplay when you're playing with two people. Um, so I want to thank you for making an awesome two-player game thank you. that has a lot of strategy to it and a lot of variations of the gameplay as well. But you also added in, unlike combat, an AI opponent, or a computer opponent, let's not call it AI, but a computer opponent that you can play. Um, did you have any challenges making the computer opponent, um, you know, challenging enough that it's not like completely cheating, but not so that you can just destroy it at all times? Uh, well, because the uh, computer can uh, essentially make, you know, 60 decisions a second, uh, that, that it was it was actually pretty easy to make an AI or a computer opponent that was pretty difficult. Uh, you know, the first the first time that you and Tanya played, uh, you mentioned how hard the uh, the AI was, and I was like, oh wow, uh, yeah. you know, I made it really really challenging. And so, you know, in in my mind, it it changed from making a game to uh, crush, you know, the human to a game to entertain the human. Um, I, I, you know, I, I really wanted to make a game that was fun. I wanted, you know, something that you know, people would smile and laugh while they play. Um, and so, you know, I was able to, uh, you know, think of ways, how do I make the computer opponent a little bit easier? Uh, and, and so that, you know, if, right. if somebody can beat somebody on, uh, can beat the computer on easy, uh, then they can try it on medium. And if they can beat it on medium, try it on hard. And then, you know, if they, yep. if they try it on the hard, if they can beat it on hard, uh, you know, try playing for a longer game, or uh, you can use the difficulty switches yeah. to make it, you know, even more difficult. So, uh, you know, it's really interesting, you know, designing from an entertainment perspective rather than a, a competition perspective. Yeah, and it's great that you have those different levels of difficulty, and you started off with a computer opponent that was way too hard because you can always scale back, right? Rather than, oh, I don't even know how. The computer can even win against a human. The humans are just too crafty, too too skilled. So right. that's good that you've added in those level of difficulties, so that people can play it at any level of um, skill. Right. So Tanya's currently beating the computer, but, but very just marginally. It's marginally. like uh, Atari so, versus Sprite in the uh, Treat Wars right now. So. <laughs> so yeah, so it's it's obviously uh, a good level for her to play against. Um, anything you'd like else to, like to add about Electro Ball before we move on to your second game? Actually, a good thing to note is this is your first game this is that first. you've ever made on the 2600. 
Yeah, I, um, I mean, for a day job, you know, I do, uh, I, I uh, work on scientific instrumentation, uh, C Sharp, C++, not really anything games. Uh, you know, I've been a gamer all my life. I had the 2600 when it originally came out. Um, and so, you know, a lot of it was based on, uh, you know, my, my experiences with, with other games. Uh, you know, for example, for basketball, for the 2600, you know, when the sprites, uh, mm -hmm. when one, one, one player has a ball, and when the other player comes to grab it, you know, the, the ball will instantly zigzag between them, you know, every, every frame. Uh, and so I <laughs> wanted to add a cool <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there was, uh, and you know, one of the options for this game uh, is sort of like makes it sort of like an overhead ball blazer. Um, and yes. So, and so, but you know, one thing I noted about ball blazer was when you play it, you know, you can just run right up to the goal and just knock it in, and that didn't seem very yeah. fair. Um, so uh, I, uh, you know, made it so that there are these, you know, force fields that the oscillate back and forth, so that. You know, you can you can get through there, but it's really tough. And you know, it's best if you just take your shot from from the distance. Um, and so, yeah. And then a lot of this is I had uh, uh, with the extra time uh, because with homebrew you can code at your own pace. You don't have to worry about making it by Christmas or, or the company goes under. Uh, so I was able to do a lot of <laughs> yeah. uh, extra polishing, like uh, you know, the the press fire. Uh, uh, screen so that way uh, that gives the player a breather like if you needed to you know get a drink or something you can just you know sit there and, right. and, and wait uh, I also added a little bit of flourish for when a player scores a goal um, you know that their their color uh, flashes a little bit and I got that idea uh, when when you and Tanya were doing your 2600 you know mega showcase uh, there is a, a star gunner by Telesis, you know, showed some sprites that were, you know, constantly oscillating. I said, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to, I'm going to borrow that. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, the big change between, uh, when, uh, this game was originally, you know, marked as final and when it, when it made its debut, uh, at Atari age was, uh, I actually added a clock. Uh, the time bar was a good concept at the idea, but, you know, I finally learned how to reposition sprites during the display kernel. And you know, I was able to repurpose you know the uh, two sprites to be the uh, hour and minute, and then one of the missiles as the uh, two dots in the middle. And so that way, uh, somebody who just walks up to it at you know the Atari Age booth is going to realize, oh yeah, that's the game clock. So it's, they don't have to you know under try to understand what the time bar is or, or how that's distinguished. So I try to make it so that it is as uh, readily pick upable as possible. Yeah, it's very straightforward to understand what's happening and uh, and also the options that you give on the title screen for the different looks to the game and the different types of goalies. Can't, can't see him. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is really great because it uh, it adds a lot of replayability. Yeah. And that's and that's what you want in in a game when you when you when you purchase it, when you just download it for fun, that's fine. But when you want to offer this to the public where people are paying money. You want some replayability and having not only two players, but a, a computer opponent, pss, 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 stop it, um, <laughs> adds a lot to the replayability of the game. Yeah, and, and I wanted it to be as polished as possible because as you, you said, you know, it's, it's one thing to, you know, have a, a game for free and, you know, people can download. Uh, it's another when you're, you're offering it for people to actually pay money for. And so there, I think, you, yeah. you know, you, you really need to do as much as you can to make it as polished as possible. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to your second ever game, which is also being published uh -huh. uh, today by Atari Age, which is Berry Fun. That's right. Uh, a very uh, cute play on words there. <laughs> yeah, the great thing about homebrew is that, you know, you don't have to answer the marketing uh, to say, oh, that, that's an awful fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And I think with games, the worse the pun is, the better. Right. <laughs> like to make people groan and go, oh, my goodness. Yeah. You don't forget the name. Yeah. You don't forget the That's name. Exactly. It is like drilled into your brain. <laughs> so um, you have a different artist for uh, this game. Yes. Let me get this on the screen. So 
very colorful, very cutesy, very cartoonish. So who did the uh, artwork for this one? So this was the very talented John Calcano, uh, Atari Bori 2600, uh, you know, who has done many of the other uh, cover arts, uh, you know, for this one, and also uh, Circus Convoy for Audacity Games. Uh, so, yep. you know, now I can say that, you know, me and David Crane have something in common. <laughs> That's right. One, <laughs> uh, one point of separation. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I love the uh, whimsical nature of the of the uh, the artwork because you can just see the farmer and the robot going off and having the adventures together. Uh, because <laughs> the, the, the game itself, you know, can be quite intense, and you know, it, it could almost be, you know, you could almost point it as like a, a scathing indictment of you know capitalism, where you have to work harder and harder and harder to, to make more and more money. But you know, this way, it, yes. the art helps take a little bit of the edge off. Uh, off of it. <laughs> That's right. And the farmer doesn't seem to be too worried about like uh, losing his job to AI or anything. No. He, he knows how to work uh, within the system and uh, make it work for him. And, and, so he's not like, oh, the robots are taking over. Right. He's just trying to figure out this Galdarn, Galdarn robot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And the robot it looks like yeah, he's having really the time cute. of his life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, really cute, cute graphics, uh, gra artwork inside the manual as well with the sad robot with all the squished strawberries. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful manual. Yeah, he does a great job and it was, like I said before, it was an honor to meet him at uh, PRGE this year. And see the and meet the person behind all this incredible diverse art. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, and the also poster looking really good there. It was one of the six chosen to have a poster. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very colorful. I can see why this was chosen to have John did a, a poster. Fantastic job. Oh yeah. Let's just space all this out and pop it in our twenty six hundred. I don't know if Tanya's played this one before. I think I have. Yeah? Okay. So, so this game is uh, based heavily on uh, Whack-A-Mole and uh, also inspired by Hogan's Alley for the Nintendo, as well as a arcade game from the mid-80s called Bank Panic. Um, and this, oh, yeah. This is something, this is sort of a, uh, a recognized and react game. So, you know, you, you pick the good fruit and you avoid the bad fruit. <laughs> yeah, very, very easy to understand, but hard to master as as time goes on with it. Now, looking at the background, it reminds me of it just just barely reminds me of like Yar's Revenge. Yes. With the randomization. Well, it wasn't randomization of Yar's Revenge. It was actual code on the screen. So what did you use to make that background? I used the exact same uh, the exact same technique. Uh, you know, at this time, I was also reading Howard Scott Warshaw's book. Um, and so I got a Great lot book. of inspiration from that. And so I, actually, I yep. too use actual game code to you know, what, what make what I, I will claim as the most realistic dirt looking texture on the Atari 2600. <laughs> it's great dirt. It's the best dirt ever. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for each, you're not, at each you're part not. of the screen, uh, you know, I sort of, uh, I, I load in a, cer a, a, a certain part of the, the, uh, the code, but then I add a, a, an offset. So it, uh, when you're moving between, uh, you know, berries, it does this randomization uh, to, to mimic, you know, you moving over the dirt, and then once it stops, right. whatever whatever uh, random part, it, random number it's on, that's the dirt texture that it chooses. So, te I mean, technically, <laughs> you you probably won't see the same texture from screen to screen until you know a long while. <laughs> yeah. So it'll keep you, you know, busy looking at the 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 dirt and be like, oh, I recognize that dirt. He's reused right? that dirt. No, <laughs> won't happen. <laughs> That's that's hilarious. Um, so not only is Atari Age distributing your first game, Electro Ball, but also releasing your second game at the same time. Did you ever imagine this happening? The positive reception that you got from the community and from Atari Age embracing the ideas that you have for games? Uh, no, I really didn't anticipate it. Uh... You know, when I when I released the first game, I was like really nervous. Like I, I didn't know what kind of reception it would be. 
you know, I was worried I might be stepping on people's toes. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the reaction has been really warm and wonderful. Um, you know, the, the Atari 2600 homebrew community in general is, one, you know, one of the more supportive homebrew communities out there. Um, I, you know, yes. no, nobody really, uh, every, everybody, you know, wants uh, people to learn how to, to program. Uh, they, they don't hoard away their ideas of how to do things. Um, yes. There was a, a lot of things like uh, for, for bank switching for both games. You know, I, I, I got uh, the information from a thread that Thomas Yench and Dionoid were, were, were uh, posting on. Um, and then there were things like, you know, I wanted to add safe key support. Um, and so, uh, right. uh, you know, there, I think, I, I think Thomas yes, posted a thread on that as well. I was able to, to reserve some, uh, some, uh, uh, some space for that. And then there's also, because it's yep. a high, it's a high score cart. Uh, I, I was also interested in, in adding in plus, plus cart support. So I worked with Al Nefer, uh, he right. helped, he helped me with a lot of the code, uh, and he reserved some space for me. Uh, now, while the, yeah. the commercial version of this cart uh, won't work with the with the, with the plus cart, uh, the code is in there. Right, because so it's if, impossible. Yeah, so if Al <laughs> comes uh, out with like digital downloads, you could download this specific version, ah. upload it to your plus cart, and then you you can upload it to the uh, you know the plus ROM boards. Right. I was wondering how that would work with the the high score because. Obviously, you need uh, a Wi-Fi in the plus. The plus card has a Wi-Fi adapter, and it connects to the internet, uploads your score. Um, maybe one day Wi-Fi will make it into some carts, like standalone carts, but uh, not so far. But that would be very interesting. So that's that's very cool that you are keeping that uh, high score club cart um, code into the into the cartridge. Or, or unless uh, Al Nefer can make an adapter cart that is a pass-through cart, so you can plug your cartridges onto it, and then that way you can, there you you can read that in. So there's, there's a project. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, there's the seed planted for that, talking about farming. Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. Like, you could add a whole bunch of stuff to that. I mean, um, I know Fred Quimby, uh, Batari is is working on you know, new iterations of cartridges. He has a, a new one, like we were talking uh, last show, with uh, John Champeau mm -hmm. about his new games and that they don't work on the current Harmony mm -hmm. card, but that there's a new iteration of the Harmony card coming. So hmm, maybe, yeah. maybe they could, he could put Wi-Fi in it, but that's, that's a big ask, yeah. let's say. Yeah. I, I mean, in general, I'm a big fan of the uh, digital ROM movement. I mean, I have the, the Harmony Encore. Yep. Uh, I have, you know, the Concerto. I have the Plus card. Uh, you know, I did, actually, yep. I did purchase Elevator Agent and, and Turbo as ROMs. And, uh, you know, I, okay. I, I, already, yep. I, I played on Stella and, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, when Fred Femby can, can make a, a new version of the Harmony Encore to, you know, play that. Yeah. Because I, a lot of people talk about modern sensibility just a little while ago. This is um, digital downloads and, and downloading binaries of games is a modern sensibility mm -hmm. of, of gaming because people are, there's consoles now that literally have no ports, mm -hmm. no ways to put discs in, no ways to put cartridges in. They're pure digital. So people are more and more used to that, especially with video streaming and audio streaming. Um, so there's a lot of people asking for, you know, downloads of binaries mm -hmm. in the Atari Age forum. So it's very encouraging that Al at the top of the show was talking about that, replacing the store, mm -hmm. uh, with that. And, um, and I don't know how that's going to really change homebrew if it is going to at all, because obviously there's no way to restrict 2,600 games from being, you know, handed out freely. Mm -hmm. But I mean, on the other hand none of us are getting rich off of any of right. this. So we're not like, oh, my profits or anything like that. It's, it's all for ego and glory. <laughs> That's right. Ego it's all glory. for the glory, <laughs> not the money, Pff, the money. But I mean, I think the money is there so that just so we can have physical, the people who want physical items, there has to be some sort of ecosystem, money changing hands so right. that we can have this nostalgia of having things in a box on a cartridge and i 
And I absolutely, absolutely love it because it gives the opportunity to have, you know, posters like this. This is great, right? And beautiful manuals and uh, things of the era that we really enjoy, Yeah. which is, you know, physical things. I am running out of space, though. Uh, you are running out of space. <laughs> <laughs> it's not we, it's me. It can't overflow outside of this room. <laughs> um, so anything else you'd like to add about this game? Um, so, you know, this or people to thank? Yeah, so this is partially uh, inspiration. Uh, my uncle had, uh, had a strawberry farm um, where uh, you know, he would uh, frequently get a lot of teenage labor over the summers to uh, pick, and you know, they got paid by the pound. Um, I was I was never really you know cut out for, for you know hard manual labor, so I, did, I never really did that. But uh, yeah, when I uh, when I was, I was looking for you know an idea, and, and this game, uh, you know, I was inspired uh, after I was I was I got Oscar Toledo G's Atari Twist kind of programming book for uh, Christmas 2022. And you know, yeah. he, uh, in a lot of his excellent uh, game examples, he does a lot of you know re repurposing of, of missiles and, and other things to make objects. And so I was playing around with you know re uh, uh, changing you know the missile, doing doing line by line uh, changes, and you know, I made sort of a target reticle. And so you know it's like oh right. you know this is this looks like something that you know you use to, to focus over something and shoot. And it's like, well, okay, I think I'm gonna have a game here uh, to, you know, what, what am I gonna, what am I gonna shoot? And then it was like, I couldn't really think of any cohesive story where you, know, you shoot something and avoid something. But then I remembered, you know, Michael having this berry farm. It's like, you know what? You could shoot strawberries. I mean, we call them pick. You can pick them. Uh, and that's right. You know, it it it, it was. You know, I, I thought it, it made for an interesting story. Um, especially mm -hmm. because you could, uh, you know, look at the, the actual life cycle of strawberry growing and, you know, for, for the unripe, the ripe and the overripe, and you're going to make a game out of that. <clears throat> yeah. And embrace the bizarre, embrace the unusual yes. when making games, because games <clears throat> in the seventies and more, more, more in the late seventies, early eighties was just crazy concepts, anything Anything that people would thought think up uh, would make it into a game, because <clears throat> in the seventies and beforehand, it was all like military things or shooting targets and things like that. But when we got into the eighties, this would fit right in. It's like a berry picking game. Right. Okay, that's that's interesting and unusual. Right. Um, and coming up with like a, a farmer employing a robot to do it, which makes sense because you become you embody the robot. Right. right? in the game yep yeah. and uh i never had a job picking strawberries but there's plenty of uh berry fields around, around where we live around where we live yeah. more more east but um where you grew I, up I, yeah in langley yeah and yeah i went out and picked berries many a times mostly strawberries so it's i i can relate to the game let's <laughs> say <laughs> of picking the perfect strawberries and i guess you had to do that when you're working uh, not to pick underripe, not to pick overripe. It's you. You put this, put your experience right into the game. Right. And, and you know the great thing about homebrews is that I mean because the stakes are so relatively low. I mean you're not going. Um, I mean obviously Al is the one who uh, who uh, is taking the financial risk, but uh, you know for, yeah. for, for the for the homebrew author, you, know, you can afford to take risk to do something a little bit experimental. Not something that is just, you know, another Call of Duty or, uh, you know, Mad Phone <laughs> or things like that. And so, you, yeah. know, I, you know, one of the things I love about, you know, this crop of games this year is that there are so many interesting concepts. And I just love that people are, you know, yes. taking risks with their games. Yeah. You don't have to do any market research. You don't have to do any A-Bing. Uh, you don't have to do any surveys. You just make what is fun to you. Right. And then you throw it out to the world and see what other people think of it. And then Al goes, yeah, that's awesome. Let's put that on a cartridge. Right. And uh, yeah, it's a very freeing uh, experience, I bet, that you can just, you know, make whatever you want. And whatever level it rises to, it it will naturally go there. Yeah. And uh, one technical note is uh, I saw on the uh, game uh, earlier that... Uh, uh, you know, the high score looked a little bit garbled. That was probably because anybody who played the game when it was in beta 
the save key information uh, at that time was at a different location. So uh, oh. once, once, but I mean, once I think once, hopefully once you play a few games, uh, you know that should should uh, correct itself. Uh, otherwise, you know maybe I'll okay. on, on, uh, I need to write a utility to help you know reset that part of the, <laughs> the save keys. Right. So it's just reading some garbage that was there right. previously. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Because when you're developing a game, uh, there's like areas for the save key that you can just use at any time, and then you get assigned a permanent place. Right. Yeah. So that makes sense. So it'll it'll eventually override. Yeah. And, 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 and of, of course, garbage. I didn't want to step on anybody else's toes with save key because it's sort of a shared space, and I didn't want to you know just start you know choosing some random address that that wasn't assigned. <laughs> No, never a good idea. <laughs> Especially for people playing the game and go, oh, my high score right? is gone. How could you? Right. I mean, I, yeah. I'd, I'd be angry if, uh, you know, I played my game and then I plug in Penult and like, oh, my character's gone. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Especially in RPG, not just a high score, but like your whole right? game is gone, which which is, you know, it's unusual to have a game you can continue. Penult's one of the very few. Right? So, but yeah, you definitely do not. Do not step on Penalt's toes. Right. That's the last last one you want to do. Right. Yeah, but we'll be uh, we'll be talking with uh, Carl G later about Penalt. Um, so any last words before we let you go? Um, I just uh, you know I want to thank everybody at Atari Age. Uh, thank everybody in the Atari forums. Uh, you know I visit it every day. It's it's a wonderful community. Uh, wanted to, to give a thanks to my wife uh, Shelley. Who you know listened to me uh, you know talk about my game ideas on our dog walks. Uh, she also helped position the, <laughs> um, the lighting for, for today so that you know it was in optimal conditions. So I appreciate her for doing that. That's good. Um, I want to uh, you know thanks again to Al Yuruso. Uh, one one people one thing people don't comment on enough is his excellent grasp of grammar. Um, you know because we went through five or six iterations of the manuals. Uh, and you know, every, with every iteration, you know, the wording just got better and better. Yeah, he's 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 good for picking out the um, minutia and um, being able to uh, find things that are that you don't want to end up in the final manual. That's let's say, which is really great. Yeah. And, and uh, the one last item is I do have another game coming it's out. Right. Uh, really you know, one it. of the feedbacks I got oh. from very fun was, you know, why don't we have keypads? Uh, the, the amount of cycle time I had uh, was very limited, so I, I couldn't do that. But I do have one coming out. Uh, but thanks uh, with some, some code from Daryl Spice Jr. on how to, to read the controllers. Um, it's a, uh, I hope to have a ZPH premiere it uh, next year. Um, it is Excellent. A, a, a 4K port of a, a beloved handheld game from the 70s uh, that made a flip oh. upon the marketplace. <laughs> that, that's the clue. Yep, doing a doing a deep dive then uh, in in getting. Uh, porting some obscure, obscure game. Well, that's excellent to hear. No. Can't wait for it. Can't wait for the unveiling of it. <laughs> so thanks so much for coming on. Um, uh, always a pleasure to talk with you and, of course, to meet you in person yeah. now and then. And uh, we will talk with you soon and see you on the forum. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye, Mike. Bye-bye. Bye, Mike. Next up, we're going to be talking with Todd Fermansky, also known as Revan Tooley, on the forums about Harpy's Curse. Yes. Uh, can we just take a quick break? I just want to get some water. So, oh, yeah. yes, please. You okay, I'll get some for you, well. too, if you feel like uh, chatting with people for a very quick second. Sure. Before we move on. I have to set up the 7800 anyway. Yeah, you should do that. Kitties. Hi, kitties. And I'm just going to get... Todd up on the screen. Well, I set up the 7800. I have to switch between a bunch of systems today. I tried to plan it out as best as possible so I didn't have to do as much switching. Um, so I minimized it. Obviously, I keep the 2600 always plugged in. Okay, swap that out. And I have all the systems on standby right close to me, which is good. There we go. Okay. I think we're good. Oh, and we've got Todd up on the screen over there. We will put you on live in a second. Once I get all the controllers all plugged in. There we go.
we go. And remember, if anybody has questions for any of the developers, just put question uh, when you do, when you type your question so we see it. Uh, Delta Falconus says, I miss having a cat. Oh. Yeah, switching is required because of developers' availability. That is true, because they live all over the world. Some are in Europe, some are in North America, some are in Australia. Um, but luckily, most of them worked out. Um, the ones that didn't work out, we have uh, written questions for, so we're able to talk with them um, via text. So I think we're almost halfway through the show. Getting there, getting there. It's lots of fun playing all these games once again, popping them in. Well, Tanya gets to play them. But it's great talking with the developers. And especially uh, seeing them again, if I've uh, met them in real life, like Todd. So let's get Todd up on the screen now. Tanya's yeah. back. Um, well, oh, not second. quite back. <laughs> well, it'll give me somebody to talk to. Hey, Todd, how's it going today? Doing all right, how's it going? Pretty good, getting through it, getting through the day. It's a long day, but it's a lot of fun um, when I do this show. And thank you for coming on and taking the time to talk about your new game. Yeah, my pleasure. It's, it's in good company from what I've seen. <laughs> oh yeah, it's great, uh, great crop of, of games. Of course, crop comes to mind <laughs> after seeing the berries come on the screen. And a lot of diversity, which is great, in the different types of games. Because, you know, some people like shooters, some people like, you know, platformers. Mm -hmm. And your game is kind of a <laughs> bit of both of those. Kind of a shooter, kind of a platformer, kind of flying around. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it feels, I mean, I like programming for the 7800. It's, it has a neat library, but there's, there's a lot of gaps. And so that kind of, you know, it's been fun trying to fill those gaps in. Um, and kind of needed a Metroidvania. Um, and so I kind of wanted a, yes. you know, a maze game that, you know, an adventure game that, you know, takes a little while to solve and then... Um, but yeah, kind of, I guess the elevator pitch is it's, it's just meets Metroid. Um, <laughs> pretty, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good description. Um, and it's a big game. Um, it takes, it takes a bit of time. You get a lot of value for your money. So if you could pick out Harpy's Curse that's from the nice. pile, we'll get start started. the unboxing. <clears throat> Excellent. And, um, Maybe you could talk a little bit about the artwork. It's um, which is William Thorpe did uh, the artwork, gorgeous. which was amazing. Like elevates the game. It, it's amazing work. Great to. Yeah, sorry, I missed you too at, at uh, PRG too. Well, uh, it, it's it's. You know, I just I just caught uh, just this morning the the time lapse with uh, the artwork, which was really neat to see. So I have to. Oh yeah, absolutely gorgeous, and it's <clears throat> really interesting to see his process. I, I love watching artists draw because I'm like, I have no idea how to do it. <laughs> Neither Tanya or I are, are uh, people who can do uh, drawing. Especially drawing is, yeah, is, is quite an nothing. amazing skill to have. Yeah. So how did you um, get in touch with the artist? Well, that was um, uh, you know, actually kind of through Al coordinated a lot of it, um, you know, and we we'll basically volunteered um, between the three of us. We kind of worked out. I, I, honestly, it went pretty quick. I had a couple little notes, but it, um, you know, uh, we'll more or less got it right. You know, the first and a half time, just a little bit of notes, and then we kind of we had a couple different. It's on the time lapse. I think he, he he gave us three like three variants, and we all mutually kind of voted, and and this is kind of the the, it's the one that. Worked and I think it, it, it fits the game well. It's intriguing. It you know, I think it does. It does the game an incredible service. You know, if you're looking and seeing this, you know, seeing the box and giving a hint about what the game's going through. And yeah, the, and then doing the artwork for the manual um, is incredible. Um, that was a lot of fun. To, like seeing um, what he did for the, you know, kind of basing it on a lot of on a, like archaic Greek art artwork and such, like the broken pottery and things. But it, I think it really fits the. The mood, that the atmosphere that I see for the game. 
Yeah, and, and people think, oh, it's just the cover, but looking throughout the manual, there's a lot more than just the cover of the uh, of the box going on. There's a lot of really great artwork contained inside. And that's the bonus of, of getting the physical copies of these games, is getting all these bo bonus artwork that helps you envision the game mm -hmm. in, a, in a different way, in a more elaborate way, and brings you more into it. But... Not only that do you get the manual, you get, ah, uh, you're one of the lucky six who gets a poster <laughs> of Harpy's Curse. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. huge poster. But on the back of the poster is some long lost uh, map that has somehow been recovered from uh, your travels in the game. <laughs> um, but it's not the full map. So how did you uh, come to that decision? That's really cool. This was fun. Um, it was one of these things, it was, I, I'd already had a script that uh, basically like pulled the data. Partially for me editing the map, um, I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's do an old style like screenshot map. So I had a, a script that output the whole game into one giant file. But I was like, that... That spoils a little too much, and then I think you know in, in the in the thread, you know, Al, Al, Will, and I were like, like, well, you know, what if we kind of did a hand, you know, instead of doing it like a screenshot map, let's you know, make it look like it was hand drawn or, or you know painted, and then yeah, and then, we don't want to show everything, so yeah, let's let's have a couple areas of mystery where like yeah, the the frescoes crumbled away, so you know, gives gives people a good idea of the scope of the game without revealing everything, and kind of gives people you know places to look, for, you know, to try to 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 travel to to see what's there. Yeah. Oh, one second. Forgot a plug. <laughs> that would help. There we go. Excellent. So let me get the game plugged into the system here. It's looking a little purple. Ah, that's better. Okay, so let's start up the game. And um, maybe you can talk about how you made the uh, transition from um, dragons <laughs> to harpies. There's still dragons <laughs> in here. Um, but no, it's, it's funny. It was. Can't avoid the dragons. Um, I'm trying to think of the exact thought process, you know, it was one of these things where, like, I did, you know, the series of dragon games, and a lot of that was me just kind of learning the 7800, you know, how do you do, you know, how do you do graphics, how do you do two players, how do I do, you know, handle a lot of different programmatic elements, how do I handle music, and then I'm like, and, but they're all, those all use the stock uh, ROM size, the, the 48k ROM, and so I was like, okay, well, if we had more size, if I had to, you know, was able to get a bigger ROM, what could I do with it, and like, okay, let's, you know, let's try making Metroidvania. I think I got the space for it. And you know, within a lot of the dragon games, I made a bunch of other mythical creatures. You know, um, you know, har harpies, of course, like stone statues, um, ghosts, and uh, periton, which are like giant winged elk um, that eat hearts. That, um... But yeah, and then, but then I was like, okay, like you know, and then kind of was like, okay. the other thing was I wanted to make a Metroidvania, but that's. Always a big, like, first key, like, gating issue in Metroidvania is, like, how high can you jump? I'm like, what if I just got rid of that? What if you could just fly anywhere? <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, that really changes the dynamic of the game, that you can you can go anywhere you can see on the screen. Mm -hmm. I had the Harpy graphic, which I actually, I mean, I think I think works. You know, it was it was fun kind of reasoning that making kind of the Harpy, its own, you know, her own, you know, star in her own game, basically. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, kind of building the dynamic. I also wanted to do a lot of Metroidvanias have like a lot of the special abilities are basically keys. You just you know you need the high jump to get to this one point, and you forget you ever had it again. Um, whereas right. this, I made it more like you can get through the game without finding all the power ups. It's just a lot harder. Um, you know, the power ups are a help. <laughs> um, yes, I give you something to find. But you know, if you want to make you know if you want to challenge you 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 know you can try going through with your with your you know starting three hearts in your basic attack. Um. <laughs> so so somebody could do like a, 
almost pacifist run at, at and just go straight for or a speed run i'm guessing yeah. without getting all the power-ups if they're good enough so there's multiple ways to accomplish winning the game which is which is great you know give them give people options exactly now that was the you know and it's, and it's kind of this is you know a wide sprawling area you know a maze to explore and so that you know it seems we don't have to do everything in order and um, it, it's funny I've, I've had a couple of friends like do some speed running and I, I, I've been surprised by how fast they can get through uh, but it's <laughs> but also again like yeah it's, it's always fun when when you hand it off to an expert player and you can see what they do to your game and and almost manipulate your game into something you never intended it to ever do mm -hmm. uh, so how big is the game not only in um, ROM size but also in in screen size like number of rooms number of levels it's um, like this maze that, that you're traveling through now this is about this is 512 screens um, so each each section is I think about eight eight screens or so, and then there's like sixteen of those. Um, and then the, the yeah. bosses are they're kind of their their own separate screen. Like they're, you go to a room where you you, you face off with them. Uh, well, let's normal, see, yeah. go to the left. Uh, Funny, try going to the left. That's kind of a good way to start for the beginner mode from the from the starting screen. From the starting screen. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's a delay. Oh yeah, course, yeah. The, um, ten, ten to twenty seconds, but yeah. No, the, uh, yeah, basically from that starting room, there, there's a couple, there's a, there's a couple easy power ups that that, that you can reach once you get kind of go that left. way. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, care about the leg, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but then I also made like there is, there's a secret way to unlock a a second quest. I had a bunch of ROMs, but kind of like. Way we Legend of Zelda was. I realized I had enough space that I could do a whole other 500 screens. Um, <laughs> wow! And so this one, I kind of tried to. So be... you didn't run in. You didn't run into any hard limits of like, oh, I. So you had lots of space for the screens. That's good. You know, just one of those things. Well, just the way the ROM, like, bank switching is always weird on space. Um, like sometimes you have a lot of space for some things, but not others. And I could fit a lot of the level data kind of throughout a lot of the spare, you know, spare gaps that I had left. Um, and uh, but yeah, and so I made basically made a whole second quest where I kind of take the gloves off. You know, the, um, this one I kind of tried ah, to be like, okay. you know, you can play through it. It's not a lot of the other games I made fairly challenging. This one I tried to make like, you know, if it's hard, you can find power ups to make it a lot easier. But then the second quest, I, I take the gloves right. off, and it's, you know, it's one of those. You know, you think you've mastered this game? Let's let's see what you. <laughs> and it's and it's fairly forgiving in terms of giving you. Um, your life back when you uh, defeat the enemies. Like almost every enemy gives you a heart, which mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. Um, but attacking them can you have to really, really hone your skill with the attack. Can you talk a little bit about the unusual way you attack enemies mm -hmm. because you don't shoot them really, and that's it's I mean, it's it's more like uh, swinging a sword. I mean, it's your bird of prey. It's not unusual to swoop down and attack some something like this if you're a bird of prey. Um, yeah, I've, I've never seen an eagle actually shoot somebody, but um, I've seen them swoop. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, it's a little tricky, but I think that also like once you get used to it, I I try to make it so like there's a there's a rhythm like a kickback that happens. Um, yeah, if you fly up here, there's a. Um, Especially on bosses or things that take multiple hits, um, you know, there's there's a way you can kind of continually attack and try to maneuver yourself. I think if it was, you know, shooting, it would just be a, a straightforward I aim and you know and such. And even and, and there's a bit of joust, like in joust, the whole conceit yeah. is you're trying to get above the other the you know the other player or the um, the enemies. Um, yes, and that's the same in here. You attack from above. Actually, any attack in this, you can defeat them if you're in attack mode, right? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Like, try dropping down from here right about. Um, let's see. I know I, there's a delay. Uh, oh. Yeah, the lag is going to be... <laughs> yeah, she can go back, though. Yeah, the um, because yeah, there's that main chamber. And, and you, I mean, you got a map, so you can kind of consult... You know, it doesn't well, yeah. show where everything is, but it, it kind of shows like the, you know where large structures are. There's often something interesting, mm. right? Yeah, because we're not looking at the map right now, so that's not really helping. <laughs> yeah, it. Oh, there you go. And it's fairly easy to figure out where you are in the map because there's water areas. You can mm -hmm. tell when you're at 
kind of the top of the map mm. as well. Um, and not only does the attack allow you to attack enemies, the attack also allows you to move very, very quickly downward. Would, um, so it's dual purpose. Yeah, no, this, like, especially if you're interested in speed running or just getting through areas quickly, there's a lot of... I made some a lot of right. strategic areas that you can... Um, yeah, you can leverage the you know the swoop attack. Later on, you get um, certain power ups that also help you dash in other directions. Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of try to build a lot of the maze to, to kind of you know, cater to that to be to be that playground. Now, you uh, Tanya encountered the password screen. Mm -hmm. um, does this exclusively use the password that's on the screen, or does it also use the save key? And that's an alternative to not having a save key. It's an alternative to not having the save key. Um, you can okay. actually like input a password and then save your game. Like basically, if you have a, a Vox or save key in there, when you go to the password screen, it shows the password, but it also can, it opens up an option to save the game as well. And so right. I have like three slots that go, and shows shows you how far you along in the game you are, what you've collected, and such. Um, yeah. yeah, I think right now you're under the bird bath where, you, uh, the, where the water is. Um, you might. Oh, so you might see yeah, that kind of I shape. I saw in it there. in there. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, on the left of the map, kind of a, a bowl shape. Yeah. Very, very Just cool. Down here. Yeah. Um, so, um, anything else you'd like to add or uh, people to thank before we let you go? Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, the community's, the homebrew community's been amazing. Um, it's, we, you know, Al, Al getting everything set up. I mean, William Thorpe getting the artwork again elevates the game. It makes makes the whole thing that much yes. more amazing. Um, you know the the I mean, this is built in seventy hundred basic. So like Michael Sarna and all the the seventy hundred basic the Batari basic crew, yeah, made this game possible. Um, and and again like all, all the documentation and stuff. I being able to piece this together and build something like this required me to find a lot of knowledge that people had 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 discovered or or built. You know built and it was it's been an amazing resource um they also this yeah. and uh my other games i believe are, we're getting them in the pipeline to be published on the atari vcs so that'll be fun to see. oh that's great congratulations and that's great exposure <laughs> for um homebrew developers that they can support 2600 and 7800 games on the VCS and you know you know puts a couple extra dollars in your pocket um, but also opens up homebrew to maybe a segment of the population that aren't really aware of it exactly. uh, of its existence and maybe it'll bring people over to maybe buy original consoles and get more into homebrew and buying physical cartridges or just be more interested in homebrew and, and showing them that they, if they have game ideas, they can make games as well, because uh, a 7800 Basic has been proven to be extremely powerful um, system. Yeah, I, I've been surprised, but yeah, this is, again, this, you know, I, there's a couple little spot areas of assembly, but not, especially actually here this, in this project, not much at all. Um, and yeah, and you can build, you know, build, I mean, this would have been, you know, I mean, very few games in the 7800 we're, you know, <coughs> pardon me, we're, we're at the scale, I think, you know, even though the, the yes, pardon me, the console is a lot of, perfectly a lot of arcade it, conversions, you know, yeah, um, you know, so it's nice that you're able to fill in the blanks of games that should have maybe come to the 7800 because there was a lot of NES games around that time uh, that were of this kind of scope adventure RPG titles. But, um, yeah, it's great that we're able to continue the library and add to it now exactly. and, and fill in those blanks. I think we enjoy homebrewing for, like, for, for platforms that never quite got the full chance that, you know, that they might have. It's, yeah, that, that, there's an allure yeah. to that, certainly. Yeah. And, and for people who don't want to mess around with all this old tech that we have to struggle with every day, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, making sure it uh, keeps working and buying multi-carts and everything... The VCS is another great outlet. They can just plug it into their modern TV and support homebrew developers like yourself. Yeah, this is really good to see, you know. And again, things like the music, um, you know, I, this this has uh, is, uses a Pokey compatible chip, um, and I used uh, yeah. 
music from Eric Satie for the background. Um, Labyrinth is Nocien and Series and such, which I think works nicely. But that's that's been fun learning as well. But yeah, like again, building out you know things that the platform is capable of. Um, but yeah, the, you know, kind of paths not traveled or, or just you know opportunities that you know, are still there. Yeah, that's great. So thank you once again for coming on the stream. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with you, uh, virtually or in person. Um, and thank you for continuing to make awesome 7800 games that uh, push the boundaries of what people think can be done on the 7800 or filling in gaps that uh, for games that never existed on the 7800. Well, thank you. No, this is and this has been uh, you know um, incredibly motivating. Just seeing you know seeing people play and enjoy and enjoy the, the games and. And such, and I mean, you're you're a key part of this community, um, both of you. So this, it's thank oh, you, thank you, thank you for having me on the show. Oh, always a pleasure, mm -hmm. and uh, talk with you soon, and see you online. Take care. Bye, bye, Todd. Bye. Okay, excellent. Next up, uh, we're going to continue on with the seventy eight hundred mm -hmm. for one more game, at least for now, and we're going to be talking with. Vladimir Zuniga, ah. or uh, more well known as VHZC, and uh, we'll be playing first Uzi the Goo Gaiden, but uh, keep that one handy because okay. we'll be playing that after. And I will um, hand you the Harpy's Curse box so you can package it back up. I did bring you an Oreo cookie if you oh, feel like you need a little you. bit of sugar. That is probably a good idea. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> the cats will be getting desperate. Um, yeah, so after VHZC, the, maybe the, the we'll feed them. Um, yes. Yeah, they'll have to get fed. I'll give, it, I'll give them some treats right now. Yeah. Kittens. There we go. Where's, where's the other one? Oh, I hear him <laughs> running down the The other one's stairs. missing out on the yeah. treats. So let's get VHZC uh, queued up. He's around getting ready. Treats, 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 treats. Oh, yeah. Were there any left for you? Yes, there are. <laughs> There's some left for you. You can see you can see their tails in the in the camera oh, on the side you? there. Yeah. Oh. Just crazy, crazy cat tails. Yeah. We're connected. Oh, there we good. Go. Okay. Good stuff. Hey, Vladimir. We'll put you on live in a in a second. I'm just gonna Goodness. eat an Oreo cookie first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to destroy the, uh, um, the inserts here. Going eight Goodness. eight hours <laughs> without snacks or food, it's, it's not and talking that long. <laughs> well, you know, eight hours isn't that bad actually, but it's good to have a little pick me up. Okay. So I think we're ready. Let me bring. Vladimir on the line. Hello, Vladimir. How are you doing? Hi. How are you doing? Good. Excellent to have you on and to talk about your two games that are uh, in the Atari Age store today. Obviously, these were available at PRGE earlier uh, this year, but now it's available for everyone. And we're going to take a look at Uzi the Goo Gaiden first. So let's bring that up large. Uh, there we go. Let's unbox this game. So I would ask you who did your artwork, but uh, we all know who did your artwork, which is you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I've asked you this before, but maybe not. What comes first? Is it the artwork that we kind of see on the box? And then you base the sprites off of the artwork that you draw, because I know you do a lot of drawing. Or do you take the sprites that you make in the game and then make them into the artwork that we see on the boxes? Actually, it depends on the uh, system. In the case of the 2600, I usually draw first manually uh, and then convert to a sprite. But in the 7800, I I try to 
first make the sprite, make the uh, title screen, because I want to make the artwork to be close to the things that you are looking in the screen. That, that is not possible in, in 2600, but I can have uh, the site more close in the case of the 7800. Yeah, the 7800 is a little bit more ability to do more detailed graphics, so I can understand that. So let's pop this in. To show, show off the cart oh. first. Oh, yep, yep. Don't forget that. It is a little bit different than the cover. Mm. Um, very similar to the... I think it's a, oh, it's a little bit different. There we go. Who's the goo guy in? Let's pop that in and start it up so Tanya can play it. There we go. So um, maybe take us through um, how you came up with Uzi the Goo, this cute little character and this world that he lives in. What, what was the inspiration for him? Uh. It's loosely based in the slime from Dragon Quest, that um, a, a character uh, I, I like a lot. But also I wanted a character simple in, in the same way that, I don't know, Kirby maybe. Something like it was originally a placeholder that I decided to keep it. Uh, <clears throat> and also uh, it had to look to the fact that uh, when I made the original Rossi Degu, it was made like a sort of homage of adventure. An adventure was, the, the character was very simple, was a, a square. So I wanted yeah. to keep the, the, the concept of a very simple character, but, but with a little more complex. <laughs> yeah, he's very, very cute. And uh, but very, very simple. So I can see the connection to adventure uh, that you're talking about. And you've retained the mazes of adventure. This is a very, um, very mazy game. <laughs> um, and also it it harkens back to a lot of your games where you reuse the screen over and over again at different points. Like you can see on this screen, there's multiple paths, but sometimes you have to go back through the screen but you don't have access to where you were before. So um, you make very, very efficient use yeah. of yeah. your screen real estate in all of your games. Yeah, it, it, that uh, had to do with uh, a sort of uh, rule that I have in the design when, when I design a game. Uh, due to a limited space that I have in a uh, room, I have a limited uh, set of things that I can do to uh, make the game longer. Yeah? Uh, I, I will use uh, extreme difficulty a la NES, a la NES for, for, for uh, extend the, the, the gameplay. But uh, I choose to uh, use the backtracking, yeah? the backtracking to, to, yep. to enlarge the, the gameplay without add more elements, without uh, uh, use more space. Um, the, but I try to make it a uh, like feel more organic, more uh, um, uh, with a sense, no, no, but trading for the sake of it. Um, so I try to, yes. to to give a different experience, by example, by different experience, depending by, by the side you are entering the room. In some rooms, when you are there from right to left certain items, certain enemies appear, and when you are in the other direction, other things appear, other things occur. And you also take advantage of the multiple paths on the screen, like the one that Tanya was just on, mm -hmm. where the switch is on the same screen as the thing the switch affects, but you can't access one directly, so you have to so you almost are giving hints of what to do, but without letting the player access it directly. Mm. But also, 
there's a there was a power up on that screen that was just on the screen the little apple to give you more time but it's like oh here's something you need to get but now you have to find a way to get to it so you're kind of almost giving hints for people of where to go next without directly telling them so it's you're you're almost holding their hand a little bit but they still have to do the work to get there and was that kind of a uh, on the forefront of your mind when designing the levels it's like here's the hint to get to the next place or here's the thing you need to turn off but there's the switch but you can't get to it yeah when i designed the game the game in fact i designed no one screen at, 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 at tons but usually 10 or 20 screen interconnected so i have in, in advance you now uh, you have to to come here after so to let the player know in, 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 in certain form that have what have to do um, and also that we give the player uh, some sort of feel of uh, non reality even if the game is linear mm -hmm. and when you are designing the screens for the game um, do you how do you do it? Do you do, do it on a computer or do you do like you write it up on a piece of graph paper maybe first and then translate it to the computer? Or do you purely stick to digital design on the computer? Uh, digital design. I use uh, the GIMP uh, graphic uh, program to draw the, the, uh, a floor add-ons, uh, a level add-ons uh, with all the around that, that contain. And after that, I, with some script that I wrote, automatically divide that screen in, in every play field, in every room uh, to use in, right. in the code. And, if, and have you ever thought, uh, because you do have these tools, have you ever thought of making a game where people would be able to design their own levels and re reimagine all these worlds that you've created and all these characters like a a night guy construction set or an <laughs> Uzi goo construct Uzi the goo construction set where people can make their own designs like the Mario maker style of games it's 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 fairly rare for that to happen on the 7800 or 2600 but have you ever thought of maybe offering that and make like oh here and issue that on a cart like okay Uzi the goo guide in the lost levels and it's a bunch of user submitted levels uh, the the idea is tempting but uh, the my games have uh, my design and my idea what uh, the challenge was to do uh, and i am a little not more, not too much convinced to give the, the that power to the player to the player because that's will be not my game so <laughs> right no, no really yeah <laughs> i think that follows along with your ethos of doing absolutely exactly. everything in the game it's my like voice it's like oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do the game i'm gonna do the music the graphics the artwork it's yeah, yeah. so i can my, understand my that all goes to it all goes together <laughs> yeah um so you work on a lot of platform games, but Who's the Goo Gaiden is kind of a almost overhead three quarters view uh, that you can freely roam around in. So you've made games in this perspective before, like Slide Boy and Maze Land. Um, so when you set out to create a new game, what comes first in your game design? Is it the character that inspires the game, the world that inspires, or game mechanics? Can you kind of step us through, you know, kind of what comes first when you make a game? The mechanic. Always the mechanic is the first, the, the, the guide to make the, the rest of the, the thing. Um, and in, in the case of Ossie the Wu was uh, simply I wanted to make a game easy to sort of rest of uh, other game with uh, that were more complex uh, in this game i use uh, the game of the bear or night guy engine but a capable version with without gravity so it was a lot easier than other game to program oh. 
So it was a, a, a sort of comfort game to play and uh, a, a rest compared with other games. So, uh, ah. but I liked the, 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 the idea because it, this game is also more forgiving compared, compared with other games. Uh, you respond, right. respond will, will you have some time, you will respond. No, no, there is not life in the traditional con, uh, concept. So, right. uh, it's more like a sort of simple game to, to relax, but... Uh, I keep it like as a different series with different ideas to to separate to for my other games that, that are pure platform like uh, in this guy or m more loosely platform like in Game of the Bear. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so probably sorry to bring this up again, but you recently lost a lot of your work because of a house flood. Um. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it was devastating. It was very devastating for, I'm sure, the the community to hear about that. And obviously, just life-altering for you in terms of your game development, of course. But you were able to bounce. Like, you, you're like, I'm done. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. And you're able to bounce right back. And you started a game almost days later. So what, what keeps you motivated and keeps uh keeps you releasing multiple games every year what what drives you is it the community is it your love of games is it just something else what what keeps you going some people can say it's addiction no. uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> game addiction uh, yeah uh, uh, simply have uh, i still have too many ideas to to program, so uh, will I have, will I still have ideas that I feel are different, I feel uh, can be converted in a good game, I will continue program. Okay, so hopefully you'll have lots of ideas far, far in the future because uh, your games are all so much fun. Especially you like your platformer games, your shooter games. I love all of them. And they're all, they almost all, could, they build on each other. You get used to like the VHZC um, world of, oh, where's the Pong going to be in this game? Where is the Skulls skull. going to be in this game? Yeah. And, and and you just, you look forward to seeing that and you're mm -hmm. waiting for that in each room. And um, so I'm I'm very happy you did not, you not completely give up after that, and you're able to keep moving forward. So uh, it's great. Yeah. So let's move on to uh, the second game that's uh, being released by Atari Age. Uh, game of the Bear 2, Much to Bear. It's hard to know how to say that. Game of the Bear 2, Much to Bear, or is it Game of the Bear, Too Much to Bear? Too Much to Bear. Okay, too that's much. what I thought. It kind of makes a little bit more sense that way. <laughs> so let's um, switch over. To the next game and unbox that one and take a look at the beautiful artwork. There you go. I've got it here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. So this is a continuation of the Bear series, as as indicated by the two in the title. Um, Obviously, amazing, beautiful artwork, again, by some guy named Vladimir Zuniga. <laughs> <laughs> so all credit to him for the uh, artwork. Yeah, gorgeous. And a uh, beautiful platformer. So let's open this up. And take a look at what's inside here. So I'm going to stand. Oh, you get to lay down. Okay. Here's the cover of the book, of the manual, and I really, your your manuals almost um, read like a comic book. Was that something that was an intentional thing, that you wanted them to be very clean, very sparse, very simple to, to read and get through? Yeah, yeah, that's the idea, the idea. Uh, except for the one for a uh, night nice guy in Castle Lake that uh, is more ins inspired in, in cinema uh, poster, 
The rest are uh, based, based in the concept of comic book. Yeah. 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 I really appreciate the um, the design that goes into them, and and they're just really really clean, clean aesthetic, and just gets to the the basics of the game because a lot of your games. Um, are very, very easy to pick up and play. So I can see why the manuals can be just just pared down to the bare, bare basics. No pun intended, but... Um, <laughs> so here it is. So let's pop it in. This is a 2600 game. A lot of people um, went from starting programming on the 2600 and then moving to the 7800. But you love to go back and forth between the two worlds of the of the two systems. Is there, do you have any preference for either one of them or do you love them in different ways? Uh, the 2600 is like my comfort system where I, I go when I like to relax more than have to think too much. Uh, and for, for that, I, I, when I program for the 2600, I use standard kernel and the basic uh, tools, because I, I like to keep it simple. What happened? Get. What's going on? Uh-oh. Maybe mine didn't get flashed, right? I'll blame my system first, though. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is showing something. It's like showing some blue. And it looks then, like a game over screen. Game over, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, let me just try and do some things here. Gotta love original game systems. <laughs> yep. Always struggling against things. <laughs> the 2600 is very unique on the way it outputs video. So you're always like, uh, trying to, oh no. It's like everything's in slow motion. Can you press the button? No. Very strange. Restart isn't working or no? no. Like it's kind of running? Well. <laughs> uh, we're gonna run it off uh, Harmony Cart. <laughs> Fair enough. Just to show it off. I'm gonna try it once more though. No. No. Oh well. We'll figure out why this is uh, acting up in a bit. So, what brought you back to the universe of Game of the Bear to make a sequel? Uh, of all my games, uh, Game of the Bear series is the one with something more close to a story or lore. So, I wanted to continue the, that story. Excellent. Okay, let me... Uh... Just give me a couple seconds here. <laughs> this may not be the final version that we're playing, but it'll be good to show off, good enough to show off what's going on in the game. There we go. Okay, let's pop it out. Should be in the root directory if you want to go down to that. I'm not controlling anything. Uh, it's that guy, right? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Cute. Yeah, it's okay. very strange. It jumped to like game over. That's really, and it was playing in slow motion. And you've got a great cinematic 
uh, opening yeah, intro <laughs> intro on the on this game, which is beautiful. sets up sets up the game very very uh, simply. It's like okay, we got to go rescue. Um, so uh, you make games for a variety of platforms, including the Atari twenty six hundred, seventy eight hundred, and eight bit. Um, where in the creative process does the console you decide to make the game on come into it? Do you decide on the platform first, uh, then make the game, or does the game come first and you figure out which platform it'll work best on? Like, oh, this game will work good on the 2600 or the 7800, or I need a bit more power, so I'll, I'll do it on the 7800. Where, where does that come in? Uh, since I, I was uh, first think of the mechanic, the system will yeah. depend on the, the, what the console is able to do. If the console is able to, to handle the mechanic that I, I think, I choose that one. Except when I have a, a, in my head a, a specific uh, visual or, or a specific uh, graphic idea, like that, that uh, only can work in a specific system. Yeah. And and you've also released games for both systems, like the same game for both systems, which is also very interesting. Um, do you which do you find more which do you find more uh, fun or interesting to program for? Uh, the twenty six hundred or seventy eight hundred because you, you play in both realms. The the seventy eight hundred is 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 more uh, interesting. It's more more fun, than, but because it's more complex and it's more challenging also. Uh, as I said, the twenty six hundred it my it's for relax for me. It's <laughs> it's relaxing. I can have since I already have uh, engines programmed for that. I have easily make a, a, a new game. Um, uh, in fact, I have to to, uh, to limit limit me to, to avoid to make two two more or feel two more sequels for my game because since I have the, <laughs> the, the engine, it, it will be very easy to to make another another Osidegu another. <laughs> uh, game of the world. So I like to I, I think a new mechanic and, and try to to make game different. I, I, I like to main, maintain my series. This is the series also the good, this is the series of the world. But also I I want to make game different games that are not a lot related to previous games. Yeah, I, I mean nobody's complaining <laughs> that you're making sequels, that's for sure. But I can understand, like, okay, it, it it's more of a challenge to create a new, a whole new engine for a game, a new character, and everything like that. Um, oh, what was I? Oh, <laughs> what was I gonna ask? Um, have you ever thought of collaborating with somebody else, or you just you just love doing it all on your own? Um, have you ever thought of like, oh, I, I'm not. I'm not skilled enough to do this this part of it, or do you always take it as a challenge? It's like, okay, well, if I'm not good enough to do this, maybe I should learn yeah, yeah. how to do this. The, the music and sound part is my weak point, and I easily go to accept to collaboration in the in, in that area because I really really bad in at music. I simply don't understand how to do it. <laughs> And I, I, um, also I, I will happy to collaborate with other people making the graphic for other game. I, I call it made that that easily. Uh, so yeah, I, I open to collaborate with uh, other people for my game or for yeah. their game. Um, and you're quite a prolific uh, game maker. At least two games a year, if not more. Um, maybe you can tell us your secret of time management, um, <laughs> because people probably like, how do you find the time to make all these games? Are you really just a really fast coder? 
Um, but even that, it's not even just code. It's it's music. It's making the 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 packaging as well. Or are you really good at managing your time? Like sitting down. This is the time I do to program games. It's between X hours and X hours. So what what is your secret to be able to make all these games? Yeah, I think it's got more to do with the later with discipline. I have my time for program and I use to program uh, and maintain and maintain a, a discipline. That, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Um, people are asking me to try the cartridge in my 7800, which is a good suggestion. Um, just to make sure that, because people are like, as well as I am, I'm blaming my system because every cartridge that um, Al ships, he tests out before he ships it. So let me just, I'm going to switch, so go to a safe space. Okay. Yeah, it works. It works on the 7800. Okay, so you're okay. So it is my system. Okay, there you go. Which worries me, <laughs> but, but it should not worry anybody out, else yeah. out there. So right now this That's is... Good. This is on the 7800, so that's good. Good stuff. Uh, let me actually just start it. Yeah. Once upon a Oh, good. Excellent. Okay, now you can continue on in the game. Oh, that's a different game. Play the other game. Oh. It looked different from the beginning. What game were we, we just playing? <laughs> oh, did I copy the wrong one? You, I don't think it was Game <laughs> of the Bear too much to Oh, wear. no. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> noticed. Yeah. <laughs> It plays different on the 7800. Okay, well, you can play this one. Yeah, I... I... Silly me. It's anyway. a different game. <laughs> there we go. Should have noticed. <laughs> You're playing Game of the Bear original. Nobody was paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Not even me. That's okay. That's we'll see a right. bit of that. Get to see the original. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so, let's see. So, before we uh, wrap up... <laughs> because we have played the game on the show before, so everybody can we have. reference the other ones. <laughs> sorry, about um, that. sorry about that, everyone. Music. Oh, it's not attached. We'll do that right now. Actually, technically, I could have just kept in the 7800 the whole time to play 2600. I'm just so used to playing it on each system. There we go. Now you guys should have music from the new game. Um, so before we wrap up here, anything else you'd like to add about these two games releases or anybody uh, you'd like to mention or anything that uh, we haven't mentioned already, Vladimir? Uh, not, not, not about the game, but uh, I want to say thanks for, for first, thank, thank you to you and your stream. Uh, your support for uh, the entire community and my game in particular is huge so thank you very much um, you're welcome very welcome thank you, uh, anytime uh, your games are a pleasure I, I, that, I, get, I get so excited <laughs> uh, thank you to the Daily Age Forum that are my tester uh, I shame, with shame I have to say that I still don't have a a uh, flashcard for the uh, Atari 7800. So <laughs> all the testing in Apple hardware is made for the Atari Age community in, in the forum. So a great thank you very much to all those people. And yeah. um, thank you to all, all that also for maintaining all, all this work. Excellent. Well, it's, it's always a pleasure to talk to you and of course, to play your oh, absolutely awesome. stunning games. <laughs> yes. um, I Every time a new game by you comes out, I'm like, oh my god, that's the next episode. I'm definitely scheduling <laughs> Vladimir's game for the next episode. So They're always so much fun. Yeah, play. and yeah. Tanya loves them too. I love them. Because they're super cute, right? Yeah, and they're easy to jump in and play. Yeah. You know, like you, you, you get that you get, you know, the mechanics of how, how the character moves and you can jump right in and play it right away. So yeah. I always really enjoy thank really you. enjoy playing your games. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh Always a pleasure, and we will uh, talk with you soon online, in the forums, in the Discord, wherever uh, uh, wherever you might be. <laughs> so thank you again, Vladimir, and we will talk with you soon. Ciao a todos. Bye-bye.
Excellent. Always great to talk with Always. Vladimir and, yeah. and, uh, and play his games. Yeah, they're just astounding achievements. <laughs> Every single one of them, and they're just so, so, so clean. Yeah. And I was just commenting the other day when we were playing one of his games that I've never played a game where there was any glitches that I've ever found in his game, like in the betas and any time, but then... It's really rare. Then the last one, there was one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like, you're not supposed to say one. that out loud. That's the first one in years. Not that... supposed to ever say that out loud. No, but like we do <laughs> test test the games. We do. We do. Uh, on the show. So mm -hmm. there is ex expectation of issues and errors and that's why you Little want things to... things will pop up from That's time why time. you want to play them. Oh, yeah. To yeah. make sure that there isn't any problems when the cartridges are released. Yes. So... Well, should have tried it in the 7800 right away. I'm not sure what's up with the 2600. Yeah, though. that's concerning me. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. So we're going to be moving on to our next games, which are going to be uh, Jaguar games. So we're going to have a, a uh, section of Jaguar games Very here. Very nice. So this will give me some time to switch over from the 7800. It is four o'clock. Oh, perfect. Do you want to uh, switch around and then I can should I can feed the cats while you're doing that? Yes. Sorry, people. <laughs> Definitely feed the cats. Little little breaks here and there. I might bring bring down more Oreo cookies too. But we will keep going. Yep. Yeah, you want to put that in the opposite side of the yeah, flat. Yeah, there's there's Otherwise a way to put it, it in. Catches. A very specific way to put it in. And You've forgotten keep already. Flipping it around. Oh no, you were assembling the boxes, yeah, right? The PRG. I was putting it's, them together. You have to be very careful with those. Definitely, because don't want to push the damage any of the stuff on the inside. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will go feed the cats. Stop James says, will Don't set worry, up it's important to the jaguars. The it is. They they get very very upset. <laughs> very anxious. Okay, everyone, it's time for a little break. James yeah. is going to set up the jag. I'm going to feed some cats. Hello, sirs. So, it's going to be a little bit different with the jaguar games today because we originally had uh, Lawrence Stavely, uh, Cyrano J, to come on live to talk about uh, these three Jaguar games that he made, but um, he unfortunately was not able to make it at the last minute, so we not only don't have him live, um, but we don't have anything written from him either because he was going to be on here live. So what we're going to do is just kind of, I'm just going to check just one last minute, just in case he was able to do, send me something. It doesn't look like it, unfortunately, um, because of circumstances, he's not able to be here. So we're just going to kind of unbox the game and pop it in and play it a very little bit. And um, so it's going to be just a little different for the next little bit. But we'll still be looking at the boxes for the games, so don't you worry. So there's three games we're going to be looking at. Uh, Novagen Volume 1, uh, Rocket Ranger, and Defender of the Crown. So, I may... Darn it, no law. No, it's unfortunately. Feed the Jaguar. Jaguar, 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 get bit by the Jaguar. Yeah, so let, I think I've got everything plugged in correctly now. So let's switch over to the Jaguar input. There we go. Just make sure it's all hooked up correctly. Sure. Yes, we do. Excellent. Okay. Pop out the Jaguar GD. Um, and I did do an unboxing, but uh, I got the 7800 game drive, so I'll be able to test games on that now and play games through that and uh, 
compare it to the dragonfly as well. So that'll be very interesting to see which one will be my daily driver because I've been using the dragonfly for so, so long and I'm so used to it. Um, but I'm pretty sure the um, compatibility between them is both very, very, very good. Oh, okay for you. thank you for the cookie. <laughs> um, so the first game we're going to be taking a look at yep. is uh, Novagen Volume 1. Novagen. Now, okay. did you, were you here for the playthrough? No. Of... Uh, no, yes, I was. Yeah, I, I was. You were. I did look it, yeah, I did look it up. I know mm -hmm. which one that is, yeah. <laughs> Your game is not couch compliant. <laughs> you have 20 seconds to comply. <laughs> not couch compliant. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even playing a game. <laughs> I think he also triggered that earlier. Atari 800 XL rule says, awesome show so far. I'm going to be so broke. <laughs> mm -hmm. You didn't get the other three new Jaguar games? The new Three more? No, mm -hmm. I didn't. Just have these three. There is more? Okay. <laughs> they were meowing. They meow all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, Al says cats are always hungry. Mm -hmm. Gamer Composer says, yeah, they're meowing like they're hungry. They they lie. The cats oh, lie, lie. lie and lie and lie. Mm -hmm. They tell you they are hungry and haven't been fed in a million years. But we know exactly <laughs> when they got fed. Yes, and they got do. two rounds of treats? treats thrown on the floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're good. Okay. So let's get to Novagen Volume 1. And we did play this game already on the show, mm. which is, oh my god, so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a dual pack of two games. Includes two high-speed arcade action battle simulation games, Encounter and Backlash. Both very good in their own different ways. I think I liked um, Backlash a little more. Is that the one with the bouncing bullets? That's the one that's Oh yeah, super that was fun. quite interesting. Yeah. Okay. Can you stand up? Yay! Some cooperate, some don't. Right. Get that out. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the manual here. Let's see who the manual was done by. No credit. Who knows? Oh, there it is. William Thorup. Illustration and packaging. There we go. It was at the beginning of the manual. Nice. nice. Nice split screen manual there for the two very similar games, but uh, they play, play pretty differently. And these are uh, ports of games from uh, 1987 and 1991. Encounter and Backlash. And they're able to reduce the instructions down to one page. There we go. Here's the cart. Ooh, oh, sorry. Perfect height. <laughs> yeah, right into your elbow. <laughs> okay, so let's pop this in. All right. Lynx games are always couch compliant. Except on consoleized hand like yeah. James. Yeah, actually, um, the person who did my um, K Retro, the person who did my uh, Lynx mm. handheld, actually made it even more couch compliant. They um, upgraded the controller. Controller to add all the buttons. That's amazing. Not mine, but <laughs> yeah, but... I should have waited just a little bit longer. <laughs> um, but so now they're even more couch compliant oh, than before. That's very good. So let's. Um... Go to the game. Okay. You need a controller. That would be very helpful. I would like to have a controller. That would be good. Oh, fancy one. Yep. As we use the fancy one. We use the fancy. Once it doesn't like really rely on the pro controller, like the shoulder buttons. Yes. Which I don't think these games do very much. Um. Gravitic Minds did, right? Gravitic Minds is a must to play on the Pro On the Pro Controller, yeah. yeah. There we go. We're ready. Let's turn it up a little bit here. 
coming through. Okay. Yep. Atari age. Who's that? Oh, I don't have my earpiece in. Oh, no need right now. No. But... It's good to know when it craps out, actually. Actually, yeah. it's a good time to charge it right now. Yeah. Because we have a couple minutes. Yeah. Without anybody to talk to. Ooh. Button or side to side? Hmm. Oh. Try now? There we go. Oh, I always forget about that. That yeah. has to be an exactly. So we're, are we going to do uh, both? Encounter first. Yeah. Because we don't really have anybody to answer questions. Or pose questions. So, so we I'm just going to... Show off both of them? Yeah, briefly show off both of them. Let's get this. Bigger in the, bigger in the frame. Yeah, it's a great shooter. Um, uh, so Encounter is a fast action game in three dimensions. Your view is through the oh. forward command window of a that. probe vehicle. Uh, your instrument panel combines radar, scanner, and warning lights. So pretty much shoot the baddies. Shoot anything <laughs> that's moving is basically yep. the and way to go. And watch your radar so that you can always get them uh, in front of you so they're not shooting, shooting behind. And I think at, for the first couple levels, I'm able to use the I was able to use the radar to completely shoot them because it's if you just shoot a volley of of weapon of oh, bullets yeah, at them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's also the danger of staying still, too, because they can do the exact same things. I think you go through that. Do you go through it? No, oh, no, they come out of that. Oh, right. It's been a while. Um. Bitjag says these are the, made by the same developer that made the Mercenary games in the Atari ST. Notable open 3D world games for the ST. Arcade level quality. Um, so, you're exploring a vast plain littered with mysterious cylindrical ob obelisks. Your incursion has triggered a relentless attack of alien saucers and homing missiles. You're warned of a saucer's presence by a yellow indicator on the instrument panel. A trace on the radar screen identifies the position of the saucer relative to you at the center. And uh, then after you defeat all the targets, which it has a countdown. I think it's a countdown at the top. Yep. Yeah. Now you have 11 left to go. Then it opens up a Stargate travel where you uh, speed through a hail of space debris. So let's hopefully you can get to that and then we can switch over to the other game. It's like a one-on-one -on -one game. It's like, I think only, well, maybe it's just the first level. There's like one at a time. Yeah, it uh, ramps up pretty quick. Come on, die. And we're actually, Right on schedule. Oh, and if we weren't on schedule, nice. this would be an opportunity to get back on schedule. <laughs> yeah, this segment was uh, scheduled to start at 4 p.m. and it's now 4.14, so it's a perfect time to feed the cat. It's just coincidentally, yeah. cats normally get fed at 4, and they did get fed at 4. If they didn't get fed, they would be up in arms and we'd be playing, uh, we'd be battling against the cats. <laughs> Never mind the games. Four more to go. Oh, oh no. Oh, <laughs> you still have more lives. That's oh, good. Oh, which is good. Three more targets to go. There ah, it is. Where'd oh, where'd it go? There it is. Oh, they're fast. They are fast. They're super fast. Two more to go. Game audio? Can you? Is it? Oh, he got me. Oh, Looks my like God. That through. was fast. Jaguars are a little bit lower that I've found. Okay, should be able to hear it now. Uh, I'm seeing it, so let me know if it's not coming through anymore. Uh, Nostalgic says, cylinders, cylinders are a sneaky method of not having to draw something from different angles. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Better, there it is. Okay, good. Ah! Oh. oh, no! You have to dodge. Okay, you? let's go to the next game. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, on that one, you just have to keep them out of the square. Yeah, you have to dodge. You have it to looks, dodge the. It uh, looks like it'll hit you on the sides, but yeah. all you have to do is keep it out of the square. Out of the square. Yeah. And this one is Backlash. Backlash is a fast action game in three dimensions. Mm -hmm. Your objective is to get the high score by destroying various saucers, bouncing tops, and other strange mechanical creatures that come your way. Um, this one at first looks very similar, it, but it plays the play quite different. Is a little similar, yeah. yeah. Um, and I just love the mechanic of the bouncing bullets. Because you can miss a target, even though they're like straight on with you, by by it just bouncing wrong. But just being able to throw tons and tons of bullets at something is just so much fun. And the radar is like right overlaid on top. So it conflicts with your bullets. So you have to kind of stop firing and then see where the red dots are and then start blasting them. There they are. And their bullets bounce too, so much fun. Backlash is more hectic than Encounter. Yes, yeah, it's crazy, and there's so much going on on the screen, with everything exploding and bouncing. Um, your radar surrounds your reticle at the center of the screen. A white trace on the radar screen identifies the position of the enemy or missile relative to you at the center. Oh, so the red ones are missiles, and the white ones are the enemy. So if you want a really um, a good pair of shooters, I guess, 3D shooters, 2.5D, I would say. Because you can't actually move up and down in this. Um, this is a good pairing of games. And it's nice you can shoot the bullets, too. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, you'd, you'd be, be dead. Devastated. You'd be dead if you yeah. couldn't shoot the bullets. Would not go well. Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> Run away from thing. the bullets! And you can outrun the bullets, which is funny. Bitjag says, depending on where the spawners are at, sometimes you can camp oh, camp and get through them really quickly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it those white dots on the ground is where they spawn no, from? No, they spawn from, yeah, but that, that's okay. not... Oh, oh, got me. Made quick work, are you? I Three know. left? Three left to go. Like, sometimes it seems so hard. <laughs> It's like I'm going right for them and well it's you have to be at the right distance or really close because it'll bounce over them that's the deceptive part of it oh nice. was that level three or lives that you have left Your shots will bounce as they are propelled forward and enemy shots come in all sorts of patterns. Beware, you can be shot from any angle, including from behind. The homing missiles are particularly dangerous. Oh, that's what... That's the little thing, yeah. like you have to kill it or you're dead. Yeah, that's the hard one. Uh, yeah, it is difficult to see the HUD, so it's a balance. That's one of the game balances where you have to stop shooting to get your bearings again. Where is it? There it is. It reminds me of the uh, missiles in Doom, actually. Just this thing coming straight at you. Yeah, it's really interesting, the um, the display being... Overlaid? Overlaid, oh. It's a choice. Definitely a design. Whoa. Theirs don't need to bounce. They just Whoa! Oh, spread out on the screen. Yeah, these ones <laughs> are really challenging here. These guys. No! Ah, you really have to dodge. Oh, there he is. Okay, it's your last life. My last life? Oh. You want to play? No, time is up. Oh, okay. That's why. Wow, wow, that was fast. Yeah. Sounds well, it's two it games, is. right? Yeah, it's true. So we're packing two games into one. It seems very quick. Yeah, I don't like those. Oh. Those are so hard. The big stream of uh, they are cause shots. Because you, you can't oh, shoot dead. them all. Oh, oh wait, there we go. And okay. So <laughs> let's uh, switch to the next game. Okay. I can't even see the chat. You're, you're, <laughs> I know. I, it's it's, uh, it's a shame. Um, Lawrence is in the chat. Oh, there we go. Cyrano. Hey, Cyrano. Yeah, it is 
it's sad he's not able to make it today, but he's That's in the chat. That's good. Thankfully, so he can um, answer some questions there or take That's some always stuff good. up. Uh, what's the next one? Um, the next one is that over too. Uh, Rocket Ranger. Rocket Ranger. And I can start unboxing that. This was a game I have not played before. No. I did look it up because I, I was like, oh, okay, uh, this one's new. Yeah. A lot I, of these other games I have played at least It's good once. you looked it up. Yes. Because I've played Defender of the Crown on the C64 a long time ago. Yeah, Defender of the Crown is quite a complicated one, too. Yes. Rocket Ranger as well seems like it has a complicated... Uh, there we go. Gameplay. Rocket Ranger. I believe these are both from Cinemaware. Yep, Cinemaware Interactive Movie. So Cinemaware titles really um, stressed like the interstitial um, in-game movies almost. Yes. Like they were very big pioneers of that. And their graphics on their games were absolutely astounding for the time like i couldn't believe what i was seeing when i played uh defender of the crown on the c64 oh yeah it was just like what it can do this Ooh, there's lots of stuff yeah there we go so there's uh the manual i'll let you thank you pull this guy out. That out and this one has a, a little card but on the back is actually something you'll need to play the game, which is the Rocket Ranger Secret Decoder Wheel. Oh my goodness. So games back then... Decoder Wheel. ...had multiple forms of defeating piracy. Oh, one, yes. One I... of them was like you had these wheels that came with it or things that um, you needed to spin around yeah. or to use a red filter to see hidden codes so let's take a look at the manual and the packaging once again is by bitjag who is in the chat william thorup what a beautiful oh, this one's dense lots of text <laughs> <laughs> We may not get very far in this because it is There's quite, involved. It come, from what I could see, it's quite involved. So we'll try to show off as much as we can, but we have not extensively gone over the gameplay. So. And it's the same with Defender of the Crown. It's, it's yeah. like an adventure, long adventure game. Yeah. So let's pop this in, see how far we can get in it. And we'll, we'll definitely be playing these on the show Yeah, uh, for, I think, for uh, longer versions I of it. I think we definitely need to do that. They both look really interesting. Because I love Defender of the Crown. It, it has uh, so much nostalgia yeah. <laughs> for me, yeah. obviously. The intro is a few minutes, <laughs> Cyrano says. Yeah, 90s copy protection. So, um, Cyrano, if you wanted to type any little tidbits about the making of these games or interesting uh information about these games feel free to type it into the chat and i can i re i can read it out for you are about to become the rocket, rocket ranger. ranger cinemaware corporation presents oh nice in living color rocket ranger Looks great. Actually, I can crank these up now. Test, test, test. Yeah. Because I can nice. only... Uh, with the software, I can only attach the audio ducking to one thing. Oh, I see. So when a guest is on, it doesn't duck when they talk. Yeah. It ducks when I talk. Oh. Or I can switch it to them, but then it won't duck when I talk. Yeah, well, that's, that's a bit of a mess. Yeah. yeah. So you can see um, there's cinematics. Very in much, this. yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're usually quite gorgeous and scaled up to whatever system they're on. So you can press the button to continue if it lets you. Don't think you can. <laughs> Welcome to Fort Dix, Fort Dix, New Jersey. You yeah, puzzle okay. over a theorem in a non-Euclidean physics, which is the key to a revolutionary high-altitude bomb site, etc., etc. Okay. 
is a lot. A lot. Very involved game. Chapter one, <laughs> Zeppelin. Okay. So I think this is where uh, the card comes in when you start doing these different things. Like you go to take off. Maybe you have to do those first. No idea. I've not played this game. I was watching it. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so you report to your commander. Top five agents to be placed under your direct command. Agents who infiltrate report back with clues. Countries change color when you organize resistance and flash red while the Nazis attempt to occupy. Agents who maintain a high profile change color yeah, to no, white and no carry jumping out their into orders this. more quickly. Ne needs wow. The yeah. So maybe we'll just kind of show screen. I, yeah, <laughs> I noticed. Um, oh, the US is exit. That's funny. Oh, Nazi efficiency is at 80%. No. So you're in the war room right now? Orders infiltrate, cover low profile, low risk reserves, one assigned. I've been told infiltrated. infiltrated the Gestapo headquarters. Nazis plan to destroy the Allies with Lunarium bombs. Lunarium is mined only on the moon. <laughs> okay. Okay, somehow these sobs are getting it down to Earth. Nazis on the moon. Oh my goodness. How did they get out there and destroy the moon base? Wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Penult is another hard to jump into right away as well. Yeah, there's some there's some advanced games that are being released, which is great for longevity of the play. Yeah, we'll be able to wander around a very tiny bit in Penult. <laughs> so this was uh, looks like originally released in 1986. Orders oh, they have Canada in here. Yay. <laughs> Usually it's glossed right over. So you watch some videos on this game? Oh, very brief. Yeah. So you have agents to assign all over the world? Is that, I have uh... no reserves, though, so I have to pull an agent out to put them somewhere else. Oh, okay. Um, it that's says... what I remember. It says you can only be in here for 12 months, and you're in August 1940. I guess time passes while you're uh, while you're setting things up. Uh, Cyrano it says, "Go back to the." It? Cyrano says, "Go back to the menu, take off, and put the fuel in for Mid Atlantic." Okay. That'll actually probably show some some action. Hi, did you eat? So go take off. Click button to transfer Lunarium. See decoder wheel. Okay, so... Mid-Atlantic? Does it say? Atlantic? Um, right there, Atlantic. Atlantic, yep. And then what other country? So we have to match it with no, another No, we're country. going to the Mid-Atlantic. So oh, we're, we're at, in New Jersey, I guess. We're in New Jersey. I don't know. USA. USA. Going to... The Mid-Atlantic. Mid-Atlantic. So it's here. USA. Atlantic. It says 30. 31. Okay. Oh, no. There we go. So this is the uh, piracy protection. Couple more down. Come on. One more. There you go. Very slow. Click to confirm. Did we pass the piracy check? Yay! Maybe? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Did we go down? Because you'll crash, right? If, if you don't transfer the right amount. Fuel management is also important, not just for protection. Okay, but some of these, like, you need a tiny bit of fuel. Some of them, you need a lot of fuel. Uh, cigar shade and Zeppelin. You must destroy some of the aerial torpedoes once in close. Open fire on the Nazi gunners in the gondola. Being carefully, Zeppelins are filled with gas. Wouldn't you 
want to blow up the gas. <laughs> Nice purple colors. Oh no, watch out. So do you have to shoot those things? I have to shoot a certain number of them if I'm oh, not mistaken. Okay. Ah. <clears throat> Did I get enough? Oh, oh my god. Let's come back for another pass. <clears throat> Did I fail it? Oh, no, uh, I died. Didn't get enough. So do you repeat the same one over again? Put a takeoff? I'll try it oh, one goodness. more time. This is not, not going very well. We have long, enough time for one more. Nope. <laughs> I do not. So that's so it. So that's it? <laughs> we have to restart the game? Let's throw it back. fuel depot? Do I have to get more no, fuel? No, you have to get from the war room. Oh, no, I didn't mean to click on that. Go. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, there we go. Good try. I still remember I first encountered with CinemaWare was the Three Stooges. Yeah, that was like a mini game. Uh, a selection of mini games with the Three Stooges. I never played it, but I've watched, I've watched it. Some of them look more interesting than others. There's pie throwing, and then Oh, yeah. Running down the street, going under ladders, and... Sure. Oh, it's 31. You have to do it exactly. Do you? Yeah, it's copy protection. Or else, you just die. <laughs> very, very nice looking game. Can I give it a go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ha I remember um, seeing something that you have to stay very low. You don't want to oh, hit okay. the Zeppelin in the distance, so you oh. have to stay a below it or above it when you shoot. You have you to be very careful. You think you'd want... Oh. What? Wrong amount? Did we... What? Hi! Ah! <laughs> oh, <laughs> no! And dead. And dead. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. that ended fast. Well, we'll move on. <laughs> Looks beautiful though. Yeah. And from what I understand, it's sort of like a, a series of mini games. So you you right. progress as you complete mini games, and then you get um, clues and hints from your agents, and you move your agents around. They get more clues, and then you you take off and go to different places and play mini games. Okay. Yeah. I so, think that that's really that, cool. It's a game I think we have to spend some time with and play yeah. a little bit more. But I think that's very cool. what a lot of the Cinemaware games were because mm. Defender of the Crown is also a, a series of different types of yes. games. It's any any just... comments from the chat there about the game? Uh, game audio is lagging behind a bit. Oh, thank you. I will correct that on the next one. Yeah, let me know anytime that happens. So, Defender of the Crown. Cinemaware interactive movie. That, that pretty much sums it up. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot more movie, well, not a lot more movie, but there's a lot of movie parts to it. Um, but mostly you are playing gameplay. If you can unbox that and then put that back together. Oh, this one's a thick manual. There we go. Yeah, I had a lot of fun playing Defender of the Crown, so I can actually help you out with this game. <laughs> if I remember it correctly, it's been a couple decades. It looks like a pretty fun game. Again, it, it was is. another one that I looked up a bit online, um, just because it, it's not a game I know. So um, it looks like a lot of fun. It's a strategic game. I like it's, I like strategy yeah. games. This one's ma man uh, resource management yes. in terms of... Uh, the Creating armies and taking over, you know... Yeah. And taking over land. And yeah, I thought that was in, and it's the, the right up my alley for fun. games. The joust one. The joust. Hopefully, we get to do the jousting. That would be a good one. If you, if but if you've played it, then that's good. You'll know the the general. Um... Yes. So nice looking manual. Yeah. Uh, nice very looking dense box with text. too. Yeah, very nice looking box, and we get a poster with this one. Ooh, posters. 
Very nice. Defender of the Crown poster. Let's put that there. And pop in the game. I'll fix up the synchronization of the audio. It happens anytime I um, switch systems, really. for a second. Cinemaware Retro. There we go. Oh, mm, I don't have my mouse handy, but this has uh, mouse support. Uh, where Do you is have it? to have a mouse? Or? No, you don't. You can okay. just move the joystick. So we're okay and it's totally with just fine, the iPad. I, I played this on the C64 with a joystick. Okay. Yeah. I, I can see it being, yeah, easier yeah. with a joystick, but okay. So I'm okay? Yep. Go for it. One? <laughs> One. One to go. Jaguar version. L. Stabley. Who's Ooh, that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Click that a little fast. Ooh, very shiny gold. Very nice. It has great music. Dun, 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 dun. Computography. What's that? It's credited in the last one, too. Yeah. They're making up words because they're like, we have a whole new paradigm of <laughs> gaming <laughs> now. This is the future of gaming. That's right. <laughs> Copyright 86, 87. Yep. The cast, the Saxons, the Normans. Oh, Bitjag says, I could be remembering wrong, but it seems like Lawrence made some adjustments to the jousting. Uh, game to make it more reasonable. I did find jousting on the C64 be challenging, but mm. not impossible. You had to be very, very precise. Okay. Let's get into it. We've heard the music now. So, so you get to pick what type of character you I are. I will go with something good, good, and average. Yeah. It's good to always start a game where it's like not bad at anything and not great at anything. Um, oh, oh, it's this guy. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. There we go. So, oh, we can go right to jousting. <laughs> Hold a joust. Well, I'm here. Yep, so you um, can move. And seek you have conquest. I, I was looking at this. So you want to, if you have army. money, you need to buy an army. You have 11 treasure. I would buy a couple. You. Soldiers, knights, catapult. You need the catapult to take down other castles. Yeah, but we're not quite there yet. No, so we probably, probably won't have time for that. Soldier it up. Yeah, soldiers are good for fighting other armies and knights as well. Do I want then a you, knight? Then you go into I'm castles as well. Yeah, but we're not quite. Th yeah. Is that to build a castle? Probably. Yeah, to build another castle on another part of the land. I'm just going to. Just yeah, load I, myself up with soldiers then. I can't believe they made this game on the C64 either. It was ambitious to say the least. Oh, they're conquering lands. Well, conquer lands. Seek conquest? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So you have to... Pick a, pick a land? Maybe? Try it. Okay, so move army or transfer men. Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. You have to move people into your army. And you only have soldiers, so you don't want to leave eight, too little half, behind. Leave eight? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then move your army. Which and one? One? probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's almost on the border of two. Fighting with local, all oh, those peasants. Oh, peasants always Terrible. getting in the way. Yeah. Carl G says, I'm surprised I never heard of this game. It seems it would be right up my alley. Oh, uh, yeah, it was fairly well known back in the day, but I mean, there's so many games came out in the 80s for so many platforms. It was, I'm still discovering so many games that I missed on the C64 even, because I, I owned a C64, let alone the Atari 8 bit. So did you get some more? Uh, I got some more treasure. Treasure from stealing it <gasps> from the peasants. How dare you! <laughs> joust, joust, joust! No, no, I, I need to, I need to take, take this territory. Okay. Then I'll joust. 
Sprybug says, I played this all the time in the NES. Loved it. Sire, the peasants are revolting. Well, they're not that bad. <laughs> We're not oh, I revolting. I see two on the territory, seven in the army. We're just a bit muddy. <laughs> Can I transfer? Al says, and we're getting old. Mm. Yes, we are. Hi, kitty. Hi. So, do yeah. I attack your tail? Yes, do it. Attack that tail. Um, I don't have many men on this territory, but oh, can I... Yes, I think you can transfer men from one mm, to another territory. Like, I could transfer back. Oh. I don't know. I'm just going to continue and leave okay. my two men there. Oh, it's move army. No. Okay, yeah. Just go there. <laughs> oh. Five! Jeez. Is there any left? <laughs> <laughs> the armies of Sir Cedric of... Ah, oh, nice. Has been destroyed. Ooh. Yes, fight amongst yourselves. Do it. Deplete your own resources. No, <gasps> you're cut off. No. When does this uh, game end? Five o'clock. So a bit of time. So, do... I can't remember what the knights are specifically for catapults are for attacking castles but you don't have enough i don't I, yeah i'm not gonna be attacking any castles. and the more regions you own the more income you have yes Joust, joust, joust. Buy an army. Well, you don't have any money to buy more army. You have a little bit. Oh, another army. Yep. Oh, that's just no. Yeah. Continue. Oh, no. I think I... S oh, I gave up a turn because I clicked on it. Oh, no. <sighs> okay. Um, well, you could go attack that land that they just took. Well, yeah. <sighs> go raiding? I think that's conquest. other somebody's somebody else's land. This feels risky in a way. Mm, yes. My army has like two people in it. Oh no. I think I have to move my army back. Good luck on that. Oh, fighting. Oh, oh, dead. No. Oh, you, oh, you beat them. Nice. The three German knights arrived oh. to serve Wolfric, uh, the wild, and fight for something. The Saxons. Okay. Nice. So. I would go for that red up at the top. So now I have 23 treasure. Ooh, very good. Um, but I don't have enough people? How do I know? Can you read? Yeah, it was uh, reading. reading the map. My army. Can I hold a joust? I don't know. You can go so click on the can map. I... Definitely buy army, at least. Yeah, but I think I'm just buying them on my territory. Like yeah, and then you have to I have transfer to transfer them. them, so maybe I have to... Um... I don't know. But buy them first. There you go. Transfer men. No. If I move off my territory, there's no one. No one's gonna be there. Yeah. I think I have to move them here. Yeah. And then transfer men. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. Okay. So let's put one knight. Yes. Lots leave and behind lots and lots. eight. But you can buy more. You have tons of gold. move army sure just back here yep um then can i transfer men back let's see robin anyone <laughs> i don't know try it let's go see robin you seek robin's aid i expected you after a moment of thought he uh, agrees to your request i will send enough men to help you in this endeavor 
Okay. So I guess it's like a random roll of the dice if you get more men. Okay. Uh, and what's read map? Oh, I can send a spy. Uh. Show Lord. Eleven pieces of gold. His army is camped. One soldier. Oh, oh we're, we're, we're attacking Get. that. Yep, do it now. Now. I'll probably have to wait a turn, but one soldier, three knights. Okay. Uh... Move army. Attack him. No, but I want a catapult. Oh, okay. Well, go out of here and continue. Oh, yep. Yeah. And then go by because you have lots of treasure. Just enough for a catapult. I think it it ends up back at my castle, though. Yeah, you have to go get it. And then should I get a couple more soldiers? Yeah. Load up. Oh no, you're attacked. That's, that's the perspective of them attacking you. Interesting. So they have 31. They that's... have two knights. And one catapult, but we have a catapult. They'll... Oh, they're dying. Oh, you're, you're killing them. Yes. So you're, right now you're on stand and fight. Yeah. You can send your knights in, but I only have two. one knight. You're doing really good right now. I would just keep holding Defensive on this. Hold. No, no, don't change a thing. I'm not clicking on anything. Because you're totally destroying them. Yeah, I think retreated. Ha <laughs> ha! You should retreat. <laughs> oh no! Oh, someone took. I'm trying to figure out how to shift. I think you have to go back to your castle, load it up, and then you just move that yeah. one guy around the board. Um. <laughs> Cyrano says, go on, pronounce pronounce Cluid. C-L-W-Y-D. All consonants. Oh. Okay, go joust before it's over. It's just an independent thing. Want to joust? Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> you, can, I, I, you you played the game before. Yep. I, I'll try and remember. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, these pictures were like works of art on the C64. It's like, what? Okay. Who shall we... Edmund the Grim. Okay, Edmund the Grim. <laughs> uh, territory. Yes, give us your territory. Uh, I guess he is... The well, we want that. Because that's next to us. Oh, they picked that one. Sure. So we're jousting for territory? W can be a valid Watch out! Welsh. Again? Nope. Yes! Isn't that you? Nope. Are you on the outside? Oh, what? Yeah! You're you you're in the red. Oh, I thought it was from the left to the right. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I failed. Steal his food. Destroyed. Oh my goodness. One last player in the game. Excellent. Okay. Well, we've got back to one. Uh, we have. Yep. Almost no soldiers. <laughs> so we will buy as many as those as we can. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then you want to transfer because I think you, you have... Yeah. What? <gasps> Did I do it wrong? No, you got three French knights. Okay. Very nice. So... See conquest. Then transfer men. Oh! My army has a lot. That's just saying. The garrison. Oh, can you go backwards? You can't, can you? Can only go one way. Oh no! <laughs> I've transferred everything. Oh well. 
gonna go destroy. How about that guy? Uh, sure. This is oh. more work. <laughs> now they're being destroyed. Knights charge! Death, Dead. death. Yes. Lose, then declare victory. Yes. Good tactic. Oh my god. Oh, what's the point of defensive hole? Oh my god. No. Can no, I there's retreat? way too many of, many of them. <laughs> oh. Oh no. Oh. And we're dead. And we're dead. <laughs> oh. Get another chance at jousting. I think I'm too low. It, like it moves around like crazy and you have to like, yeah, too late. <laughs> you have to kind of wrangle your thing as your horse is bouncing around. Mm. Oh, I'm not looking very good. No. <laughs> not looking good at all. Uh, so how are we doing on time? Um, we will, another couple minutes. Okay. And then we will um, change things out. I think you need to buy as much as you can for your army right now because you have no one. That's it. And then continue. <sighs> oh no! I knew it would happen. Yeah. It's too far into the game. Neat though. This game is really cool. Yeah, it's very tactical. So they're attacking our castle, then they make it into the castle, and they have a billion. <laughs> yeah, we're dead. Yep, it's over. I think you just have to get as many men as you possibly can in your army. Just keep adding, 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 yeah. adding soldiers. Yeah. yeah. There's no point in keeping it in gold. No. Really. What do you... You're not... This isn't uh, Sim City where you need gold to buy roads and stuff. It's like, no, no you're just fighting. Yeah. And it's game over. Yeah. Oh, oh no. and fire. <laughs> Quick, the rain. Put out the fire. <laughs> Don't they want to keep the castle? <laughs> the last battle. Nice. Rough, you don't get a chance to catch your breath, yeah. Yeah, the graphics are amazing. The, looks, the looks sound is fantastic. Great. Yeah. yeah, it looks great. And it's it's a great tactical game. Yeah. So if you're really into tactical games like Risk, yes. um, this would be... It, it reminds me of Risk. When yeah. I, yeah, very much like Risk. But with active gameplay, like you're actually jousting and, mm. yeah. A video game version of Risk, kind of pared down. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Very fun. Yep. So let's um, set, tear this Move down. I think it's the last Jaguar game. Is it? Okay. So we can put away the Jaguar and get the next system ready. All I can't right. remember which one that is. But I'll hand this to Tanya. All right. And we'll put it away. And actually, we could do treat time. We have a oh, couple minutes. Do so we? I think that might be in the cards. Okay. After I switch out the system. If somebody wants to do treat time. You'll have not to yet. turn the trigger on. It's not on yet. No, not on yet. Jaguar is done for the We'll day. have a little, a little break. Jaguar can rest. And we'll let the cats yep. fight it out in the game for a so little while. So what system besides the 2600 is next? Oh, it's 7800. So we'll get that set up. That's ready to go, so we don't need to switch. Okay, I think I can start the uh, employ the bedding now while I set things up. Um, channel points. Let's enable the treat time. So it should be enabled now if somebody wants to give it a try. It, uh, we'll have to use this camera and just tilt it towards him. You'll get yeah. um, a, a different slightly view. different view of the cats. <laughs> Which might be interesting, it actually. Could be. Let's get the cables out of the way. Yeah. It's tree time. Yum, 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 yum. Move the table. Let's see if you can... It's treat time. I didn't hear it, but uh, oh. it's coming up. Because it's going through whatever. There. There's a cat. <laughs> There's a cat. As soon as we ring the bell, it'll happen. Okay, so who triggered the treat time? Chalcedony Meow! Yay, thank you! Chalcedony Meow! Okay, so let's start the prediction. Oh, 
Oh, oh that, that's that's the signal. So a lot of people are in here that probably may have not uh, seen what this is. So at the top of your screen, there is a predict button. You get to choose the cat and you get to choose uh, or how much they'll win by. The, yeah, the, what is it? The over under? Something over like under. That? It's either one, one or two points or three points. This is Atari. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Let me switch to the big one. Uh, cat treat time. There we go. This Able. is Atari. Yeah. And he is uh, a slow eater, but he's a good bell ringer. And this is Sprite. And he is a fast eater, but a very distracted cat. Yes. I'm going to close the door. Oh, too late. No, I'll get the door. Okay. Come in here. There we go. So you can pick which cat and how much they're win going to win by. Sprite usually wins, but Atari had a big upset uh, the other day, and he won by three, three points. points. Yeah. So you just don't know what's going to happen yeah, with yeah. these cats. Even though Sprite might be the you know the the favorite, Atari does win sometimes. So yeah, he does. Yeah. Come on, get in the camera. This is going to confuse him because I think the orientation of the bells is going to be a little different than normal. Yeah, but that's okay. It's going to be a little weird. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> so you got about 30 seconds more to bet on the cat. <laughs> it's the treats. <laughs> Sorry. Violent sneezing. <laughs> oh, Al hasn't seen this in a while. He's like, wow, this has evolved. Yeah. Oh, it's evolved. <laughs> it has. <laughs> it's crazy. It has become more sophisticated. Sophisticated cat betting. That's right. Okay, kitties. Are you Almost ready? there. Not quite there yet. Almost there. Ten seconds left to bet. Place your Looks last like, bets Looks uh, like the Sprite one, two, and the Atari one, two have uh, it. Okay. But there's bets on all of them. On all of good. them. That's okay, good. cats. Are you ready? So watch watch on the screen where you're putting them. Yep. That's not where That's, that's not normal. where it is. No. Oh. That's what I mean. Oh, I see. Do you want it? Yeah, I'll put, put the, the other way, just so it's less confusing. Other? No, no. This way. <laughs> no. Okay. That nope, was that, one. That didn't count. No, nope. it didn't. Okay. Nope, nothing's counting yet. Nothing's counting yet. <laughs> one here. Oh, I one see. Here. I okay, see. Okay, you ready? Okay, go. Oh, that's Atari. Okay. Oh, Sprite. Okay, they're off. It's tied. Now I can watch. Doesn't matter what bell they ring, but. No. Try again. Oh, oh Atari. Atari. Two on Atari. Unusual. Try again. Good kitty. And Sprite tied oh, it Atari? up. Oh, Atari! That Atari's was another one. Still in the lead by wow. quite a bit. A whole, a whole treat ahead. Yeah. Harder. Oh, there yeah. you go. You're having. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Atari almost got that one. Hit ring the bell. Ring, ring the, the bell, bell, guys. Oh, Yay. good kitty. Atari's still ahead, but oh. not by much now. Sprite oh. is catching up. Get it? Uh oh, that's not oh, good we got for it. Sprite. Okay. We got it. Ring the bell. Oh, harder. harder. Not you. <laughs> there oh, we go. Oh, Atari. I always root for Atari because he's the undercat. <laughs> oh, oh just enough. Nostalgic's cheering for Atari. How will the bell orientation affect the ding ability? Oh, that was Atari. Oh, he's still Sprite ahead. Sprite is struggling to hit it. Hit it, Sprite. No, a you have to harder. make a ding. Try the other bell. There we go. Oh, oh, Atari, Atari it is neck in and neck. Still in the lead. By not much, but a little bit. <laughs> He's like, where's my treat? Come on. Harder. Harder. Ring the bell. Ring it. Harder. He's using his claws. There, there we you go. go. Good kitty. Ring the bell. It's almost game point. Oh, oh no, he's having trouble. Ring the bell. Oh, he's having trouble. He can't get it. Ring the bell, Sprite. Now Sprite's distracted. Yeah, because Atari get can't it? get his treat. Oh. Did you get it? There. Sometimes Atari bats the treat away. Ring which... the bell, Sprite. What are you doing? Do you want a treat? Hit it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Upset. Game point for Atari. This is unusual. Sprite, ring the bell. By two points so far. Sprite is confused. Very He's distracted. confused. Like I said, Sprite gets easily distracted. Is this it? 
Is this the Harder. three plus lead? Oh, he did it's it. Harry! One by three for points. For the win! Whoa! Whoa! Tari's getting What is really up with that? Good. Sprite was really struggling to actually oh, win, ring the bell there. <laughs> wow. Oh, let me give you a couple more. Yeah. Oh, here. Smitty B says, this is what I get for not betting on Atari for once. <laughs> oh, no, you switched at the wrong oh, time. Oh, no. Good job, kitties. Good job. So Very let's, good. Let's see who bet on that outlier. Two people. Okay. Wow. So a couple people got a lot of points. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Split between two. So what is it? Oh, I can't see it from here. Let's get it up on this screen. B.R. Pocock and Vitoko. Wow. Yep, B.R. Pocock and Vitoko. B.R. Pocock for the big money. Bet yeah, the most. both of them. Both of them got it. Yeah, 28,000 wow. they get to split. 28,000 And, and it looks like not a lot of points were put on them in the first place. That was a big wing. Yeah, 223. Yeah. Put on it. Wow. Wow, good job. Huge payoff. Huge payoff. <laughs> huge like, payout. like a hundred times payoff. Yeah, B.R. Pocock. 123, 28,000. <laughs> Points. Whoa. Wow. Good job. Yeah. That was astounding. <laughs> okay. Let's move this back. That was a pretty big share. <laughs> oh, he's rich in, in points for a while now. Wow. He'll be true. Oh, Vitoko got 12,000. Okay. So BR Poco got 15,000 and yep. Vitoko 12. Wow. Wow. Congrats. <laughs> that was a big win. <laughs> probably one of the biggest payouts. <laughs> I think that was. They bet on the the long shot. Like that is the long shot. Three That's, plus for sometimes Atari. Sometimes it works. I'm quite surprised. I mean, Sprite was hitting the bell, but he just wasn't getting the ring out of it. That's true. Yeah. Sprite. <laughs> come on. And Atari was just being so accurate. He was just smacking it. Yep. Good, good kitties. Both of you. Okay. So, if you can get uh, Carl G uh, queued up. Okay. And it's a 2600 game. So, it's penalt if you want to pass that over when you're ready. We don't have Carl. What? At the top. Oh, no, it'll be. Oh, really? It'll can be there. Can you find it? Or if you could message us. people. Oh, what? Hmm. Carl, we can't find you on our list. <laughs> <laughs> I can search. Yeah. There it is. Okay. okay. He is there. We just couldn't find him. Weird. Okay. You can click on the video. Pass over uh, penalt. Oh, the pile is getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> it is. We're getting down. There's penalt. There we go. Oh. Oh, not online, it says. Carl, oh. time to wake up. Yep, yeah, you're on. It's your time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is he in the chat? Yeah, he is in the chat, so he'll be he'll be ready. Uh, yeah, no worries. I'll, so if you I'll can we'll, give it a try I'll in a give second. It another go. Uh, we need our earpieces, I think. Oh yes. Try it again. So many things. Just just out of camera view. <laughs> Thank you. Is that the right one? Yes. Nope. Oh, still trying. Keep trying. Carl's probably logging into Skype. <laughs> yeah. Get our earpieces going again. Oh. Yep. I think they're I think they're good now. I should be on now. Good. Okay. Let's Excellent. Try it again. Be ready for Carl. I can't see what's under the Atari logo on your shirt, James. 
Uh, it just says Atari. Yeah, there's nothing under. <laughs> My skin? <laughs> <laughs> just says Atari, yeah. Just a circle with the symbol and just says Atari underneath of it. Nope. No, well, not yet. We're struggling. I hope we have the right uh, person. Oh, yeah, that's definitely the right person. <laughs> it does Unless look like he's a uh, picture in front. So. It does. Looks like him. <laughs> it does. Vaguely familiar. Maybe, Carl, you can message us on mm. Skype, and it should pop up with your message, so we know that... Uh, We're connecting to the, the right account. Got the right account, because some people change accounts once in a while. And in the meantime, you can look at the box art mm -hmm. of Penalt. There's the front of it. Beautiful, beautiful artwork by the one and only Bitjag, William Thorup. Did an astounding job. Looks like he was kept very busy mm. with this uh, round of releases. No, nothing yet. Carl, wake up. Oh, okay. He's put his uh, name in there publicly, so it's type it in the search. <laughs> now everyone's going to start calling Carl. That's fine. <laughs> uh, K. Garrison. G-A-R-R-I-S-O-N. Sorry, K? K? Underscore, isn't nope. there? K Garrison. Okay. Underscore 20. There we go. Not the same account. Oh, it is different. Okay, <laughs> there we go. It is a different account. That's better. <laughs> Yay! Hooray! So let's bring him right on. One second. We'll hear this. you in a moment. <laughs> yep. We should be live. Hello, Carl. Well, hey. How's it going? Can you hear me now? You go full screen on that. Yes. We can hear you now. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. I've been looking forward to this uh, day for a very long time when we could present uh, Penalt in the box on the show. It's very exciting. <laughs> Ultima. Echo. You're getting an echo? Is there a... Oh, you might have you might have Twitch still running, so you might want to mute mute Twitch if you have it on the same system. Okay. Are are you all good now? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, excellent. Mm. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Atari Age Day 2023. Thank you for being with us and congratulations on your the release of Penalt. Uh, many, many hours of work, I'm quite sure, but we'll get into that. So if you can talk about the packaging um, from William Thorpe, Bitjag, who's been very, very busy, like I've said, with a lot of these releases, making another ex extremely beautiful cover uh, for your game Penalt. How did that happen? Was it a tale of uh, Al uh, me, me being the matchmaker between you? <laughs> yeah, that's precisely it. I hadn't had the pleasure of working with him before, but I was quite pleased. Um, I, I liked the attention he paid to the game and uh, getting to know the game, the style of the game, and yeah, the games that were the inspiration, obviously, the Ultima. And I, I think it showed in his work how much uh, detail love went into the art and manual and the cloth map. <laughs> I'm very excited. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I love the detail of your companion that's on the shoulder mm -hmm. on the cover of the box. It's just absolutely beautiful that he was able to really capture the game on the cover. Yeah, so, so we it's, don't have the like cloth. The detail of the dragon on the shoulder too is cute. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have the cloth map yet to show off, but that will be uh, available for um, people who are ordering it. Al can uh, chime in on that to make sure that I'm not uh, saying anything anything out of turn. 
But I believe uh, because we're doing a preview of these games, um, the cloth map will be coming later. Right, it's on the product page I, I sent out today. Mm. So, yep. Yeah, I'm and, quite excited to see it too. <laughs> I mean, I, I seen yeah. the PDF, but I haven't seen the it on cloth. <laughs> yeah, and that was kind of a mainstay of the Ultimas as well. So you're taking, you're borrowing a, a concept from that. Uh, bringing the cloth map because that was always a really nice extra that they they included. Yeah, as I recall, apparently Richard Gary had uh, went from publisher to publisher until he found one that would uh, uh, let him include the cloth map. Uh, uh, I think for Ultima Two. Um, oh. Right. Yeah, I told Albert I wasn't going to do that, but I'd really like to have a cloth map if possible. <laughs> 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 it's like if Atari Age isn't giving me a cloth map, I'm going elsewhere. Yeah. But Al, Al's like, okay, we'll do a cloth map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was lucky enough to be uh, one of the testers for Penalt, and uh, it and Tanya played it with me oh, extensively yes. as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, it's a big game. It is big, big game. Big game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so let's stream. Uh, my own uh, private uh, zero-page streams, effectively, with you and Tanya playing. Uh, that was a lot of fun and very <laughs> useful right. as well to be able to see things happen in real time like that. So I do appreciate the time and effort both, really, both of you put into it. <laughs> yeah, you got hours and hours of bonus ZPH content. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, no extra charge. <laughs> and this is why Al is moving away from uh, the uh, dust. <laughs> The dust things on this. Oh, do I have a screwdriver? Different systems will be able to behave differently with this uh, thing that pushes it back. Uh, let's see if I can trigger this. No one can see that you're sticking your uh, screwdriver into the. Yeah, I'm sticking my screwdriver into the cards. Scissors. Because <laughs> uh, something. Different carts have different mechanisms for getting rid of the dust cover. And one of them is these little pins. If anybody ever noticed the pins at the bottom of the 2600 uh, machine, and that's for pushing back the dust cover. And if they're not perfectly aligned, then you're gonna have some trouble. Having some trouble? Yeah, it's misbehaving. There we go. There we go. Okay. Let me put the scissors away so I don't injure myself. <laughs> yeah, it's retracted, so hopefully that just... There we go. Hey! Okay. Let's pop in the game and take a look at this incredible achievement. Okay. Back to 2600. It's this one. This guy? Uh, yes, that's the okay. one. So, um, do I have... So we're going to start from scratch, because I don't think I have my... Which is better for, for showing off the game. Yeah, I just turned it off. There's no option. Oh, there's no option. Okay. Yeah. So I don't... Th I think I have it in the 7800, the, uh, the Atari Vox. So, uh... For people in the know, this... Oh, I also have to put in the audio. There we go. So, move... Oh. It, it turned off the moment you uh, played with something back there. You mean when it shocked me? <laughs> it shocked you? Yes. Oh, no, that's not good. It is winter time. <laughs> True. Oh, and everybody's ears are blown. There's some Maggie's music. <laughs> yep. Nice. There we go. So anybody familiar with Ultima will be uh, pleasantly surprised when they pop this into their system. They would obviously know beforehand that this is a uh, loving homage, let's say, to the Ultima series. And um, so when when did this uh, development start on Penult and? It's actually a uh, pandemic 2020 uh, project. So I, I never thought I was going to produce uh, Ultima 
like being for the Atari uh, to begin with. I was wondering if I could make a map viewer, and then I went to look through the, all the Ultimas to see if there are any that have a small enough world map that I could display it on the Atari. Yeah. And the smallest one by far is in Ultima 3, which is just a 64 by 64 world map. So, oh. and even 64 by 64 would completely max out a bank at 4096, but uh, it can fit two tiles to uh, one byte and squeeze it in that way. And then it, but so yeah, I first started as a map map viewer for Ultima 3, and then I thought, well, maybe I can add the field of vision to that, and maybe I can add a town to that, and then eventually went to my own right. map, and the rest is history. I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is what is your history with uh, the Ultima series? Did you, and what what systems did you play Ultima on uh, back in the day? I first played it on the Nintendo. Actually, I hadn't heard of the series until huh? I got it for the NES. I was, they just called it Ultima, but it was Ultima Three for the NES. Um, and then I uh, played it on DOS after that, um, the early ones. So, um, and I'll, I'll, I played on DOS all the way up through Ultima 7, Parts 1 and 2. Yeah. Love them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it seems like you picked the absolute perfect game to pay homage to for Albert to publish since he's a massive... I can't overstate this enough. Massive fan of Ultima games. Yeah, I did. Um, were you aware of that? Were you aware of that when you uh, started making Penalt? Um, not fully, no. <laughs> I, I, I think um, I looked out, I probably wouldn't have gotten a soft map out of any other uh, publisher, really. <laughs> I think you liked the idea as, as much as I did. So, um, but, but yes, uh, it, it was a lucky coincidence that Albert is also a huge fan. <laughs> yeah. So when you uh, when you started working on it, did he contact you Im immediately about it? And he said, "Oh my God, this is amazing." Uh, actually, yeah, this is. Actually, I believe I um, sent him as uh, I I didn't have an announcement or anything, but I sent him a screenshot from my map viewer uh, in, in an unrelated conversation I was having with him, and he commented on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. So how uh, how big is is this game? And did you have any trouble, like you were saying, fitting the map in? Did you have any trouble um, compressing down what you wanted to put into this game? Because you have uh, towns and dungeons and the overworld map. Um, yeah, it's 128k. It started out as 64k, but then when I yeah kept adding towns, added dungeons, and then dialogue. It's Dialogue takes more than you'd think, too, even for the one or two liners that you get from NPCs. Um, yep. I did have to extend to 128K. Um, and I didn't have too much trouble fitting in what I wanted to, but text I had to compress a lot and also make a line perfectly on my uh, uh, 24 characters per line. Um Right. And so I, I use the thesaurus a whole lot uh, in developing this thing, and where it's just fit in, just like a perfect date. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, to fit them nicely on the game, I, I think Br Pocock also had to struggle with that with the uh, with his Grizzards game to to manage text to fit it in on the screen. Yeah, it was an unexpected challenge. <laughs> um. So Penult is an extremely expansive game and a huge undertaking, bringing an RPG of this caliber to the 2600. At any point, did you feel like overwhelmed by the scope of the game, or did you just really focus on what you were trying to do at that moment in time? Like, okay, I'm going to work on this town and just forget about the huge, massive world that I'm trying to create. The latter, because I, I didn't know it, for the longest time whether I'd really complete a full game. Um, you know, the map viewer on its own was cool, and being able to go into towns and see their maps, and uh, yeah, have head in things with the field of vision and so on. So, you know, all along it was something cool, even if it wasn't a game yet. I, I figured if I got to the point where I could get combat working, then I can probably finish it as a game. But in my mind, that was kind of crushing 
crashing that threshold was like, okay, this is a game and I can make this uh, make this happen. So yeah, I didn't get overwhelmed right. because I, I, I didn't commit to absolutely finishing it until it seemed like it was possible. Hmm. Um, so is the same display kernel used in town as on the overworld map? Because obviously the, f the fighting screen is very di is different. So is there anything, were you able to use the same uh, display kernel for the overworld as in the towns and the dungeons or there's subtle differences? The fighting screen for overworld is the same as uh, city and overworld. It's the dungeons that's different from all three of the, from that one, basically. Um, the only thing that's different about the overworld is there's less tiles uh, because there's, you know, only 16 unique tiles so that you can have um, two tiles fit in one bite, whereas towns have a mm. variety of tiles, including letters and NPCs and so on. But it, it's the same display kernel, and Combat Outside is also uses the same one. The dungeons, it uses, uh, it doesn't flicker, and it uses a smaller viewport, both for combat and dungeon exploration. Right. So how many unique tiles, do, if you have a, a count of them, went into this game? Um, just shy of a hundred, I think. Yeah. Not counting the dungeon, which are, are separate, but the, there are, there's a lot less unique dungeon tiles this bug based on how I store and display. Mm -hmm. Um, and you did all the graphics and all the code for this game. So that was, uh, how many hours would you estimate that you put into the development of this game? Because a lot of people don't realize the monetary reward is negligible <laughs> compared to the sheer hundreds of hours, I'm sure is in the hundreds for this game that, you know, they, they just look at the game and go, oh, that, you know, that's nothing, you know, it's a throwaway, but this is, this is a huge, huge undertaking. So how many hours would you estimate? I wouldn't even know how to begin estimate that and i think of game making as its own kind of game you know you have challenges to overcome you know the next boss might be how to display dungeons uh so on so i, I think it, i um think it's uh i don't play as many games as i might because i uh, my game making is kind of fills that same niche for me but yeah, tracking hours, I, I, I've never done that. I, I couldn't even. <laughs> this one's you know, probably my biggest project ever, so yeah. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, to take. It's, probably, it's probably best you don't uh, track the hours <laughs> for your own <laughs> sanity. Yeah. Um, so can you describe a little bit of the playtesting experience that you had, as I'm sure it was quite different from other games that you made, because this is a an RPG where you can continue day after day and you save the game and there's things to accomplish and people can play the game in different orders. So like how many play testers did you, did you have and, and what was the back and forth like that? Did you just let them roam free and play their own game or did you give them like, here's a save, I guess you can't even really do that, but um, here's a save game to start at this point. Like you couldn't do that, right? Well, you, could do that. you had to let them play. Um, you could do that with Stella, at least, but, um, yeah, uh, hex editing the Atari Vox probably wouldn't be, uh, <laughs> a <reason laughs> Not advice for, uh, playtesters. I, 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 I was something, eight, about eight of them total, um, the different people made it different levels in the game, um, but, um, yeah, it was very sporadic, um, I, I, I didn't, I, I, I provide clues to play testers. I, I didn't really uh, provide mm. uh, cheats to get beyond certain points uh, that I can remember anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, it's quite a big game to play. What what, what would you estimate the playtime would be, a, an average playtime in the game based on the beta testing? That I don't know either because I, I didn't ask um, beta testers to um, track their time. I, I think I can do it in less than eight hours. By you know, I can just follow a script, go here, 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 and not die too many times right. usually. But which isn't to say not at all. 
<laughs> cause I get impatient <laughs> two dungeons before I'm ready or whatnot. So yeah. Um, but if you don't know, it, it, to really solve the game, if you don't have spoilers, you need to talk to NPCs, um, and take notes and, uh, yeah, learn some things. So it's going to take a lot more and, you know, find hidden areas, uh, that sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So if somebody has, pl has played Ultima before, they can kind of comfortably uh, transition into this game because it has a very similar uh, feel and style to Ultima 3. Um, and like later Ultimas, you had to type text into it and get people to say, like, what's your job or blah, blah, blah. This one, you just go up and talk to them. Right, and that was one of the uh, challenges is making it menu-based, single-button joystick for something that um, even Ultima 3 is like there's a whole bunch of letters to memorize and so on um, yep. for all the functions. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's obviously heavily inspired by Ultima 3, and people who've played Ultima 3 will know to poke around walls and find hidden areas without really being prompted. <laughs> But the, the first, <laughs> first person other than me to beat the game uh, hadn't played Ultima, though, so that was valuable getting, um, you know, like right. my blind spots or whatnot. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think you had played Ultima before. Not Ultima. I mean, I've played similar games, but I... But I was sitting with you, so it was like, while we were playing. Yeah. So it was like, you kind of got an idea from me telling you. But yeah. It, yeah, it's a very, uh, very, very similar experience, and it's it's absolutely amazing, beautiful game, and I can't wait to continue on my adventures. And for the beta testers that were playing like me, they're able to pop in the final game and continue their quest and keep playing. Yeah, so there aren't any save game changes. There haven't been in a while, so I, I tried my best not to change that because I know it would cause disruption anyway, and there wasn't any big need to. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think we publicly played this game very much, so we probably would have to start over to show from the beginning if we were going to play it on the stream, which is totally fine. Well, have yeah. your notes. I've noticed I'm. Yeah. I'm I'm already at a certain level, so I think it it, it oh. in an old save or oh, something. Oh, maybe it is plugged in. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, because it says fine. it's level nine or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Mm, this doesn't feel like the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh. So before we let you go, anything else you'd like to say about the game or uh, anybody else that you'd like to uh, thank or give a shout out to? Um, um, nothing else about the game. I hope people enjoy it. I'm looking forward to getting my copy with the clock map. I decided to hold out until I could get that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you guys and all my other beta testers, certainly. Um, and that Maggie uh, doing the music, that was nice. Um, my Tara, my next mm -hmm. part, partner that you met at PRGE, I, I would get advice on uh, sprites I was making often. It's like, do you like this one better or that one better? Or, hey, what do you think of this? Uh, so that kind of feedback as I uh, code was been really nice, too. And, of course, Albert and William Thorup uh, for helping uh, turn this into a real game. So. Yeah, it's it's a huge accomplishment and congratulations. I, I never would have thought a game like this would be available for the 2600 and I think it's going to really expand people's minds of what the 2600 can do in terms of tile-based gaming because there's been a, a number of games that have come up like this that are pushing the limits of, of different styles of games that can be accomplished. Well, thank you. I just thought of one thing, though. Robo Mechanic, that was an inspiration for a tile-based game. And I saw that, yes. wow, you can do uh, tiles like that. And I think that's maybe what made me think about Ultimate Maps and all that. But when I saw that game, yep. this, 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 the visuals, I didn't yeah, think about... Uh, it, that kind of uh, style game would be all that feasible on the Atari. So I got my gears turning. So yeah, I think that was one of the f earliest tile-based utilizations on the twenty six hundred that really, really um, made the made the system work hard. And uh, that one still has not been released. So I'm still no. looking forward to Robo Mechanic as well. I'm hoping it, it's yeah. a proper release too. It's a great game. Okay. Yeah, I mean still. 
he's still active in the scene. Uh, he's just on other systems doing things. Um, so I'm hoping he comes back to it and it looks pretty much finished. He just needed to do a couple levels. All over but the sharing, as they say. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, great to talk you, with you again, Carl. And uh, I can't wait else. to dive back into the world of Penalt. Uh, thank you. Bye. So we'll talk with you soon and see you online. Bye-bye. Excellent. Yeah, this is... Uh, I, I can't say enough about this game. It's, it's oh, it's so much fun! <laughs> absolutely amazing. It's such plays so well. And there's you can so play much for depth hours, to it. Hours. Right? Yeah, it's a great <laughs> game. So if you can get um, Jared Gray West on the line and get him prepared and hooked up, I will pop out Penalt. Hi, little kitten. How are you? Yeah, BitJag says, great work. This game is really stunning to see on the 2600, and it's good to connect a face to the name. Yeah, that's why I really like having um, uh, the developers come on mm -hmm. and talk about their game directly, because people can see the person and hear the words directly from them. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's using OBS. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did flash up. Yep, uh, so we're, we're getting there. Yeah, we're, yeah. Getting there. we're connected, so that's, yep. that's all good. Uh, that's what's yep. important. Yep. Okay, so the next game is Quantum Tunnel by Jared Gray West. I can see it there. I'll just grab it. Oh, I don't know if you're putting these back on. Not those. Okay, no. I'm That's just fine. um, I'm putting them back in the box. Though. Okay. So let me get the box unboxed out of my protective sleeves that I put all my games in. So I like to keep them. There we go. We've got some video. Excellent. So if you can make that full screen when I get a chance. And we'll burn. Excellent. Oh. Thank you for subscribing, Atari Beer Pong. Glad you are enjoying the and show. And Man 2 d just subscribe too. Oh, Man 2 d Yay. As well. Oh, no, it's Atari Beer Pong gave out two subs. Oh, lovely. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Oh. And Crazy Curtis 1990 just got a free sub. Love it. Oh. Oh, no, we've lost connection. It's coming in and out. It's coming in and it out. It appears so to I'll, be. I'll wait till that's kind of settled down a little bit. And I'll uh, just fiddle around here with <laughs> some of my... Settings? Settings here to reset things. No, he's back. Good. Okay, one second. Let's reset the laptop so it's not frozen. I don't know why it does that every time, once in a while. It just freaks out. All right. Hello, Jared Gray. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps flipping back and forth for yeah. some reason. Oh, no. Uh, we'll wait till he comes back. So let's take a look at the front cover while we're waiting. There we go. Quantum Tunnel, um, and this is uh, by Jared Gray West. I oh. don't have any information on... Try try again now. We'll just see if we can get this to yeah. come oh. through. <laughs> oh, it keeps... Oh, it keeps going in and out. What's going on? I don't know. Because he's... Using... Should, I, should I disconnect and reconnect? No, it's on his end. Are you sure? Yeah, because we're connected. It looks like maybe he's fighting OBS, because it has um, webcam functionality. Oh, I see. To use a regular camera to route and oh, pretend I it's see. a webcam, okay. which allows you to use awesome cameras as webcams, nice. which is great, but um, having some having some issues there. Um, yeah, we'll just, uh, maybe we'll start the unboxing a little bit yeah. while we're waiting so we can keep pace. There's the front of Quantum Tunnel. Oh, holding up cats for entertainment. Uh, yeah, he's sniffing around the cords again. That's the last thing we need. Oh, bad kitties. Yeah, you. And Jared, if you mm. want to type, it'll come on the screen so we can see if if you're um, having some trouble. We can do it just audio if that's easier. If the video is uh, struggling, struggling and giving you some 
trouble. You gonna stand? Yeah. Quantum tunnel. Should I disconnect it and reconnect it? Are you sure? I don't think it's our end, but okay. he can give a message if it is. Oh, there we go. In the um, Twitch, it says, sorry, my USB camera is having an issue. Oh, okay. okay. So we can, well, if he's using a USB camera, that's where his audio is possibly coming through as well. So there's the front of the manual. There's the back. Let's see if I can get packaging and artwork. Uh, Corey Kramer. That. Here's, here's that. Thank you. Kurt. Oh, this is definitely a comic book format. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it looks fantastic. Because just as a note, I haven't looked through these because I wanted them to be a surprise because okay. I've had them since PRGE, but I knew what we were going to do Atari Age Day. So I'm like, I'm not going to unbox them, not going to look at them till we pop them in because I wanted them to be um, a surprise for us as well. Okay. So he says, I'm going to disconnect from Skype and try again. Yeah, he just disconnected. Okay. Uh, should I wait for him to contact us? He can contact us, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he can, okay. He can phone in. Yeah. So there we go. These manuals and uh, hey. pack packaging hey, get... Hey, away from there. Sorry. Apologies. <laughs> bad cats. J uh, screaming at cats. <laughs> oh, you're a bad cat. He's, uh, the manual and artwork um, get better and better every year because I think, you know, you are able to see there. Answer. Oh. With video. Yep. Um, because people see the quality and then they go, okay, well, we have to, you know, achieve that or higher with the quality. So, reconnecting. There we go, quantum tunnel. So let's pop this in and get it, make ready sure we're go. ready to go. Okay, yep, we are ready to go. So if the video isn't working either, is if there's a way to do audio chat, we can do that. Okay. If not, we can just continue on and you can type some stuff in uh, the chat. Should we switch over it over here. to see if there's audio or? We can. Check, check, check. Any audio, Jared? No. If he's using a USB cam, it depends on the headset he's using. Mm. Like if he uses a headset that has a microphone, then he, it might pick up from that. Mm. But um, if he's just using the webcam, and it has the built-in microphone, then it's going to be all or nothing. We either see and hear them. Well, usually, anyway. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful cover, and I love the... Oh, he just, he's in the chat. Oh. Uh... My apologies, looks like the audio is coming through the camera, and it keeps cutting out, so we might have oh. to continue on. I do have some questions. I will ask the questions immediately, so you can answer them. Um... So, Jared, I've been a fan of your work and creativity since I first played Spies in the Night, which just blew me away with this black and white aesthetic. Um, and with Quantum Tunnel, uh, you've turned the horizontal shooter on its head by making a horizontal collector game. So do you consciously look for unique play mechanics when creating a game? Because both um, Spies in the Night and Quantum Tunnel are very, very unique ways of playing games. Mm. Um, so if, can you just call? We could, we could just call. That would be audio. Um, so if you wanted to send over your phone number in, not not on Twitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> send over your phone number in, um, Skype in Skype. Phone. Just type it in there. Should we could I do an disconnect? audio call. Yeah, just, I'll just disconnect, disconnect there. So if you want to type it in Skype, we can uh, call you on the phone. How quaint. Yes. We, we, when I used to do radio shows, we would, that's what we would do. We would just hold up the phone to the microphone. <laughs> yeah. I set up this elaborate switch box and stuff. Yeah. And I had like all these wires going in and out and it was always feeding back. And then I went, why don't we just put them on speaker? There, there's his number. Okay. So... 
Let's not put this on camera. No, probably don't want to do There's no that. DTMF, <laughs> yes. DTMF tones coming through either. Okay. I think we're good. We can take these out for now. Mm. Long time listener, first time caller. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. Hopefully it's the right number I typed in. <laughs> Hello, Jared West. Hey, Jared. How's it going? Hey, I'm doing okay. Sorry for the uh, technical snafu on my end. <laughs> oh, no problem. We we worked around it. There is <laughs> there are ways to work around it. So we went old. <laughs> <That was> great. <laughs> we're we're going old school with the telephone. <laughs> so sometimes we have to fall back on that. So. Um, so let's, uh, if you wanted to talk about a little bit about your, um, artwork on the packaging and, uh, let me just bring up who, who did the packaging again. It is, um, Corey Kramer. So how did that come about? Yeah. So, um, Al Nuruso set that up. Um, and I, I was a fan of Corey Kramer and he suggested Corey Kramer. And so it worked out really well. Um, I, uh, I've, you know, played uh, Time Salvo on the 7800 and Wall Jump Ninja and um, got some copies of those and love, love Corey's art style. So I was super excited about that. Yeah, his artwork on Wall Jump Ninja is absolutely astounding. And uh, one day I'll have to make a t-shirt because he passed over all the artwork because Wall Jump Ninja is one of my favorite games. I use it for constantly for testing audio sync from the consoles because it has very precise jumping. Um, so yeah, great, uh, great artwork on this. And how much did did he just run wild on it, and he played the game, and uh, or did you pass over some notes to them to him? You know, I had I had a few ideas, but Corey's ideas were a lot better. Um, I mean, uh, I basically just you know I I waited to see what what Corey came up with, and it was it was really perfect for the for the game. Why does this phone sound like it's patched directly into the audio? Is the mic just that good? It is. <laughs> it is a really good microphone. Um, let me just bring up my chat again, because there we go. Sorry, I'm just laughing. Uh, Atari H says, if that fails, there's always facts. Oh, yeah, we can just fax back and forth. <laughs> fax questions back and forth. So let's uh, let's pop in your game now. Uh, I don't know if you... Do you have Twitch running so you can uh, watch along? Yeah, I can. I can see, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Just make sure you have it on mute or else we're going to have some feedback. So you're going to have to hold on to the phone while you ask questions. Oh yes. Of course. <laughs> okay. So let me just switch over. Okay. I'm going to pick up that yep. controller. Oh, there we go. Quantum tunnel. So, um, was there any inspiration for this game that, um, that you had to to make it or is it whole cloth something that you came up with well um so as far as the background for the game goes i um i didn't have a specific inspiration although uh at the time i was creating this uh let's see i think it started around 2015 2016 as kind of a quick sketch of an idea in atari basic um i was teaching myself Atari back then and just trying out a lot of different gameplay ideas that I had. Um, and then 2018 rolled around and I was playing, uh, there's an indie game called Raid by a guy named Jonathan Blow. Great game. Based around controlling the flow of time. And I wondered if something like that, either rewinding or fast forwarding or stopping time might be possible in a 2600 game. Um, and then I found out, you know, probably not fast forwarding or rewinding time. There's just not enough RAM to kind of maintain the state for that. Yep. Um, but stopping time, I thought, could work. Um, so, and, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I ended up with that, that particular gameplay loop. So just like VHZC, it was the game mechanic that kind of dictated the game, and then everything um, came out yeah, from exactly. that. Because if people haven't played this game, you can press the button to kind of stop time and readjust yourself on the screen, which is a very uh, innovative mechanic. But I always forget to use it when I play the I game. I do too. Because I'm like, oh, I got to avoid everything. Yeah, 
Yeah, and that's the thing is, you know, when you're, especially when people are starting out, they, you know, you can you can dodge and try to collect chains of particles, and you don't even really need to use the time stopping mechanic. Um, but that's really, I think, the key to getting the high scores is is learning how that part of it works too. Yes, I I didn't remember if Tanya would remember how to play this, but yeah. she does. <laughs> I was she's, trying to remember it because yeah. she's just she's just going for the yellow ones, which is if anybody hasn't played this, you want to get multi. The more you get of the same color, yeah. the the higher the score and the multipliers, etc. Yep. Um, so I asked the question um, while you're um, while we were adjusting the video and audio. Um, so. Like I said, I, I've been a fan of your work and creativity since I first played Spies in the Night, which is an unbelievable game, and I can't wait to get my hands on Spies of the Night 2, which has been released in limited form. Um, and I believe it's coming to Atari Age as well soon, because it was listed in the upcoming yeah, games. Yeah, that's that's the plan. I don't know exactly. I don't, don't know the date, but um, yeah, that's, that's coming to the Atari Age store sooner or later. And, and that's kind of a, a big expansion on Spies in the Night. And and Spies in the Night right. almost is like a mini game within Spies in the Night, too. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's basically four, four times uh, the amount of content, at least, in Spies in the Night, too. So different, different types of gameplay, but still all sort of based around the stealth idea. Oh, and Al says it'll be in the Atari Age store late in the spring. So that's that's excellent. Very looking nice. forward to that. So uh, with this game, you've kind of turned the horizontal shooter on its head and making a horizontal collector. Because usually when you see this type yeah. of game, you're like, oh, where's the fire button? Uh, but uh, <laughs> so do you consciously look for unique play mechanics when creating a game? Is that always the first thing you start with? Because Spies in the Night is also incredibly creative with its um, um, play mechanics. Yeah, it, it almost always is. I, I have these gameplay ideas that I think about and, you know, kind of um, try out in my in my mind and then kind of move on to, to Batari or um, Assembly when I can do that. Um, and, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of, of trying to push the gameplay ideas. Um, I just like, I know there's a lot of... Um, you know, there's a lot of, of ways to play games that haven't haven't been tried yet, so that's what I'm always kind of searching for. Mm -hmm. um, interesting uh, comment from in the chat: the yellow and green is a little hard to discern for me, um, and that's uh, oh, and that's uh, pseudo graphics, um, mm -hmm. and that's I think something that uh, a lot of people don't think about, especially when games that uh, rely on color. Um, I think that makes part of the challenge is that <laughs> that the the green and the yellow are close to each other. So yeah, as things move fast, it it, it gets harder. <laughs> <laughs> it it does. So that's that's part of the challenge here. Yeah, and that's that's a good point. I didn't think about you know if um, I, I don't know I don't know anything about the the, the commenter, but you know if, if people are are either colorblind or you yeah. know other uh, have have different um, perceptual differences. I didn't, I didn't think about that really, but that's, that's interesting. That's something I'm going to have to keep in mind for, for future games. Yeah, because we played a game on the show a couple months ago where it was a game for people with no sight whatsoever. And it was I found quite it, interesting. I found it fascinating. It was all through audio. Um, and oh, it, that's interesting. Yeah, and yeah. it'd be really great to see more games that can be played like if somebody's sight impaired played with sight and is still fun but can also be played without sight or somebody i mean obviously games are a little bit easier without uh being able to hear because a lot of games don't rely on that but um yeah it's just a interesting yeah, observation that, i think i think there's some some interesting gameplay ideas that could come out of that that too yeah um so can you walk us through the development of this game and how things were added to it as time went on? Because you said you you started with the pause mechanic, and that almost is... It, it's, it's like a bonus in this game to help you out. So what was the next step yeah. after the pause that uh, in the development? Yeah, so um, 
I there were a few things that I that I wanted to do beyond the um, the, the time pause mechanic. Um, I wanted to do something where the player character had momentum and make that a challenge. Um, yeah. When I did Spies in the Night, the, the player character has just that little tiny bit of momentum on them, and I think that's what makes the game challenging. Um, and Quantum Tunnel doesn't demand quite as much precision as Spies in the Night, so it feels a little more wild and chaotic to me, like you're <laughs> like you're on ice. Mm-hmm. But once you get the feel for it um, after playing for a bit, that that kind of makes it fun to me. Yeah, and um, it, it makes it a lot I, more feel more naturalistic too in the movement because I've played um, some homebrew games where there's there's no momentum and it feels very stiff and and sudden yeah. like you're walking and then you just stop immediately some some games you need to right. do that kind of thing for like super precision games but um games that have momentum just feel a little bit more evolved mm-hmm. yeah definitely yeah and it just adds adds a little bit of something to it a little bit of polish a little bit of a challenge and um that's that's what that's what i was one of the one of the things i was trying to accomplish with this yeah. um Another thing that I was trying to do is I wanted to see how many objects I could get moving on the screen at once with the standard Atari Basic kernel. Oh. Um, and in this game, we've got. Oh, still there? So the nanobot. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, can you hear me? Yep, you're back. Okay. Hello. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, the phone's okay. breaking down too. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know. I don't know if you if you heard that last bit, but I was just trying to see how many objects I could get moving on the screen with the standard Atari kernel. Yep. Um, and so potentially in this one, you you've got you've got scrolling play field, but you could also have on screen two moving sprites for the nanobots that you're dodging, up to three green particles on screen, up to three yellow particles on screen. Um, those are controlled by the missiles, and the player character is the ball. So there's a lot of action on screen and that's just coming from pushing the standard Atari basic kernel a little bit. Yeah, that's a- actually amazing that you're able to get all these things with just the standard kernel because it looks like something that wouldn't come up from Atari basic with how much stuff is going on on the screen. Um, and uh, when did the the flicker of the um, things that you collect happen? And, and why did you uh, decide to do that? Yeah, so the, the reason the, the, um, the particles flicker is that, first of all, it's just if I were only using standard squares like the, the missiles and the ball, it would look a little bit boring. Um, so that was part of it is that I, I just wanted to give a little bit of um, a little bit of animation to the characters, even though they're just using the missiles and the, and the ball. And um, and then, yeah, that's that's really it is I, I wanted to, to use the missile in the ball somehow so that I could get all those things moving on there and have them be part of the gameplay too. And the things that uh, like the blue blocks that um, move by and destroy you um, are those are those play field? Yes, that's play field. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And and it's moving fast enough that you're like, is it play field? So it, it doesn't matter if the granularity of the movement too much. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't affect it too much as far as I as far as I can tell. Yeah, so super fun game. Uh, your creative creativity knows no bounds. Um, mm-hmm. I'm very looking forward to Spies in the Night too, uh, to collect that to get that. Um, I think it was offered at another convention first right now, um, in limited yeah, quantities. Uh, yeah. Yeah, down at uh, Free Play Florida, um, Neo Games did uh, a box release, a limited box release. I think I think um, he did uh, maybe forty copies or so, maybe a, maybe a little bit more. Right. So, looking forward to the unlimited release through Atari Age. And um, anything you'd like to uh, add before we let you go, or uh, people to thank? Um, yeah, I'll give a, give a shout out to my wife, Kathleen. She plays my games first and she always gives me really good feedback on what works and what doesn't work and just generally supportive of my hobby. Um, Brian Mathern for being a fan and featuring my games in his um, Homebrew Companion series, which is a really cool series of books on all the homebrews that are coming out. Um, Al Yaruso, of course, and Corey Kramer, the artist. 
and um, and you guys on the um, the Zero Page Homebrew Show for for playing my games on the show and sharing your thoughts on what you like and what can be made better, and that's just really invaluable for for developers to get that kind of feedback and and improve the game. Well, thank you so much. Uh, big fan of your work, and uh, can't wait to see what you come up with next. So, thank you so much for coming on. Atari Age Day, and uh, we will talk with you online. Great. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> there we go. Made it work. Yeah. Glad we were able to get that to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we're running a little bit late now. Not too much. Not too bad. Uh, but we will move on to the next game, which is uh, Millie and Molly on the 7800 by M.K. Smith, Matt Smith. Excellent. So, so I'll pass those. this to you. Mm -hmm. And pop this one out. Thank you. I'll switch over to the 7800 and get that working if you want to get Matt on the line. warm up the 7800 like literally you have to warm up the 7800 yeah. <laughs> which is so funny I'll go full screen if you can yeah, i will okay matt we'll bring you on in a second okay there we go oh gotta put our ear pieces back in oh yeah hear much hopefully they're still good this. still have power i'll get this out of the box in preparation Oh, Matt's got a good camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's bring you on. Hello, Matt. How are you doing? I'm good, James. How are you, Tanya, and yourself? Very hey. good. That's good. Yep. Your, your camera looks very professional. Uh, I, I love yeah. it. I, I, as I said last time, I need to do something about to... Uh, bring that down to a much better resolution <laughs> <laughs> no it's looking really good. Oh, good um so we have millie and molly here um so let's just talk about the box first uh fleming dupont i don't recognize that name uh, well, he did the original Commodore 64 box. So William Tharp did our um, Atari version. So I was mm. pretty keen, uh, pretty much all the way through, to use a lot of the um, original artwork because I thought it's actually quite iconic, I, I think, um, and it's well known for yeah. the game on the 64. So Al was very kind uh to contact uh, the guys at bitmap soft and um so yeah so we were sitting on that for quite a while and then um william came on and uh, put everything together for us and did a great job very very nice so what first attracted you to um the original game i don't know i it's quite funny i don't often play puzzle games and they're not really something that I'm <laughs> I really enjoyed but when I first saw this one I thought oh, this, this actually looks all right and um, so I started playing and I thought oh I really like this imagine what this would be like on the 7800 so um, yeah ah, yeah so that's where it all sort of and started so and how does a c64 graphics and sound translate to the 7800 uh, well, obviously the sounds a little bit uh, a little bit different with the pokey, but um, um, graphics wise, it's actually it's quite funny. There was a forum post the other day, someone asking about converting sixty four games to Atari stuff. It's actually really easy. Um, it actually converts quite well. It's probably the um, you know a, a sprite is uh, twenty four pixels wide and twenty one pixels high on the sixty four and that converts reasonably well into uh, 12 pixel wide on the on the 20 uh, sorry on the 7800 and um, unfortunately that's three zones high on the uh, 7800 but anyway 
it uh, works quite well. So, <laughs> and the colouring, you know, you can get a reasonable level of similar colouring. So, yeah. A little, uh, bit, little bit more flexibility on the 7800 than the C64, I think. A couple more colors. I guess it depends on how many colors uh, with the graphics mode that you're using, right? Yeah. Uh, look, you know, it's um, there's it always feels like there's more colors until you, uh, you know, unless you go 160B and uh, you can use it the up to 12 on that one. But, um, you know, when you're trying to fit three colors into one palette and you've got eight eight palettes <laughs> it can be a little bit tricky to not repeat them so much but, um and probably the the level two or the stage uh the theme two that we have in the product was probably the hardest one to convert over uh even though the graphics are probably the simplest one but um because there just wasn't enough ability to uh use the the amount of colors i wanted to use so um but everything okay. else was, was very good, so, yeah. Let me just get the game going here, switch over the audio. So I'm just getting back to the music, Bobby Clark. Um, we ended up contacting the original um, designer of the music, and um, Bobby had a chat to him, and um, I think there was maybe some offer there to to look at um, bringing over those sounds, um, whichever tracker they use for that. But Bobby, in the end, went with what he did. He he likes doing all this stuff manually, which is amazing. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, <laughs> wow. but he did a really good uh, a really good job bringing over all the different sounds within the product. So oh, that's great. Um, So you also support uh, a number of different styles of inputs. So you're taking advantage of uh, the SNES to Atari and Mega 7800 adapters. Yeah. So how was that difficult to do, or well, is the code readily available now? Originally, um, Mike, when we were doing Petsky Robots, put together the SNES stuff, and then I... Because I, you know, I was still waiting for this to be released, so I didn't update that allowed you to use the SNES controller. And then, when the the Mega 7800 came along, Mike didn't update to that. But what he did was actually incorporate everything into a much simpler process. Because it was all sort of you had to read it all separately. But you know, pretty much you just plug it in, and it'll work out which controller it's using. And you just say, well, I want to use button one, two, or three, or um, you know, I wanted to go left and right, and, and so it doesn't matter which controls plugged in. Um, so that was a great, oh, nice. that was a really good update because you know, from our point of view, you don't have to then code for you know, you're using a joystick or you're using the SNES controller. You just well, you're using a controller basically. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so that was actually that was one of the benefits of it uh, sitting there for a little while was uh, we got to <laughs> add in a few. Uh, a few features that Mike had been adding to uh, 7800 Basic over the over the journey. So uh, yeah, so that oh. uh, I was quite quite pleased with that actually, because that does add a little bit more flexibility, and the more people who who are going to buy a Mega Mega 7800 particularly will uh, get some yeah. you know get some uh, good use out of that. And obviously, um, as Al said earlier, the SNES adapters available now so you know i'm sure more developers will be using that as well because you know sometimes you need eight buttons to, for, for certain games don't yep. you so <laughs> i i'd be interested in the first game that absolutely requires uh, all those buttons without um uh, uh, allowing the two button 7800 joystick i i would think they'd have to sh almost ship as a bundle uh, and then mm. you'd have to opt out. Um, yeah, yeah, but that's great that that Mike has included that built in and made it like really, really easy. Oh, look, at it. yeah, he's added a lot of. Um, he added the mouse control when I was working on Arkanoid, and and then you know when we did Petsky, he added the snares, <laughs> and uh, he's you know there's all sorts of controllers he's actually got in there now, so it's it's quite a, a flexible uh, 
flexible system now and you know because of the way he's got it sorted now it's you know it's so easy so you just got to say you know which one <laughs> so, what am i referring to here without worrying about where it's coming from so i guess it's like button one button two button three yeah and it's like oh i don't care where i get that button one from it's still button one yeah yeah and look, yeah. you know there's so many things he's added in the last couple of, like even in the last couple of months so it would have been nice to actually go through because he's added us this, this sprite four process which reduces the number of the amount of um ram it's using i guess in the in the dl and you can get more sprites um so it would have been actually mm. good for this game because this game's fully sprited um and yeah. you know, I think that would have probably occasionally you get a little bit of a slowdown when both players are on the screen and you got the star moving around and that sort of thing. But um, you know, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't impact it too much. But I think that would have helped. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. So so as, as you said before, this game is a port of a, a, a Commodore 64 game from 2020 um, under the same name. So were you able to? use any of the source code or graphics we already covered the sound from the c64 game or did you build it up from scratch and use the c64 as a reference point yeah just that was mainly a reference i took the graphics because you know that's quite easy to bring over it was quite funny when i first contacted carlton hanley about uh, he's the original developer about oh look i've got this version going and he actually thought i decompiled his code <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> that's a good compliment. That's, that's yeah, a great yeah. compliment. So it was, that was a that was a little <laughs> bit of a compliment, but um, it was uh, you know you just sit there and play it, and you take it frame by frame, and you just try and match that. You know, I'm I'm a very unoriginal person to be to be honest. So to be able to sit there and look at something, and you know, I quite enjoy working at how something works, and you know, trying to you know replicate that in a way that. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's so, and then it was just a matter of you to play through the levels, and you know, early doors. It's actually quite. I think we got up to about level thirty to thirty-five, and then then you start to hit some really tough levels. So <laughs> you're spending like two hours trying to solve yeah. one level, and well, I, I need to get. There. Oh. So once we got up to up into the sixties, I think I. I think I went in and hacked the version so I could open the levels up to get to the rest of them because some of them were like some of them are so tough towards the end. Um, level forty is yeah. the best the best level I think, and it's the solution is just so simple and you go, how in the hell did I not see <laughs> see that? <laughs> Um, yeah, you t it, especially when you get high in the levels, you start to overcomplicate mm. the thought process, and you're like, oh. That's it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So actually, um, Tanya, just before you, oh, when you got onto your next level mm -hmm. at some stage, press the rewind button. Oh yeah. Yes. Just so, so do a couple moves. We added a little. We added a mess something, or something to that right at like at the very last minute. So I added <laughs> added a little thing. I was oh. I was reading an interview um, Carlton Hanley had done about the game and. And he said, "Oh, I would have loved that to go black and white when it was doing the rewind." So, uh, but, oh, actually, so that we'll looks hear. that would be quite interesting. Um, nice. Yeah, so, that's very and, very nice. Yeah. So, is it just a palette change, a palette color change? Uh, just change it to. The... Well, I, again, I've got to thank Mike for this because I seven hundred basic. When you use when you've got the basic pause functionality built in there, uh, it actually uh -huh. there's a um, there's a setting in one of the control things for the. The graphics and you know you just change a bit and it goes black and white for you so i thought i was gonna have to change oh, nice. the whole all the palettes and all of this sort of stuff and no just <laughs> just one line of code and off it went so um yeah i just thought that it right, actually cause... really adds to the you know the the, yeah. the thing of it sitting there rewinding and looking like an old video <laughs> and and that sort of thing so yeah because Else. You rewind a, a VCR tape and it, it kind of drops color and gets mm. a little like you have the, the rewind lines on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's... So El was sort of when I said to him, Oh he goes, Oh, well, I think we should get that in. That will look really good. So oh well, let me have a look and then I remembered that the pause <laughs> thing went black and white, so I had a look in the source code and oh there we are. That's how you do it. <laughs> 
Nice. Mm. Yeah. So I was very, um, very happy. So, so how many levels uh, uh, total in this game? There's levels. So yep. the um, all the all the guys that helped me out. There's a, there's an actual there's another version which had the bone. There was a bonus disc version that the 64 they brought out for the 64 that had 10 extra levels in it and i've actually done a version for the guys that has the 10 extra levels um but that won't oh nice that won't be released <laughs> so <laughs> uh yeah so just a little Bonus thank you one. to them to uh to do that so oh nice um so being as this game is a port of the C64, um, with the blessing of the, all the developers on that system, yep. have you have you found any uh, C64 players that have played this version on the C64 come over to check out the 7800 version? Or do you think that's like a completely separate group of gamers that just don't even know it exists or care? I'm sure that there's actually been a couple of people on the forum say, oh, I, I played this on the 64 and and I'll grab it and, you know, I'll, I want to maybe keep going. So I said, well, you know, if you get to that point, let me know and I'll give you the level code for where you're up to so they can continue on if they want to. So, but yeah, there's there'll be a percentage of people there who who probably have seen this before and maybe played it. So, yeah. Yeah. But no, no feedback yet. Not, not directly. Um, no. So, you know, like unless they're comparing at PRG, and contrasting because, because we haven't ever, ever released the full ROM. Um, we've, we've got a, yep. a, a, the first 20 levels up in, um, J S seven, eight hundred and out on, uh, what's one of those, one of those, um, I can't remember the name of that service. So, um, yeah, so the, the oh, full version's yeah. not out there. Um, and, yep. you know, obviously people at PRG have only been able to buy that till today. So, um, yeah. Yep. So we'll see. Oh, now you have to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She's making use of the rewind feature now. It's getting yes, harder. you're going to need yeah. to now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what level are you on? 18. Oh, there you go. Hmm. Um, so let's see. Oh, a little over our time, but that's okay. The next couple are um, not, they're all written statements, so that's okay. <laughs> um, so I can fly through those. Um, so what, uh, anything else you'd like to uh, add or people to thank um, or anything that you want to say about the game? Um, oh, there's a couple of Easter eggs in there. So I actually, the, the interesting thing was, I was going, we were going to do Robots Rumble and I started playing with 320 mode and mm. I've been working on, which I need to get back to, which uh, La Abbey de Mortz, I've been working on a version of that with Quicks and nice. um, uh, with Tick, sorry. And, but I just haven't got yeah. back to that. I've just been, work's just <laughs> been so busy. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, now I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't matter. But um, yeah, look, it's just you know, it's just everyone in the forum, Mike and you know Robert and Steve do yeah. all the testing, and Al, you know, all all his great work, and you know, bringing William on to do to to do the game, and um, you know, do the artwork yeah. and the manual, which I really love. It's a you know, it's a really um, really brilliant continuation of that theme. So um, and obviously. Carlton and Chun, who designed all the levels, I've sort of been in contact with both of those a lot recently. So they've been really with, happy with how uh, the games come out and, um, you know, seeing the banner yeah. at PRGE and that sort of thing. So, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I bet, yeah. So I was, you know, it was, it was great that they were open to having a version um, uh, come on an, onto another platform. So, um, yeah, and, and to yeah. finally have it here is great and uh i hope anyone who purchases it will enjoy the game like uh like many of us have yeah and and are you an enthusiast of the c64 or did you just see a video of it uh, uh no being i'm an enthusiast i'm not sure you, you probably can't see in the background but i've got it i've got Pretty about blurry oh, i've got about <laughs> four big 20s i've got a couple ah. two commodore 64s and amiga um I've got about four twenty six hundreds. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've Lots. got the Commodore monitor there. So yeah, we grew up in Australia. Probably early doors, everyone had Atari twenty six hundred 
and then from then on it was you know commodore was very big in australia so you know okay we all started on commodores at school and um yeah that was it was almost my first time i ever used a commodore we're in grade seven at school and you had to sit there and uh, you know, the first person to read this chapter and explain to it gets to go on the computer, so I skipped every second page <laughs> so I could have a go on it. <laughs> so, yep, you hacked, hacked the system. Yeah, there you but go. I don't, I've got them all there. It's just having time to get them out and um, play with them, to yeah. be honest. You know, it'd be nice to actually go back and do something on the 64. And I, I try and spend oh, yeah. a bit more time doing assembly stuff now. So I've been playing with... Right. Um, yeah, Mike's added a few new features into the 7800 basic around compression and, um, you know, I've worked at how to plot sprites out of RAM and, um, you know, and a few other, some scrolling with, with a whole stack of sprites and stuff. So, you know, nothing's really to come out of that. <laughs> it's just it's just interesting to try and yeah. work out how these things might... Uh, might work. I think compression is going to be a big one because that's that is for the 64. That is a big part of the community of you know uncompressing all your right. graphics and that sort of stuff. So I think that'll be a you know I think that'll be really big on the 7800 once people start using it. So mm. Mm. and we do have a question from the chat. Um, are the puzzles the original from the C64? Are they all exactly the same? They are. Yes. So it's. Um, I actually did think about doing a version once you completed it or adding a version where it would maybe reverse them because I think even reversing right. them would actually give you a different a different look because you got to do everything in in you know you're doing it in a different way really even though yeah. it's the, a mirror but I thought that might have been interesting but um yeah look yeah, I cuz you know, um, I'm I think the levels are so good as they are. I it didn't need me adding <laughs> adding anything that would have lived <laughs> up to any any sort of um, standard that uh, yeah. Sun had put together there. So um, yeah, and and a hundred levels is quite a few. Yes. I know Pit Cat did that did do that reversing. Mm. Uh, Pit Cat for the twenty six hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Did did do the mirror, and it's like, oh, this is. It does feel a little bit like a different game. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it does. So no, it's a. It's such a yeah. good game. You know, the whole rewinding thing is um, just so interesting, yeah. and how that all works, and you know, and you know, the, I think all of that just that just adds it up to a really classic sort of game. So. Yeah, mm. and the graphics are great, and the star flying in is beautiful, and just the simple animations are great too. Two frame animations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you get up to level twenty one there, and um, you know that's when you get both Millie and Molly on screen, and then you've got to start. I think the next right. four or five levels, you work through how they might work together, and and those sort of things. Are probably the only thing I would have been nice to maybe have more levels where those two are actually on the screen together. Um, cause you right. know, there's probably, I think there's maybe 20 levels all up where they're, they're together. But, um, you know, I think, mm. I think there was a little bit of talk that, you know, maybe that another version of the game would be, you played with both the whole time. So, you know, I thought that might've been interesting. So yeah, that would have been, well, there's always room for a sequel, mm. I'd say. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So. I'm not sure yeah. I'll put my hand up to do that one, but uh, <laughs> not that this. Moving didn't on take to too long. bigger and better things. What's that? Yeah. Moving on to other things yeah. instead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, it's just so hard, yeah. you know, with kids and that sort of thing. Just finding time. Yeah. Work's been quite busy with, you know, I've been doing a bit of coding there, and you sort of sit there and go, oh, I don't think I really want to do any coding tonight, and my back's killing me at the moment. <laughs> so um, yeah understandable mm. yeah so thank you uh so much for coming on and uh congratulations on the re on the uh release thank you of millie and molly mm -hmm. and uh it's great to see you and talk with you and it was great to meet, meet you, in, you person. in person multiple times in, over here well yeah, over in here in Port melbourne of portland places. and australia yes. yeah yeah. So, yeah it was crazy yeah well hopefully uh i'll get the prg again at some stage so. I hope so. And we'll definitely be coming to Australia again mm. at some point. All right. Hey, Melbourne. Mm. 
hundred percent. Still never been. You've yeah, been to twice. Australia twice. So I know. Half yeah, days, no good. Quite jealous. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excellent. We know somebody we there. We Yay. can go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, excellent. All okay. right. Thanks, Greg. Thank you uh, for uh, putting the show on and everything. Again, everything you guys do for the community, it's very much appreciated. So. Oh, thank you so much. And enjoy I, it. And it'd be nothing without you guys, of course. <laughs> nothing to show. We'd just be here just staring at a blank screen. Yeah, so. Well, it's a, <laughs> it's a mutual <laughs> arrangement, isn't it, really? That's right. <laughs> you don't have Very one without parasitic. the other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, thanks thanks again, Matt, and uh, we'll Take talk care. with you soon. Enjoy. Okay. See you, everybody. Bye. 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 Always fun. So, the next uh, game we're going to be playing is Death Merchant mm. by Steve Engelhart, Atarius Maximus. And we have a written um, interview. Yeah, and I'll grab Million Molly from you there. Yeah, you made it to level 20. Yeah. Did you beat level 20? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Good job. Yeah. Um, I remember playing this on the show. and I. Oh, yeah. It's and such I think... a fun game. <laughs> I don't remember where we got to last We got time. pretty far, I think. I think it did. does get harder. Um, the oh, first yeah. few really just introduce you to the uh, mechanics, and then it gets hard pretty fast. Yeah. So, let's see. Oh, very few left. Death Merchant. Getting down. Yeah, we it are. It's getting late, so, yep. oh my goodness. Cats are behaving themselves, thankfully. Shockingly. Yeah, Shockingly. it is. Shockingly. Uh, okay. Interview, webcam, there we go. Let's get the right thing on the screen. And we'll unbox Death Merchant. Hi, kitty. And, uh, I don't have any information on who did the cover right there, but we will find out very shortly. It is a beautiful color cover. It looks mm -hmm. like David Exton's work. Mm. Um, I can almost guarantee that, but I'm not sure. There's the back of the box. I am correct. Excellent. Thank you, Al. Yeah, uh, David. I love David Axton's work. He always does very foreboding, bleak <laughs> landscapes of just doom, doom, doom. And it's just like, yeah, right up my alley. <laughs> Beautiful. Some guy living in the wastelands with his knife out. With his knife out, ready yeah. Ready to attack anybody that dare oppose him. Okay, let's get this out. <laughs> if you could pop that out mm -hmm. and uh, take a look at the manual here. Is it going to stand? Yeah, there we go. Here's the manual. Uh, beautiful yellow. There's it. There's. Thank you. Here's the cartridge. Death Merchant. There we go. Lovely hue of yellows and grays <laughs> to give that uh, wasteland apocalyptic. Yeah, wasteland look. Slightly to it all. fallouty. Uh, yes green CRT display, whatever you want to call that. Yeah, and you're trying to survive in this wasteland in the game. Nice. Very reminiscent of um, doors on BBSs uh, where you would log in and you would uh, play a couple rounds for the day and then you'd have to log back in the next day to play some more. <laughs> I, I uh, hosted a BBS back in the early 90s. Mm. Um, so let's pop this in. Switch over. So I'll get the interview up available here. Have you played this game? Uh, I don't know. It's a resource I, I've based seen... game. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. You buy knives and, and you buy yep. things in certain towns. And you go towns from city to city. Yes, yes, yes. sell things in other towns. It took yep. me a second. I, I did, yes. I okay. had played this game. I played this with you. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. There we go. I found him. 
Okay. Excellent. If you want to pick up the controller, press here. fire. Welcome to the apocalypse. Yep. Press fire to begin your journey. So you can buy stuff and you don't really know what prices are high or what are low at the moment, right? Whether they're a good deal or not, you have to kind of go to multiple towns and try to figure that out. New Vegas, yeah. Yeah, they have New Vegas, Lost Angeles, New Salem, Concord, Diamond City, and Bedford Falls. And certain cities have certain abilities um, that you can only rest in certain towns. And um, so you do have 25 knives, and those are needed to yes, fight. Yes, you always need more. So that's, that's like ammo, almost. Mm -hmm. Okay, first, a big thank you to James for his ongoing support of Homebrew Community and for hosting these shows. It's so much fun to tune in and see the ZPH crew play all of the new games. Your time and dedication is very much appreciated. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Death Merchant was a unique, somewhat unusual 7800 project. It's not a typical arcade style game. Yeah, it does stand out as a very different game for the 7800. Very text based. Um, and wasn't so much inspired by any of my Atari memories, but my, my PC gaming days, where I was attending college in the late 90s and early. Uh, late 80s and early 90s, I was heavily into using BBSs and played a lot of BBS door games. Exactly, I called it. Um, I was also a sysop. I was too. Uh, it was inspired by a freeware DOS game called Dope Wars. Very, very well known um, a door game. As well as numerous BBS door games like Drug Lord that many BBSs of the era hosted. Because of the game being a text based simulation, it wasn't necessarily well suited to the 7800 platform, but I took that as a part of the fun and challenge of creating it. I also wanted to add additional gameplay elements not included in the original game. Could I adapt that game to my favorite home console and make it fun to play? Well, I did my best. Carl G says, I really like the font. Yeah, it's. There were games on the C64 that I played that had this font. I think they were um, D&D-based games that had this font, if I remember correctly. Um, well, what makes the game any fun to play? Well, it has a lot of randomness, so luck is a big factor, but there's a definite strategy that can be learned to maximize your score. Getting as much money as possible early as possible is important because you have to pay back debt. So you have $37,000 that you have to pay back. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the goal of the game. Um, fighting gangs early and paying off the lender early makes a big difference. Having at least $9,500 at all times is important if you don't have a backpack yet. Learning pr general price fluctuations is, is helpful. So it's a lot to keep, to keep track of, like all those things on the right hand side, you kind of have to keep track of. Uh, Trade Wars 2002, hmm, that font does look a bit familiar. Yeah, it really, really looks familiar. That kind of pokey, spiky font. It really, really reminds me of, uh, I want to say a D&D game that I played on the C64. Um, there are risks to fighting, but it's a great way to quickly make some cash to be able to make purchases before traveling again. Taking risks and buying often is important. Planning which city to go to next can be important depending on your current stamina, health, and debt. I try to incorporate as many strategic elements as I could into what's inherently a game of chance, and I'm pretty proud of the result. I started working on this game in early 2017 and continued with it off and on until the first part of 2023. I received a lot of support with technical questions from Mike Sarna, who has always, always been a great help in my projects. David Exton was incredibly supportive and helpful in creating some or awesome original artwork, as well as designing the art, text, layout, and general flow of the instruction manual, providing feedback for the game itself. Albert, of course, was key in the process as well in supporting the physical release of the game. Many thanks also goes to everyone who comments and provides feedback on the forums. Programming the game was challenging because of the large number of math calculations happening with almost every action taken, that's taken in the game. Coding routinely made my head spin. It seemed like every change I made during the development caused an issue somewhere else in the game. Ugh. And play testing was also challenging due to the random nature of the game and the time it takes to do a playthrough with a single game session. Yeah, with a, rand a very random game, it's like, well, what were all the conditions? It's like, wow, look at the screen. There are a million conditions. And prices are all over the board. You have different stats every time you yeah. play. <laughs> like, playtesting is 
It's very, it would be very challenging. Um, it was also fairly challenging to keep this under 48k. Many compromises were made to reach that goal. Text takes up a lot of ROM space. Ah. It, I'd say the initial reaction to the game was somewhat muted, although not certainly not negative. When I first posted the for, when I posted the first development binary, I suspect suspect because it was an unusual choice of game for a platform best known for arcade style games. For me, it was about the challenge and satisfaction of making it happen, and any positive feedback I got along the way was a big bonus. I was pretty shocked to see it was nominated for a homebrew award, honestly, but I was certainly honored to be considered. I wish I could have participated live, but I'm traveling this weekend. If I have any opportunity on Sunday, I may join in for a while and say hi. Thanks to everyone again, and I hope you enjoy the game. As a side note, I run thewallbbs.com. It's spelled exactly how it sounds. No spaces, of course. Uh, from my home, anyone is welcome to log in from the webpage via Telnet SSH and try out the door game Drug Lord, which is type of game that served as an inspiration for Death Merchant. So um, it's the wall, T H E W A L L B B S dot com. And you're able to hop on his virtual BBS and uh, participate in some of the games that he hosts. Uh, he lists Drug Lord. I don't know if he has any others. Yep. Um, let's see. Carl G says, I may see if I can use it to make a port of Penalt for the 7800. Ooh, very nice. Uh, the font you mean? Oh, Carl G. Uh, yeah. It would also look great if somebody did a wizardry port. Uh -huh. I thought Atarius Maximus made this font as he posted a bunch of 7800 fonts as he made in September 20, 2022 Atari age thread. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't say he did make the font or did make the font. It kind of implies David Exton did, but it might be just referring to the manual. Not quite sure on that. So let's see, what time is it now? 6.32. Um, so we're pretty far behind. So you think yeah. we've given a... I good, think so. I oh, we mean, have this, played this on the show as we well. We have played this on the show. I haven't fought anyone yet. I've oh. just been traveling. <laughs> You're lucky because it's random. I just keep earning money. Because there is random fight. <laughs> there I is just random keep fighting. earning money. I Woo! can't tell that. <laughs> um, so you have 13000 and you have 5000 in the bank. Yeah. So you can yeah, pay off fine. a bit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I think we've we've demonstrated it's a really yeah. fun game. It it's is. Really and fun so if you're strategic kind of game into strategy, um, this is an excellent game. It, it, it's all about just buying stuff low and selling it high. It's almost like you know yep. you're playing managing, the stock market. <laughs> managing your resources. Managing resources. Knowing when fighting, to fight. having enough knives. Yeah. When to run that. away. All yeah. that good when stuff. When to go and get some help. Yes. And sleep and all that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a good game. Yep. Yeah. So the next one, uh, next game is Plum Luck DX mm. um, from Blake Smith, Smitty B. And this is another written uh, interview. There it is. So there I'll pop is. this so one out. Pass them back. And I'll unbox this one. Thank you for helping box these back up. Making it a little less crazy than normal when we do well, this. Well, yeah, sometimes there's just a you know the chaos mess and... of boxes and stuff. Ooh, oh my god! No, no, it's so much chaos. It ends up being a lot of work afterwards, just yeah. getting them back in. So it's easy enough to do that. Do it as you go. It is a good font. Yeah, it is. It very, is a good font. Very readable. So that's that's important when you're making a pretty much text-based game. So there's Plum Luck DX. Well, it doesn't say DX on here, but it is Plum Luck. It's a race against slime. You always have to have the terrible puns. <laughs> it's not a game without terrible, terrible puns. You gotta appreciate those. Bad puns are the best puns. Yep. Okay, let's get some of this out. Are you gonna stand? No? No. No, not this one. It's <laughs> random. If you could Thank you. separate this out while I show off the manual. Kefman 2D says, I heard a rumor that Phaser Cat was working on a 7800 COBOL compiler. <laughs> what? What? Uh, <laughs> 20 plus Atari game. Sounds like a good Christmas unboxing task. Well, yeah, so pretty much that's what we're doing. <laughs> uh, opening, getting Christmas early. 
Oh, nice. It's kind of like a... Oh, if you want a good plumber, there it is. There's the phone number. 555-0476. <laughs> Follow up with Blake about stuck drain. Oh, so good. So it's like very nice full scap paper, lined paper. <laughs> like a notebook. There's the 7800. all oh, the drawn graphics. It looks fantastic. joystick and a, nice. a European uh, controller there. That's very nice. Plum bobs, top tips. Mm -hmm. Oh, plum bob. <laughs> Another pun. <laughs> there we go. Gameplay controls. Plum bobs, top tips. Expert levels, scoring. Plum bob was here. There we go. And uh, so, cover art and packaging, William Thorup. Oh, oh, you're in this one. Tanya O'Brien. Oh, nice. Nice. Very nice. Thank you so much for the shout out. Okay, let's pop it in. I will read the interview. Oh, let's not start it up yet. Let's switch over so you can see the full startup. Grab the joystick. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a different Atari H2. Nice. Well, Atari 2. Panic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Panic, green slime. What is coming out of that drain? Oh, that looks fantastic. It does. Oh. Very dynamic. Oh, look at that. The high scores ah, are ah. underwater or under slime. Lum luck. Love it. Okay. So this is a puzzle action game. Uh, pick a level. Oh, is that what I'm doing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, just what? press a button to start the level. Um, to talk about this version of Plum Luck, aka Plum Luck DX, I needed to start with the original I did in 2017. When I started to learn the code to code for the 7800, it was the first time in years I was programming for fun, and I wanted to ease into it with something I knew how to do on other systems. In the end, I went with a 3D maze over Pipe Mania clone idea. Well, I was succeeded in making that and I started to expand it w into Spire of the Ancients, I ran into problems I didn't know how to fix and decided to take a breather while working on Plum Luck as a side project. Uh, I really didn't plan on anything on the original Plum Luck, as it was just a loose connection of ideas with no real understanding of whether they'd work on the 7800. I implemented as much as I knew how at the time and left a lot on the cutting room floor. At the time, the only emulator available to me was Pro System, and there was no multi-carts being sold, so I had no way of testing this on real hardware until after I'd finished the game and the Metius 16-in-1 cart was released. When I did play it on real hardware, it became apparent that the grey and green colour scheme I borrowed from Windows version of Pipe Mania made it hard to see what was happening due to the low contrast. Uh, just making sure. Okay, uh... That got me thinking of how I can improve things if I had a second go, starting with the graphics, but maybe included a few of the dropped ideas. I clearly needed to learn more, so I moved on to things and kept the idea of an improved version in the back of my mind. I used my next project, Plink, to experiment with using extra RAM on the cartridge as VRAM. This was critical to making Plumlock DX work, as the original uses all 256 indices for tiles, and I needed to double that for high-resolution 320B graphics, double it again for twice as many frames of animation, and then add a bit more on top of that for the crossover tiles I had to cut from the original version. By using RAM for graphics, I could hold all, hold all the tile animations in ROM, then swap in the appropriate graphic for the tile currently filling in with slime. The rest of the tiles only needed to show as empty or full so they could easily fit plenty of room for the background text and other elements. I was able to recycle most of the gameplay logic from the original version, which allowed me to focus on improvements, at least until I could start to optimize it all. 
I was considering the idea of levels with multiple streams of slime to manage, but held, held off on adding it. I was having problems with timing related crashes. By the time I was able to resolve those, it would have been too much to work to change things. The scrolling background was something I had in mind before I settled on the overall look of the game, as I had much I love as much as I love it, I think it was responsible for a lot of crashing throughout the game's development. Scrolling the graphics in RAM is a simple process, but with 320B it's not a small amount of data to shift, and in order to make the shadowing look right, I needed to copy certain parts of the shifted background to other tiles. To minimize tearing, of which there's still a little bit if you look closely, uh, most of that process takes place in the vertical blanking period, leaving relatively little time for the actual game logic to complete each frame. As well as the background, I also have to build the cursor graphics each frame. To avoid weird restrictions on what colors can be next to each other, I have to disable transparency. So, to have these things show behind the cursor, I have to fake it. I find which tile is behind the cursor, copy those graphics to a new spot in RAM, use a bitwise AND against it with a mask to shut, cut out the shape of the cursor, then use a bitwise OR, I paste the cursor graphics on top. By changing the mask and the cursor graphic, I can animate it independently of the graphics below. When, start, when things started to shape, take shape, I started put, tried pushing my luck with using RAM to change the solid shadows to dithered ones, add an overlay to the stack of tiles, and give the stack smoothing scrolling. In the end, I just had to throw away a month's work as I was hitting too many of the 7800's limits. As always, the audio was the last thing to come together, and to save some time before putting out a new build, I threw together some Atari Vox sound using Voxalot, the tool I made to work with the Atari Vox directly from the PC. In the end, I found that I liked a placeholder sounds enough that I worked on improving them until I was happy with the results, then based the TIA effects what I could get out of the Atari Vox. I think the idea of using Atari Fox as, for sound effects had been floated by a few people, but as far as I can think, Plum Luck is the first game to really do that in a meaningful way, and I would like to know if anybody is aware of other examples. Ooh, what is this plugged into? Maybe I can turn on the Atari Vox sound. Because there's lots of I can't different... See. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's lots of different control schemes for all these games, so... See if this kicks in. Um, in my in my opinion, using the Atari Vox is a definite way to play. As besides, nicer sounds frees up the TIA for music. Oh, it may not recognize that it. It might go. Oh, it's not plugged in when we started it up. Um, I left option for TIA sound as a toggle with a difficulty switch. Partly for debugging, partly to allow sound when the save key is used instead of Atari Box. Ooh, let me just look that up. Let's see if we can turn it on. With the select switches, or with the A B switches. Does it say anything in here about it? Oh. B to the left. Oh, it should already be on B. Yeah. Okay, so it may have done some auto sensing beforehand, so it may not kick in. Um, as for music, I always imagined the Sorcerer's Apprentice is the perfect theme for Plum Luck, with how it fits how it perfectly represents a growing panic and time pressure of avoiding the flood. I couldn't rely just on one bit of music for the entire game, so my second choice was the third movement from Summer from the Four Seasons. Movement of Summer from the Four Seasons. Musically represents a summer thunderstorm and feels suitably chaotic for the title screen showing Plum Bob desperately trying to shut off a valve while everything floods around him. The third bit of music breaks the streak as I couldn't think of another suitably wet tune. Uh, but I wanted to include something while the reservoir depletes instead of the simple ticking I had before. I was considering Bolero as its short repetitions would fit nicely, but went with In the Hall of the Mountain King, a classic for video games. As I went to listen to Bolero to refresh my memory, but Mountain King comes first on my playlist and it just felt right. Apparently Bolero still isn't in the public domain in the US, so that probably saved everyone a headache or two. The downside to it all is that I spent so long fixing, uh, bug fixing things with the music in place, I now had a brief moment of panic when I listened to Summer. 
I'm pleased with how everything turned out, uh, though there were still some overly ambitious ideas that didn't make it. I envisioned Plum Bob in more of a Dr. Mario role, or Mario, uh, standing to the side during the gameplay and passing tiles from the pile over to the player. Oh, that would have been cool. Um, he'd then animate based on what's happening and the scoreboard would become a speech bubble. Oh, wow. I didn't want to drop Plum Bob entirely, so he became the subject of the title screen. Regarding the title screen, a title screen, I was hoping to have something more polished with everything scrolling into place at slightly different speeds to establish more perspective than what I had at the end. But I could have spent another year working just that, on just that. <laughs> when it came to things, getting things published, I talked about the sort of style I wanted for the box art with Al, and he introduced me to William Thorpe. I sent him a few rough sketches of ideas and some cover art from UK Comics. I thought it looked a little bit like Andy Cap. Oh, it does. Yep. Um, uh, for aiming for, and he got just uh, got it right the first time. Of course, there were various tweaks um, from the first draft to the final product, but you'd have to put them side by side to see the difference. Similarly, when it came to the manual, he knew just exactly what to do. Besides Al editing of the text, there wasn't much change from the first draft. After becoming so familiar with the game itself, from having worked on it for so many years, seeing all the little details that didn't come from me, it felt so rewarding because I got to experience the excitement of something new in this little world I had created. Uh, the reception of the game. Everything that's been said about Plum Luck I'm aware of has been positive, so I'm happy about that. Downside of is that it making getting feedback difficult because it's obviously not a perfect game, and without criticism, I had to think really hard about putting myself in the shoes of somebody who was seeing it for the first time. As much as I've tested it and had others test it, I'm still paranoid that some game-breaking bug will be discovered as soon as people start playing it. That's always the scare, right? Um, having some people play early versions, I was surprised how unfamiliar they were with these sorts of games and struggled to get through the first couple levels. I think that meant they couldn't properly criticize it because they had nothing to compare it to. It's a gameplay style that's been relegated to hacking minigames and 2000 shooters, so I hope Plum Luck does a little bit to revive the concept and show that it could be still good as a standalone release. I'm sure that by the time this is all read out, all the usual suspects would have been thanked many times, and they should be. You know who you are, and you know what you did. <laughs> Especially Mr. Yeruso. Firstly, I'd like to thank my partner Richard for everything and for playtesting while I observed. If there are any bugs left, I'll generously share the responsibility. The first bite is, the, uh, is with the eye, and William Thorpe has done a great job of giving Plum Luck a deliciously slimy first taste with the box art and manual. And uh, to think that I had to ask uh, that he add a credit for himself, Tisk. Uh, I'd also like to thank Tom Hafner for developing the 26 adapter and Atari Vox specific firmware for it. Without that, the ability to control the Atari Vox from my PC, the speech and sound effects wouldn't be anywhere near as good as they could be. And lastly, I'd like to uh, thank the Rabble on the Atari Age Discord homebrew chat for their expertise in quad orchestration, rice rendering, and biblically accurate ducks. There we go. I'm dead. And JFD62780 says, almost looks 16 bitty, especially with the fades. Yeah, the backgrounds, the scrolling parallax background. I don't know if it's parallax, but it's a scrolling background. Uh, is really, really cool. And it changes colors and shapes. It's awesome. Woohoo, Rebel! Um, William has definitely been busy this release cycle. That is for sure. Oh, and Smitty B's in the chat. Hello, hello. Okay. Hey. Um, I think it's time to move on. Yeah, I'm not doing very well at this <laughs> game. Oh, yeah, we're catching up a little bit. Next one is Immunity with Mike Losh, also known as H S O H L Soul, um, with a 2600 game. So, let's... Soft, you stop playing. Okay. <laughs> Addicted. She loves puzzle games. I so do. Right I, I pump pl Lux a game I haven't played a lot of too, so no. it's pretty fun. Hi. I got a little black cat. Oh, you're when so lucky. When did you show up here? Where's the insert? Are you taking the inserts? Yes. Oh, I'm like, I am. <laughs> keep handing them back to you without inserts. No, I have them. <laughs> um, if you want to get um, Mike Losh on the chat oh he says here? something well that was a little while ago oh okay but he online and standing by we... red five standing by yep <laughs> well red five was luke skywalker so oh <laughs> it's 
funny you remember that. Red something. Well, I knew... Red leader, red font, I don't know. I knew I um, a guy who used that handle Oh, I online. see. Red five. Red five, so that's that's the only reason I know that that's his handle. <laughs> that's the sound. Because there's a lot of reds in the, in the show. If you could... Uh, oh, I'll grab it. While you're doing that. Oh, we've Yay. got them hooked up, so we'll we'll make you go live in a second there. Let me just get the box out so we're ready to do the unboxing. We've got a pile of plastic sleeves there. Yes, we do. Okay, let's get that set up. Oh, nope, I can stand on some. Okay. Al is no doubt watching me put these... Um, <laughs> Scrutinizing you? Well, putting putting these cards back in the boxes and just cringing, because sometimes <laughs> I've been putting them in, back in wrong. So. Oh, as long as they fit. That's they fun. fit. I'm not destroying anything. But. Good. <laughs> Hello, Mike. How oh, are you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Holding up? Oh, pretty good. We're we're nearing the end. We're powering <laughs> yes. through it. Great. Uh, thank you for coming on today. Yeah, you've got great stamina. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we regularly do two to three hour shows twice a week. Eight so is this, pretty long, though. Eight is pretty <laughs> long. Is pretty, this pretty is long. this is probably our longest type of show because we do the so. awards and those are right. like three hours. Right. No, no, those are longer than no, that, no. aren't they? I've looked back. They're really? About three, okay. three to four hours. I always thought they were long, longer, but they, yeah. Yeah, it's a lot going on in the awards. Mm. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's talk uh, about the box. And uh, his name has been mentioned many, many times That's already. Great. He was very busy this uh, release season. It's uh, William Thorpe, yep. Bit Jag. Yep. Um, so tell us a little bit about the back and forth with the box and how you got uh, hooked up with him. Yeah, it, again, Al's the matchmaker, like he's been for many of these projects, right? But um, I had I had been thinking about um, this game since I, you know, kicked off the development. Um, I had mock-ups I made with some AI art uh, tool uh, back in, like, uh, 2020, 2021. And um, uh, it was the original concept I had was, uh, yeah, couch compliant. Uh, the original concept I had was... Um, <laughs> very much like the classic initial releases of the Atari. Um, right. You know, like the solid color border and the, and the watercolor style painting and the, you know, the graphics uh, text up top and so forth. Um, I think Al was um, uh, unbeknownst to me, you know, he was negotiating to join Atari and I think he was a little bit concerned about trade dress. So um, we, we want a little different style, but it still has that, that uh, watercolor type uh, painting. And this uh, manual yeah. of the concept I had, you know, I had two ideas. One was either a medical textbook or the other was like a lab notebook. And, and I started mocking up and mm -hmm. the lab notebook just um, uh, really seemed to like a cool way to do things. And, and, and uh, William just took my very rough sketches. I, I, I kind of did in, in uh, LibreOffice, uh, like a PowerPoint type clone. I, you know, I right. very, very crude uh, sketches and he, and he made them, they still kept the flavor of a hand-drawn, you know, sketch, but he did it in a much cute, cuter, attractive way. And um, and then there's yeah. lots of screenshots and and uh, you know text to explain how the game works. But kind of the the concept was there's a person working on on trying to understand uh, this you know viral infection that's that's uh, causing a pandemic. And in the process of doing the research to fight the pandemic, they they think about turning things into a game, which is you know just a um, slightly fictionalized version of what I did, you know, as I was um, dealing, you know, everybody's <laughs> dealing with COVID and, and um, you know, I just thought it would be good to uh, base a game on, on fighting uh, the infection. Yes, th uh, thank you, uh, James Tanya, for uh, featuring this <laughs> multiple times. Uh, you, you know, you showed it off uh, at different stages of development and, uh, you yes. know, kept, kept me um, excited and enthusiastic about, you know, fleshing it out more fully and, and getting it finished and oh, over great. the finish line. So, um, and then of course, working with Al was, was very helpful to, to pull all the, you know, um, things together to get a nice, this nice packaging, uh, manual, uh, labels for the, the cartridge, you know, everything was done extremely well by, by William. Uh, there were, he, he came up with this, uh, this art concept very quickly, but, um, you know, we, we tweaked it a little bit here and there, but 
Yeah, so he was very flexible at taking, you know, taking the suggestions, and you know, even though there were minor changes, he he went through and and did it, and and uh, yeah, yeah, it so. turned out amazing. Like his his artwork is is absolutely stunning, and there's some uh, yellow things on the cover that look familiar. Like they look like the Atari logo, like reminiscent of the Atari logo. Yeah, but there's also um, like. Uh, I think depictions of antibodies that that have that similar kind of shape. So um, it was kind That's of a mixing of those those <laughs> ideas that kind of were uh, similar, uh, incidentally. So um, did you learn a lot about uh, uh, viral infections making <laughs> this game? Did did you have to do a ton of research into it? I, I mean, I knew a little bit from school um, and and so forth. I mean, I I, I studied hard sciences, uh, physics, and and um, uh, later on electrical and computer engineering. But you know, I took some biology in high school and and uh, just you know, I'm I'm interested in science in general. So I, I you know. Um, and then when the pandemic happened, then everybody was trying to learn a lot more about, you know, uh, how to <laughs> yeah. stay healthy, you know, how to, how to, you know, um, try to avoid getting infected and, and so forth. So, um, you know, this, this just was kind of in the air at the time. Right. And, um, <laughs> literally, yeah, <Yep. laughs> no pun intended. Um, nostalgia says this may, may be the most biologically themed game for a retro console since, microsurgeon yeah uh, i'd have to agree with that it is a very very unique theme right oh my god dead already <laughs> yeah i mean uh, she did up, a speed run like to death space, space uh, type themes like you know uh space invaders uh, asteroids um you know defender you know those, those kind of things but um this did seem to be a uh, kind of subgenre that wasn't very well um covered before so you know um, mm -hmm. thinking about thinking about the pandemic thinking about you know types of games and, and play mechanics that would be interested I was like you know, how could I how could I sort of do a fighting game but not fighting between you know people like street fighters or martial artists but you know mi microbiology yeah. um, you know agents so yeah it's extremely unique uh, gameplay um, Carl G says, I love that it's completely original concept and novel gameplay, but works well. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so Immunity is a extremely ambitious game, I, I think, in my mind, because of its complexity and how things uh, all work together. And I believe it's your second 2600 yeah, game that you made? Yeah, it was the second one I did. I did a version of 2048, the sliding tile. Yeah. You know, so this had many different kinds of elements that that uh, first game did not have. So did you ever feel overwhelmed during development of how much is, is going on in the game and, and keeping track of it? Because uh, as a player, you do really have to read the manual for this game. It is <laughs> it, There's a lot happening on the screen and things are going up while other things are going down and you have to get certain things. Yeah. I The... Um... The mechanics, I mean, I had lots of ideas, you know, some of which I had to toss out in order to just to make make what happens um, fit. Um, the, probably the more challenging aspects of putting this together were the um, just fitting it into the, you know, the ROM bank switching. It's a, a 16K uh, game, so I've got, you know, four four chunks. I had to uh, figure out how to, you know, what, what code to run in which of the, of the banks, you know, what things had to be together, uh, what things could be uh, spread apart. Um, so that that right. was the the main challenge and puzzle, and at times, it, yeah, it, it, it was very frustrating. But I, I thought I could figure it out, and I, you know, even if I had to rewrite it five times in some parts. JFD six two seven eight zero, quite a name. Uh, the flatline sound effects are uh, eerie. They said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so sound, I guess sound that's a good compliment um, to me. You know, I I. Um, I was a, a amateur musician in high school and college. You know, I was in bands uh, yeah. with with friends and my brother, and um, so it was. That I've always been interested in that, and um, trying to make the twenty six hundred, you know, sound fairly good um, with effects and music was was something I enjoyed doing too. Yeah, people often um, don't think about the sound and music consciously i mean it's always there but it's a 
it's a super important element in the gameplay in terms of, you know, satisfaction playing the game because some things just don't feel the same with a different sound effect or no sound effect yeah. or an off-timed sound effect. Yeah, if I if I had some more um, either memory or, or a little bit more, you know, computer power to work with, I, I would have liked to, have, like, change the uh, pulse rate. You know, you hear that heartbeat in the background and the, and the breathing. If I could have sped up the right. breathing as, as somebody was like, um, you know, their health was getting lower, um, you know, some of right. those kind of things I think would have added even another dimension to it. But I, I was happy with how the sound and, and music came out. Um, so this is a question about uh, feedback, but maybe from a different angle. Um, it, Immunity is an extremely timely game uh, developed during the pandemic. Right. Um, but doesn't uh, confine itself to having knowledge of uh, current world events because it is a general, you know, yeah, it could, a could, virus fighting right. game. It apply to anything at any time, right? Sure. Yeah, um, I, I didn't did want you it experience... to be too, too tied to anyone. You know, I mean, it's not supposed to be about COVID nineteen. It's it's just a yeah. general. You know, your body's fighting these these viruses. Here's here's kind of what's going on. So did did you get any uh, blowback from any conspiracy theorists commenting on your game or like mm -hmm. people going off on tangents and people and you had to say okay well, that's not what this game's about? Not re no, not really. I mean, there's there's maybe a little sly joke here or there, but not you know nothing that really <laughs> offended me or anything. You know, um, yeah, I, I know there's all kinds of attitudes about it, and I don't want to you know. Get, Step get on anybody's, that, yeah. you know, uh, especially if you know they've got strong feelings about things one way or the other. Um, you know, this, yeah, this is just a, you know, again, a game about kind of the some of the biochemistry and, and things that that happen in the immune system. So it's, you know, it's simplified, yeah. it's idealized, but it's, you know, that's that's all it is. Yeah, and I am, and this is for my first time unboxing this, so I'm sure you avoided any kind of references to like um current current affairs in this and what's happening yeah i mean it, i mean it's sort of modeled on on a little bit but very very loosely you know so yeah don't don't be afraid yeah. of any of that and and just enjoy the game <laughs> if uh, you're willing to give it a try there's uh there's two you know styles of play there's uh i think you know tanya has already uh, demonstrated both uh this is the yeah. in, in, intraceller so it's like inside the cell um the cell membrane is sort of at the top, and you're you're controlling a ribosome that, that swims back and shoots back and forth there. Uh, the other the other yep. mode is um, kind of between the cells that you're trying to fling antibodies to. Um, if you cover up a virus with antibodies fully, then you can gobble it up with a what's called a macrophage, and that's how the body you know uh, removes um, you know these these kind of in infections. So. Um, you know, it's a, it switches between the shooter and then this kind of this collecting, uh, fighting um, sort of mode. Yeah, and it makes a uh, very good use of, you know, the uh, Atari 2600's ability to draw something different on each line. Um, so I'm guessing you had to take that into, into consideration. Yeah. Because there's so much on the screen at the same time. Yeah. To be able to put in the right configuration and put everything on its own plane. Yeah. So to it, speak. If, um, if I ever publish the source code someday, you know, there's there's areas that I call different strata of the screen. So the drawing kernel has to do yeah. different things in these different vertical strata. And um, yeah, that's you know, we're trying to trying to work with the um, limitations, but also the capabilities of the system. Part yeah. of the fun and. Um, yeah, that's all right. Working within the limitations of the 2600. Um, so, yeah, really, really involved game. So people who like really complex games where you have to really think about a lot of stuff going on in the screen at the same time or anybody's into uh, biology or, you know, body based games. People are talking about... Um, you know, body kind of horror games, like there's shooters like Life Force or anything like that, Salamander, on mm -hmm. other systems. This kind of, kind of, not really falls in that line, but mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And I, I had to make sure that Tanya was in the room when we are playing this game, because she has a little bit more knowledge of biology. <laughs> she took it in school. Um, 
than I do. So it was very helpful. <laughs> my general, my general uh, memories of immunology. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and, well, I don't remember a lot. That's okay. <laughs> there is a two player mode too. Um, it, it was a little, well, it wasn't exactly an afterthought because I was thinking about different ways to incorporate a second player, you know, um, throughout the development process, but I didn't actively work on that until, um, kind of the last year of the, what, three years that took to put this together. Um, right. So, you know, there's, there's that element too. And my, I like to thank my uh, family. I've I've got uh, several children, and I think at one point or another, I had at least three different ones, maybe four, of of my children uh, help play tests, and especially the two player. Oh, mode. great! See, they're good for something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the children. Yeah. They, they, they team, <laughs> put yeah, them to they work for me. They, you know, they play games with you know, uh, <laughs> you know, the modern. Uh, phones and, and PCs and stuff and, and yeah. you know there's a zillion times more transistors involved in that but uh, you know. <laughs> I remember somebody talking about like raising their kids and and only giving them like er, like 2600 to start with <laughs> and then and then they give them an NES and they take them through the eras of gaming so they can appreciate the history of gaming like you can obviously when they go through it accelerated right every year it's like five years of, of actual history <laughs> Catch them Exa up. Exactly, and you can show them the best games of that era, and then okay, you, okay, you beat those. Now we can move on to the SNES and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I thought that was yeah. an interesting idea. Obviously, it would fall apart as soon as they met any friends that had a, a modern PS5 or something. It's like, oh no, it's <laughs> my my experiments destroyed. <laughs> but let's go play Pac Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So are are your kids like oh god this old system twenty six hundred what did what are these big squares? Yeah no they they um they they kind of humored me well um you know it was it was maybe a little <laughs> surprising at first when I had the real you know twenty six hundred out and and hooked up to a an actual CRT TV and and so forth but you know they once you start playing it's just you're you're focused on trying to you know do what you can do on the. Yeah on the screen so um yeah they were cool it's, all about, it's it. all about gameplay it i find the graphics just disappear no matter if i'm playing a 2600 game or a modern pc game with 4k graphics it's just like no it all just disappears and you're concentrated on the gameplay yeah. so yeah. if the gameplay is there it really doesn't matter when the game was made or how the good the graphics or sound are yeah it's about the immersiveness and the difficulty and the balance and yeah, just, yeah that's just, that's just, why just, I still love twenty six hundred homebrew. Yeah, I mean, the, in, in, in any level, of these games can can kind of grab you and and uh, yeah, keep your attention. So yeah, uh, on this on this stage, uh, the little guy that comes out and gobbles up the the thing is surprisingly close to another type of character, character that yeah I've recognized before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even the same color, but no, it's it's different. It's just funny. Yeah, and the, the different well, colors it... you, saw, you saw are supposed to represent the um, different types of tissue in the human body. So this is supposed to represent like a, a blood vessel. So you can kind of see the, right. the, uh, the viruses are kind of being pushed along the blood flow. Moving around. Yeah, yeah getting great pump, attention pump to detail the body. in this game. But there, yeah, there's there's other other kinds of tissues and the and things move differently in those different tissues just to you know add some variety. Yeah, yeah everything's very floaty, as if it was inside you know a cell or inside blood, and it uh, really adds to that uh, realism and something that's not terribly difficult to add into a twenty six hundred. It's like okay, move it this way, move it yeah, this way. Yeah. Well, so great job on that. Well, th yeah, thanks for saying that. I, I you know I was trying to capture some of that feel um so anything else you'd like to add or people to thank or anything else we missed that you'll want to uh talk about nope again just thanks al for um putting this together quickly and when you were extremely busy and i didn't even know half of what was going on behind the scenes and um you know uh, again will, will thorpe <laughs> yeah did a great job um you know, with, with all the all the elements of the packaging manual, again, um, very very flexible. He humored all my little little you know suggestions on hey, can we? Oh, I forgot to mention I thought we should change this and you know those kind of things. And, yeah. and my family putting up with when I'm distracted, trying to you know get through a, a, a you know really tricky part of the the programming and debugging. 
Um, so those those are yeah, those are the main ones. And and thanks both of you for again the, the encouragement and uh, and the feedback. And I did you know take some of your suggestions and try to incorporate them back into the uh, final product here. Oh, great! Because you know we love playing the games, but we also love you know helping out the developers in any way we can by playing the games and you know suggesting what uh, we think is like oh maybe you could do this now we don't yeah. want to step on and, toes and, you know you yeah it, in this channel you obviously have many <laughs> many different games come through you experience them all and and uh, so you do have yeah. that you know unique perspective more than than most people do that um, yeah, you, you know, kind of what works well, what doesn't work well, and, and yeah, I think that's very valuable for us to kind of get that uh, point of view from you. So thanks very much for yeah for that part. Well, thank you for making these games, and um, and yeah. thank you for coming on, and congratulations on the on uh, the release of your new game. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy. You know, it, it definitely was something I you know hope to do in my life, and and. Uh, now that I've, yeah. you know, Al sold a few copies and, um, you know, I can <laughs> say I'm a, I'm a Atari developer now. Excellent. I, I'm still working towards that goal <laughs> and hope, hope to I, achieve I, what you have one day. I think you're really close. I, I think you, you know, you, you're, <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely have a lot of the so. knowledge you need to put that together. Maybe not the yeah, time. I just need to. Yeah, I just need to dedicate the time. So. I'll get there. I'll yeah, get there. Yeah, carve out some time, and, and we'll uh, we'll all be right. thrilled to see what you have. Yeah, I hope so. So thanks, thanks so much, Mike, uh, for coming on, and and great to see you via video. Great. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Excellent. Okay. So we're down to the last two. Oh my goodness! Last two games. Okay. There they are. All right. Um, so it's Karim Yuho. Yes. Um, uh, from Mirsad Seralika, mm -hmm. uh, also known as Kiki PDPH in the forums. So let me pop this game out and hand it to you. Our last twenty six hundred game. And this one I was very intimately involved with. Yes. Did a lot of play testing on mm. this one. Um, cause I thought the concept, um, I really, really liked the concept because it was so different of like the slowest character possible that you've ever seen in a 2600 mm -hmm. game. It's like, okay, you're playing a snail. Okay. How can you play a game where you move really, really, really <laughs> slow? It but definitely it can be done. For interesting gameplay. Yeah. So, so Kara Muho. Um, and this is uh, our written interview. He's unable to be here today, unfortunately. But he has submitted his interview. Oh, thank Yay! you so much for following Dre Snipe One and Jeffrey Mays before you. Sometimes we're, we're doing the interview and I don't, I'm don't. i not able to catch it. Yeah. There have been quite a few people resubscribing. Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you. And following, I guess. Yeah. They like the content. Excellent. And Want to be alerted yeah, next you know, time. Our viewership has stayed pretty steady this whole time, too, which is great. Yeah, it is great. People following along. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stay up. And yes. Yeah. It stayed up. Okay. If you want to get the cartridge out for me. Mm -hmm. And this one has a poster with all these beautiful, colorful characters from the game. Gorgeous, gorgeous poster there. Let's see if I can lay that down. Can I lay down? Yes, there we go. And uh, Atari Boy 2600 did all the artwork nice. for this release. Nice. Absolutely beautiful. There's uh, the manual cover. I love the colors. Really bright and beautiful colors. Let's take a look. Very simple manual. It is. That's it. That's that's it's just the inside and the outside. And using the actual graphics from the game because they're really gorgeous graphics. Um, he's a really good graphic. Uh, Mirsad's an amazing graphic artist. There's the back of that. Oh, look. It's me. Hey. From Canada. I like how he says from Brazil, from Canada. I know. It's nice. It's nice. There's so much collaboration between countries. Yeah, it is great. It is a worldwide community. It is. 
go. Oh, this black cat. Hi. And we'll take a there look at the go. cartridge. There it is. More of the artwork. Look, it's in four. Four of them. There we go. So let's pop it in. Have you played this game? I believe so. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. I always find games, the names don't always stick with me. The moment I start playing it, I know. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm like, oh, game. this game. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my God. Uh-oh. Careful. Don't break it. No, I won't. Don't oh, force it. No, oh, no, not the scissors. <laughs> attack this cartridge. So you all just need to know the two cats have been with us this whole time. Chilling. They're just chilling. Some Atari's just slightly outside of the room. He brought he brought down for us. Um oh. Oh, went back he brought down a little bunny from his pile of cat toys. Just to say, oh here you go. Thank you for the treats. So Oh no, somebody triggered treat time. Oh treat time. Are we doing another? Uh, Do we have time? We, uh, uh, maybe if we get through this quick, we may have to delay it. Okay, we'll do treat time after, after Caramujo. Yeah, Caramujo. Mujo, Mujo. Spanish. Yes, and and they're or meowing. Portuguese. Oh, he's yeah. all, they heard it as as quiet as it was. <laughs> through our earpieces. Uh, uh, the, the little black kitten started meowing. Yeah. Oh, no, man. no, we'll do it after Caramujo. We will do it. Who triggered it? It is RC70. RC70, thank you. The cats, thank you. I'll yes. Look. Oh my goodness. Oh my cats. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm. Or we might be doing it now while James uh, doing fixes. 7800? 7, uh oh. Troubles. I blame my systems. What is going on? I can see why they're transitioning <laughs> to the non-spring cases. Because you have, like, these give trouble on, I like, know. old commercial releases, too. Oh, yeah. Because if the pins don't line up exactly perfectly it doesn't from go your in. system. Okay. Can I angle this so it doesn't pop? Ah! Go in! What is wrong with my pins? Oh my goodness. I need infinite points to summon treats, says Atari H. <laughs> yeah. Infinite points. I don't know if I can assign that someone to someone. We have infinite points. Do we? Yeah. Well we can we can do treats whenever we want, so that's true. We don't even have to trigger. No. <laughs> okay. Go in. No. No. Try on the seventy eight hundred. There we go. It okay. went in. It we went in. Okay. My 2600 is a little off, I think. I mostly play from the Harmony cart that never leaves. <laughs> yeah, it just stays stuck in there. Okay, kittens. All right. Switch we will do Karamuho. Yep. And then we will treat these cats. We will. Yeah. Give them a final treat. A final treat. A final treat of the, ev of oh, the evening. No. Of the evening. Where are you going after this final treat? <laughs> okay, now we can switch it over. Okay, go for it. Look at that little snail go. Have I completed this game without cheating? No. No? <laughs> I've gone pretty far, but it is... Or did I? No, I think I cheated. <laughs> that was one of the beta testers on this. Uh... So, we have uh, the written interview from Mirsad about Kira Mijo. So, individuals who contributed to the video game. Uh, Mirsad, a uh, programmer and conceptual creator of the game. Geraldo no. Hijo, consultant, game tester, advisor, and contributor to the ideas of the programmer. Additionally, part of the team of creators for this game could include James O'Brien, who made contributions to the game and tested it. <laughs> um, as for the publisher, Atari Age and the involvement of John Calciano. Calciano? Cal... Yeah. In, uh, in cover artwork and Tony Morse in additional layout has been significant. 
The game Karamuho came about spontaneously. I wanted to make a joke, so I created a snail that, true to its nature, is very slow. However, besides finding it amusing at, a at the time, I also liked the result, <laughs> as I tried to find a similarly uh... slow protagonist through basic Google searches, but I couldn't find one. Uh, yeah, I have never seen a video game... Yeah, with a slow protagonist. With a, the slow protagonist is this. It makes it very unique. And I love... It's very cute. Unique video games. Yeah, it's very, Where it's very like, cute. oh my god, I've never seen that mechanic yeah. before, and I've never seen... So it's about timing. This game is all about it timing. It is timing. About avoiding the enemies and also the falling timing. Well, it's like... Ugh. So you have to avoid two things. Well, you have to avoid one and then... Ooh, ooh. Yeah. And they go at different... Uh, there, go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's the bee I'm trying to... Uh, th that was the pivotal moment that led to the idea that something probably doesn't exist that should be created. However, on the other hand, I had the thought that video games may not tolerate slowness well, and by adding accelerations one could achieve increased challenge. I wondered if such a game would be interesting to people. The only way to find out is create a short video in which the snail crawled slowly and jumped across platforms. I then asked people through Atari Age game-related groups if they would be interested in such a video game. And uh, Mirsad does that a lot. He really gets a lot of feedback from people um, bef while he's developing a game, even from starting from screenshots. Um, like Jetland Skies that we've been playing recently, his mm -hmm. new newer, newest game. Um, he Right from the beginning, he was like, look at this screenshot. Does it look cool? I have a plane. What can I do with this plane? <laughs> nope, none of that. No cord chewing. Um, people's opinions were divided. Some were thrilled with the idea, while others uh, believe that the main character, the snail, should be sped up or have some abilities for fast movement. No. Then, then you, James, reached out through private messages, offering support for this project, and at that moment I became completely convinced that this game should be made. <laughs> <laughs> when I started created, creating the game, I immediately encountered the challenge of finding a game concept that would suit a snail as the main character. It wasn't a setback, and I told myself, this kind of game cannot be made because a snail can't do anything. And that's why there's no oh, games like no. that. <laughs> uh. um, then I simply added a B as an obstacle. Psst. Hey, no. Stop no, 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 no. Stop chewing cords, Ken. Ken. He's like, I like the braided ones. They're so tasty. Oh, he loves chewing braided cords. Uh, however, that wasn't sufficient, so I came up with the idea of moving platforms. To add complexity to the story, I used a simple solution. The snail must pick up a key to unlock the moving platform that will take it to the next level. I'm not so sure about the game's name, but as a Bosnian, it sounded very resonant to me. During the game development, Geraldo tested and provided advice, and you, James, received a link to follow the progress and try out the new updates. In this way, you also became involved and contributed to the advice in building the game. The game features a total of 10 levels plus a winning screen. In two levels, you control a butterfly instead of a snail. No. Oh. He's so slow. <laughs> slow. <laughs> uh, throughout the game, you must navigate through various graphical landscapes, from a starry sky to levels with mushrooms and trees, and a waterfall level to the final level with flowers. The last level contains secrets, and you must find a hidden way to complete it, thus finishing the video game. Many people have written to me expressing their enthusiasm for the game. They sent me pictures of how they ordered custom cartridges for themselves through Atari Age, which likely led Al from Atari Age to contact me with the desire to publish the game on the Atari Age store. Later, Al from Atari Age sent me a proposal for the car cartridge box design. The illustration is very beautiful, and it was drawn by John Cassano. I would like to express my gratitude primarily to you, James, who contacted me to provide support in creating this game and continued to support throughout its development. I also want to thank Geraldo, my right-hand man, who offered valuable advice and dedicated his time to testing the game. Of course, I'm grateful to the Atari Age team and all the people who supported through Facebook comments and continue to play this game today. As mentioned, the game is likely conceptually unique, and for those of you who want a uniquely different game in your collection, this game is for you. Besides that, the game is also very entertaining and has appealed to many people. Yeah, it is... 
Very unique. One of the most unique games I've ever seen. It's almost like a puzzle game. It's like a timing, timing platformer puzzle. puzzle game. Yeah. And, oh, what? Oh, no, it's no, so no. hard. As it's coming on far end. I yeah, know. Yeah. And really, when I, <laughs> I first saw it, the thing that really stood out to me was the graphics. Oh, yeah. They are just... Beautiful. Yeah. So beautiful. They've yeah. got shadows. Like, it's just lines of graphics, but... Like the shadows of the grass and the darker shadows, and then it becomes lighter shadows as it, mm -hmm. as the shadow tapers off, and the animations of the snail and the, the, the great gradient of the blue on the shell is just absolutely stunning, stunning graphics. <laughs> Eight Bit Poet says he even falls slow. He does. <laughs> Gravity affects him very differently than the oh, rest of the yeah, world. He, yeah, he lives life. Really Slow. slowly. Very slow. You know, he takes his time. Now, you can jump there. Like, if you're on the right plane, if you jump up and then down... Oh, well, that would work, land too. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Really nice stars, skies, and platforms as nostalgic. Yes. Very, very beautiful. Okay. And we haven't played this game extensively on the show. So if you want um, extended gameplay, definitely do a search back on Zero Page and uh, Karamuho mm -hmm. for more gameplay. So let's just take a look at how we are for timing. Uh, we we're going to do the cats, right? The cat treats? The cats, but we have okay. one more person after this. And, okay. Um, are we uh, chatting? Work. Yes. Chatting? With them? Uh, yes. Okay. He's, it is a lot. Can I run out really quickly? And really quickly. Like you can start getting the uh, card. And ready. the last. Will we um, do the cats now or after at the very end? I can't. I, I need to find my schedule. Okay. I don't know where it is. Um, but I think it's at 720, which we're already at 724. So, might want to do the last interview first because never know how much time people actually have if they're right up against a... Oh, there they are. <laughs> Very hidden. So let me just make sure the timing. 7.20, yeah. We're already six minutes in, into, into it, so I'm going to set up the 5200, which is the last system that we will play. Let me just switch over. We can take a look at the Karamuho graphics instead of nothing. Caramel whole box. There we go. And I will switch it over to our last system here. And we don't get to play a lot of 5200 games because not a lot of 5200 games are made, but today we have the rare treat of being able to play one. Let's click all of this. How is everybody holding up? Yeah, we're in Vancouver, BC. So a six hour drive down to Portland for the for PRGE, um, approximately, depending on traffic. Um, so it's not that bad of a trip for us. And that's why we're able to make it to PRGE every year because we can uh, just drive down, which is really, really nice. Very, very lucky in that way. All right. All right. All right. Fifty two hundred, yeah. Let's plug this in first before I Oh, that's quite a bit of uh the behemoth <laughs> the fifty two hundred. And I'll get out my nice custom joystick here. So we are gonna go to the next interview because we're mm -hmm. so that is with Pavel yep. uh Kalowins Kalowinski. Uh, P I R X. Yep. Okay. Yep. Do you so, want me to connect? Yeah, if you want to cue. Pavel? Pavel? Yep. Oh, this is not the right choice, dude. There it is. Getting it all uh, together there? Almost there. Just grabbing the right joystick. I got it now. 
got a lot of joysticks in here. Oh my god, I have to rearrange my room soon. My office, the studios, whatever you want to call it. Because um, <laughs> things are getting out of hand. Like, things are here, things are there, and I want to put all my joysticks, my controllers, in one spot. So they're more easily accessible. There we go. I think we're good, except I need to plug in the output of this. And so we've got S video. There we go. ready yet I'm guessing you tried to call uh yes okay maybe he's forgotten no I think he's still here so oh oh try again yeah they're right there okay good I haven't used my 5200 in a while, so fingers crossed that <laughs> <laughs> it's all still working. Hey! Hey, excellent. So we'll get Pavel on the screen momentarily. There we go. Hello, Pavel. Can you go full screen? Hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello. How are you doing today? That's a tough question. Let's uh, let's try a next one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one's too hard, too nuanced. <laughs> so let's uh, take a look at the box for your game, um, which not only is being released for over here, over here. the 5200, the one we have, but is also being released for the 8-bit and has been yeah. released for the 8-bit. Yes. Um, yes. So... Let's take a look at the box art here, and it is absolutely gorgeous. So who did the box art for your 5200 release of Scorch? Oh, that's uh, that's uh, usual suspect. Uh, you will find, uh, find uh, uh, there. Um, it's really gorgeous. Um, yeah, I, yes. I'm sorry for not remembering uh, first and last name, uh, but uh, yeah, that's... Uh, John Kelsano, Atari John. Boy 2600, there oh, we go. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. So how much uh, back and forth did you have with John None. about the artwork? None. <laughs> None. None. He hit it out of the park first None time. At, none at all. Um, I think that, uh, that, uh, yeah, it was a, during the time when uh, Albert was pretty busy, I guess, and, uh, and, uh, we were trying to, to make our own, uh, own, own box, uh, that one that went to, to the, um, ex, uh, you know, 8-bit release, but, uh, Right. Unfortunately, life happened. We couldn't do this, uh, but John John uh, took a little bit of hints from from what we were trying to do and made a beautiful, perfect, uh, perfect uh, manual and box art. So, yeah, I I, I can. Uh, there was no back and forth because it was perfect from uh, from the get-go <laughs> yeah it looks great has all the explanations of all the different weapons uh oh hey we're even in there yay <laughs> thank you so much zph yeah we uh we loved playing this game on the show i i loved playing scorched earth back in the day as as i'm sure you did oh um, yeah but we'll get into that and uh, you even have overlays, which is a nice bonus for. Oh boy! Game. Oh boy! <laughs> there we go. I'm looking Excellent. forward for for 
for receiving and for playing it on, on the real stuff. I bought 5200 especially for this. I even fixed uh, nice. one controller <laughs> to do this. Oh, wow. Yep, well, if you're going to play a 5200, you definitely have to fix a controller to play it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're out of luck. Okay, I think we are good. That looks good. So let's pop it in and check out what you have made. Okay. There we go. Scorch Super System 2023 Atari Age. Awesome. So here is the controls. Have you played this game? I don't think I have, okay. which is why I don't know if uh, it's I'm like, just looking at the controls. <laughs> it's like it's like Worms. You've played Worms. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Worms was based off of this. <laughs> okay, fair yes. enough. Yeah. Just making sure I know what the controls are and the numbers. Uh, I can try questions. to lead you on because this this is just just to play a little bit it's uh, not that difficult just move your joystick up and down select something and mm -hmm. press press uh, fire and uh, and you can start playing okay. <laughs> excellent so this is your um, option screen here um, you press fire to proceed yeah uh, these are the defaults you can probably go for it with the defaults here um, so Scorch is an homage to a classic and beloved multiplayer game, uh, Scorched Earth, um, that I personally played a ton in the 90s on PC. Can, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your history with the game? Yeah, yeah, that uh, history is uh, uh, quite... Uh, how to call it, how to tell it? Uh, it's uh, like a little bit gut-wrenching because... Uh, Basically, what happened, uh, we had this friend uh, in our student house that had 386 with four megs of RAM and we were playing Scorch on his computer. I've got, uh, I had ST, Mega STE at that time, no, no Scorch for, for me in my room, but uh, we were playing this bloody Scorch instead of going to uh, to to <laughs> school and uh, yeah. well it did not did not and well for our uh, not only mine but also Petsush uh, uh, another author it did not el uh, end well for our uh, academic uh, uh, careers oh. so so oh, yeah no that that yeah, I I was addicted this... to scorched earth and and also rogue as well playing it on uh, uh, PC, both yeah. of those, just sucked all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so, uh, so th this is, uh, the, the, it, uh, ju just, just to tell you, t everything, and, uh, well, not in this school, but, uh, but in uh, another places and school of life, so we are perfectly fine, but uh, in some <laughs> some some meaning, we wanted to recreate this uh, uh, this uh, careless feeling of uh, young uh, guys uh, playing scorched earth instead of uh, learning or chasing uh, young women. So that, that's 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 it. <laughs> you have to rescue. Oh, he's good. Uh, yeah, it. Uh, yeah, you can't neglect life <laughs> in lieu of uh, just playing video games at, at all times. So you simultaneously developed the 5200 and 8-bit versions, pretty much on par. Because I, I obviously I keep track of all the Atari releases. So every time you do an update, I update the list, and I notice every time you. You updated the 5200, you updated the 8-bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Skill, can you talk a little bit about um, the differences between the 5200 and 8-bit and maybe any concessions that you oh, had yeah. to make for the 5200? Oh, yeah. so, so it was uh, uh, it was not that easy on the beginning. So so we were, we were doing um, Atari 8-bit version first for first 20 years. We were working on Atari version because you know we started in year 2000, so 
this is uh, oh, uh, wow. th th that was pretty long time in uh, in making. <laughs> Uh, Probably a record or close to a record. That's maybe, sure. <laughs> maybe. Of course, we are not doing it all the time. It's uh, you know, with very long, uh, very long um, uh, pauses in between. But uh, uh, we were working on Atari 8-bit version, and and then uh, uh, one of of uh, creators, uh, uh, Miker, Miker, we we call him uh, the. Uh, person that that uh, did uh, absolutely gorgeous uh, sound of sound effects and music for the game uh, um, he had this idea that we could maybe we could port it to 5200 you know that's uh, more or less uh, identical machine um, with uh, maybe with a little bit of uh, difference here and there so why not to try so we started to try, and and it took us about half a year to uh, to cut the, the cut size of the of the game into 32 kilobytes of uh, memory that that we had available in um, um, Atari 5200 uh, cartridge and 60 kilobytes of RAM. So. Um, uh, we never planned to 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 make this uh, this game so so dense and code so so optimized and data so optimized with uh, that that many elements like uh, uh, tens of uh, weapons and and different texts and uh, um, and different tactics and AI and such and such. Right, all all, all takes uh, memory. And um, mm. um, and that that half a year was like like playing a, a giant game of uh, giant uh, puzzle or 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 <laughs> maybe some kind of uh, uh, of uh, 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 yeah like puzzle game of of uh, uh, optimizing things, moving around and uh, doing other. Other strange, uh, strange uh, uh, updates. What, what yeah. uh, possibly the, the most important, the, the most difficult part? It, it was not not really that difficult, but but, but it, it sounded very difficult. Was uh, converting um, RMT player, the, the music player, uh, to work yeah. in uh, ROM. Uh, it it it, it mm. was heavily self-modifying code, so I ha had to rewrite large portions of uh, of this uh, uh, player to, to be able to run uh, to be able to run it from uh, ROM, not not from uh, read uh, read um, uh, you know random access memory. RAM, yeah. Uh, RAM, yeah, and so so uh, another another uh, issue that that we struggled a bit was uh, were, were controls. Obviously, uh, they they are yes. different, and we found out that they are not being emulated correctly uh, in anywhere else but Altera. So uh, oh. so so what's what's the issue? All other um, uh, emulators are to um, are um, um, f uh, like uh, th they uh, uh, they forgive uh, forgive your uh, your uh, 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 coding mistakes or not understanding the, uh, oh. the inner working of the controller system. So, uh, so we we made our game. It works perfectly in uh, in emulator uh, that yeah. I was using. That was at Atari 800. I'm working on yeah. Linux, so Altera is not native to me. So I was not testing it with Altera, and uh, right. th then we tried it with a different emulator. Pff, doesn't work. Someone tested it uh, for us on uh, a real machine. Doesn't work. And fortunately, Pharaon, uh, author of Altira, came to the to the uh, 
uh, thread on Atari Age and to told us uh, what should be done. So, uh, oh, so, wow. so yeah, we had we had uh, solid help from uh, big guys like uh, Farrell. Yeah. Wow. Uh, on this on this note, we also found two bugs in Matt's compiler. Th those were fixed <laughs> by wow. Teba. Uh, we yeah. also got uh, got uh, through the infamous uh, uh, indirect jump six five zero two bug uh, we had to rewrite uh, a portion of, of, of the game quite large because it was all based on those in, indirect jumps we had to rewrite it to use uh, to use um, uh, stack to uh, to do it uh, a different way around so so uh, that's interesting that that during development of, of the of that game we we got into to the edge of uh, of uh, several tools and several uh, 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 problems with uh, not only with emulators but but also with real hardware and oh and jack uh, fixed uh, fixed his uh, IDE uh, uh, Fudsen. I don't know know how to pronounce it. W uh, U S D N. That's that's the okay. uh, development uh, development um, environment. That's beautiful and great. And he fixed several uh, little and bigger. Uh, no, the, those are small things. But he also fixed fixed uh, some things that I noticed during this uh, this whole development process so it was uh, it was tough it it, uh, it, it went through uh, two two different uh, compilers several uh, two, two <laughs> different uh, not compilers but assemblers uh, so yeah. several uh, several uh, other tools uh, uh, many um, uh, emulators and also the re real machine and so that that was quite a journey <laughs> no kidding and and i you probably never would have thought that a game like scorch mm -hmm. would be on the cutting edge pushing the limits of very very mature emulators and in, yeah and, yeah and yeah, environments absolutely. and you think oh it's a simple tank game they shoot bullets like, yeah, and th how that's, complex could it be, right? <laughs> uh, and that's the reason why uh, we know at least ten other attempts to to make uh, this game um, on eight-bit oh, computers, wow. on on Commodore, on, uh, on Commodore. The super famous group tried uh, tried to make it, right. and um, there's a. BBC uh, half baked version and at least three or four versions on on Atari 8 bit. Yeah. Because because that that's exactly what we thought. Oh boy, how easy it is! <laughs> it's just uh, <laughs> tanks that they are shooting each yeah. other. What difficult <laughs> c can be in that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the game is much more complex than than uh, just this little piece that we did maybe in two two weekends. But then you get into complexity of uh, of uh, weapon purchases, uh, AI tactics, um, uh, right, yes. and uh, and. Uh, uh, t tactics for for purchases, etc., etc. Uh, one little, li very little thing about uh, about uh, this uh, 5200 and Atari version is that all yeah. six, six tanks have different colors, and uh, uh, yeah. that's not that was not that easy because you've got only five colors for for sprites. Uh, right. But when you combine in a certain clever way uh, missiles, yeah, we got this sixth sixth color. In in <laughs> in, in the yeah. uh, in the old versions, there were only uh, five, and sixth one was uh, 
was just white, but uh, yeah, okay. we finally did it. <laughs> yep, a lot, lot of things to overcome that you probably would have never thought that you would run into. Now, yeah. given all that you have been through making this game and working concurrently with 5200 and 8 bit versions, um, mm -hmm. would you ever attempt that again to make a cross compiled game? Or would you just stick to one or the other? It's like, okay, I'm just going to make an 8 bit game and not do a 5200. No, no, no. That that was that was absolute blast. It was very interesting, yeah. and it gave us a lot. Th th this this whole thing. So w when we uh, when we started to pour this, uh, I remember now. I remember co conversations with uh, Mikar, the the musician for for the game, and and the guy who made this 5200 version possible by nagging us day by day to. to to, uh, to, uh, to try this and try that. Um, uh, I, I remember those conversations and and um, uh, it opened uh, several uncharted territories for us. First of all, uh, the game works perfectly on Atari 800, original uh, original Atari, not Excel XE, right. uh, because right. because we we are so tight on memory and stuff that that we were able to to push it to 48k, not uh, not 64, uh, as it was originally. Uh, then uh, uh, Petsush, the other author, already made a C64 version of the uh, of the game. That is uh, that is possible because we have separated the whole uh, the whole uh, hardware abstraction layer and and business logic oh. of the of the game. So so, nice. uh, but by uh, replacing controls and uh, and very few uh, graphic primitives we, we were able to to compile the game uh, on Commodore and uh, it's not playable yet uh, but it will be uh, of course and uh, yep. it it was a very nice nice experience uh, i've got a dream of uh, of uh, uh, porting it to some kind of ob obscure platform like Ori, <laughs> uh, so yeah. so uh, so we will be uh, masters of Ori, uh, and maybe <laughs> nice. Apple Apple to something like this, <laughs> and BBC uh, uh, BBC Micro possibly. So uh, so, so th that was that was quite interesting. We were we were trying to to. Because the the code base of the game is so huge uh, uh, for for an eight bit game, um, we had to employ quite modern uh, uh, techniques and uh, and uh, ways of structuring the code and the functions, etc., uh, etc. Et so so. Uh, I would say that we we are pretty proud of uh, how how much of uh, how dense the code is, how much uh, information we were able to squeeze into this 32 kilobytes. Yeah, it's absolutely astounding, and people are um, really happy about the, the the tanks, the sayings that they have on the screen as well. So funny. And I, I always thought that was cute in the original game, and it's great that you've carried carried over the little text yeah, about the yeah. tanks taunting them or going oh, I'm dead or whatever yeah it's it's so good so mm -hmm. absolutely amazing achievement and, and me following you over the years of the updates and developments thank you thank you seeing for you that had, seeing you add different weapons and just keeping on pushing and pushing pushing with the game and it's it's so great to see it uh, finally out, and I'm sure you're you're really happy about that as well. Oh Thank yeah, you, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. So, anything you'd like to add, or people you'd like to give a shout out to before we let you go? 
Uh, I already already uh, thanked uh, Miker. He was uh, the, the uh, he was spiritus movens. He was the the person who who uh, who was uh, like a coach, uh, making <laughs> us code, 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 code for for nice. two years, uh, more or less. This 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 end end part took more or less uh, two years. Uh, of course, Petrus, uh, the the uh, s- uh, uh, another coder that worked with me, did most of the heavy heavy lifting, like AI and uh, and um, uh, optimized graphics and and stuff like this. Um, uh, it was a, a lot of work, and and it would take me not two years, but another six to. Uh, to get to, <laughs> to this point, especially AI, uh, this uh, it, it it it's really head scratcher to to do everything uh, uh, in uh, uh, you know eight bit uh, eight bit assembler with uh, uh, with fixed point uh, fixed point uh, mathematics uh, of, of very limited uh, usability so. <laughs> So it, it, it's a miracle that it uh, it worked finally, <laughs> and uh, yeah. and there there were many many other people that that I uh, already mentioned like t- mentioned like Tabba like Fireon like uh, Jack uh, like uh, like uh, Fox Fox is is uh, author of uh, uh, one of authors of New- Newman demo the, one of the best Polish uh, coders. And he optimized uh, plot uh, function a lot, and this is important mm. because we are doing uh, uh, thousands of plots uh, uh, every yeah. time. So, so it, it really uh, gave uh, a little bit of um to, to the game. You can notice that things like circles and 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 lines and stuff are pretty quick. Yeah. They are very yeah. very well optimized. Maybe not the best in <laughs> yes. the world, but they are not bad. Yeah, the the detail in this game is is astounding. The 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 gravity pulling down the dirt after an explosion. Yeah. It's just such such detail is absolutely it looks beautiful on the screen. Yeah, so the, the uh, look of the gla- you, game is so yes. slick. And you can turn on more colors. Uh, uh, we 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 wanted. Uh, I asked uh, Albert possibly to 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 consider turning the colorful full version for the 5200. Uh, but we we've got classic looks, so that's okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, for thank being you. on, and thank you so much for making this game and bringing. Um, a version, a port of Scorched Earth into the modern era Thank and you. making it available for the 5200 and 8-bit Thank you. systems. I'm sure a lot of people are appreciative of, of your your. Thank you very much, and thank thank you for thank you for having me. And I was last one. You've got to yes, rest. Did it. Yeah. You closed it out. <laughs> last, last and best. How about that? <laughs> yes. So thank Thumbs you so much once you. again. Yep. And we will see you, you in the Atari Age forums. So bye bye, Pavel. Have a good bye. evening. Have a good evening. Yeah. Bye bye. Well, we did it. We made it. Cats, we made it. Hooray. Wow. 22 releases. Can you believe wow. it? Yes. <laughs> that's that's a huge number. And um, congratulations to all the developers who put in, you know, we we raced through this in whatever, eight hours. Hey, we did it. 7.58. Yep. Look at that. Um, but they put in years and years, oh, that, tens of thousands cumulatively mm. of work. So definitely check out all these games. They're available in the Atari Age store right now. Mm. Uh, they went live today as, <laughs> as we did the Atari Age day, as per usual. Um, so you got a good, uh, a quick preview of some of the games yes. as played by Tanya. <laughs> um, but we've played a lot of these games in a fuller version. Yes. So check yes. out our previous videos on them. Have you played Scorch before on the show? 
I swear we've played it at least once on the okay. eight, the eight bit version of it. Oh, okay, not um, the fifty two hundred. Yeah, so we'll have to play this we again. We will have to. I because wanna... it's multiplayer. Well, this could be a four player game. And I was uh, screwing up the controls there, so I kept waving my white flag, and I'm like, why am I not doing anything? <laughs> but I realized it's because of the um, the controls for uh, activating your defensive and offensive weapons. So I would like to read the manual and play it again sometime because it seems like a really fun game, and it, it very, as you say, worms like kind of a game yeah just um, setting our video camera here oh something something funky happened no because i know it's off <laughs> i know it's just gone off a bit in stream. oh in color or no just in timing i just know it did and now it's off completely. and now there it's not coming back home <laughs> that's fine okay. uh because you do a, an eight hour stream things get oh, wonky yeah. wonky 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 yeah um yeah so you've seen a good quick preview Go check them out in the Atari Age store if yes. you want to buy them. Um, massive thank you to all the developers for um, putting aside uh, a bit of time today to appear on the show. Yeah. Actually, we can put the chat up on the screen now. Um, uh, ding, 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 ding. Yes, we oh, do yes. have some yeah, cat, yeah. cat feeding to do. I think we need to do that. And a uh, big thank you to Al, mm -hmm. of course. I Al, mean, he, who says he's feeling a bit wonky at this point. Oh my so. God, my my head <laughs> is my head is not here. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Everybody who made this happen, yeah. the cats. You know, I want to yeah. thank the cats. No, um, but yeah, huge thank you to Al um, for um, getting me these games to, so we can sh unbox them and show them on the stream. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I I can't wait to dive into some more yeah. of these a little bit later. We're gonna reserve Scorch. I think so for the four player day. Oh yes, because you can. Yes. Because it is a four that's player gonna be fun on the fifty two hundred because it yeah. has four ports. Oh, that's awesome. But it is not simultaneous. But it is a four player game. No, it's yeah. but you each take your turn. We're also gonna be that's playing perfect. Mule yeah. as well, which that's is not perfect. a simultaneous four player game too. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a perfect opportunity because we have a four player day coming up January sometime maybe. Yeah. Next, next retro, retro night. night too. I think there would be go. really fun. Oh, uh, Al says, thank you, Tanya and James, for hosting this eight-hour stream, as well as the advanced prep work involved. You guys Pseudo rock. Pseudographics, 5 a.m. My goodness, Pseudographics. Pseudographics, you're always up so late. I know. Thank you for um, yeah, tuning in with us. So okay. I'm give you Scorch. And, and then we'll get some cat treats going. They're hungry. Move things around here. Hungry cats. Well, no, they're not hungry. Well, they want treats. They're desperate. They're like they, they're hungry, hungry for treats. Give us our food. I'm I'm feeling a bit hungry. I need some treats well, right yeah, now. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> we had two cookies and we, we had missed two our cookies. dinner. Well, we're gonna have dinner now. Yes. We are. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get these. I can get them things. in. I can get them in. Yeah. They well, were the other way around, them. so. Yeah, but I don't want them to scratch. I don't want them to scratch. <sighs> There you go. And I'm going to move this table out of the way so we get a better view of the of cats. Of the cats? Okay. Um, lots of tables. Lots of tables today. I have to rearrange things because of the special circumstances. So mm -hmm. let's bring, let's move this cat cam up a bit. Then aim it down a bit. You get a kind of behind the scenes look. <laughs> with that webcam in a different position. There we go. Actually, I can put it like over here and then the colors are a little bit more to what we usually do. Hey kittens, are you excited for treats? I'm going to ring the bell and get you all excited again. Let's move this up out of the way. Move so it was RC70 who triggered the treat in? I think so. <laughs> There's a Tars. <laughs> you hear him just launch himself down the Come stairs. Come down the stairs. Yes. I wouldn't mind having a 30 minute pause in the middle of the show for next time. That's a good idea. Like we did for, need a bit of for a us pause. To eat, <laughs> for us to have some drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, let's. Um, so we're going to get the, the bedding. bedding. Get that started again. So who will win this time? Atari did oh, very well last time. Atari did amazing. And uh, for those of you who've stuck around to the end, you get another round of betting. Betting on cats. The only place where you can bet on cats. That's right. Ringing bells. I, I can probably guarantee that. At least Cat on Twitch. Betting. 
on yeah, Twitch. Yeah, cat betting on Twitch. Until it takes off, and then there's just whole like <laughs> categories of cat betting. Oreos were were tasty, but a very tasty. Mm, sufficient <laughs> two Oreos for eight hours? No, uh, not enough, it's, really. It's it's debatable. Yeah. So you have two minutes to uh, pick your cat and we pick how pick how well we the cats Sprite. will do. Um, Atari's the gray cat. I'll go over it again. He is a very good ringer of bells. Yes. But he's a very slow eater. Yes. Sprite is very distracted, so not a great ringer of bells, but he's very fast at eating. And he, well, he can hit it fast if he gets on a roll, so. Yeah, so it's like a video game where yeah. you, you have stats. Yeah. And one goes up and one okay. goes yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. Um, Atari H says, how do you bet? Oh, click, click on the predict, predict button on the chat. On the chat at the top. Yeah. If you're watching it through some other weird format. It you, might not work. It but... may not show up. So you have to go to your original device yeah. that you're watching. We'll flip it, it over so people can oh. see the betting there. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Let's we'll adjust it. the camera in a second reset so that you can see it. Points. You're just getting a nice <laughs> laid back view of Sprite at the moment. Yeah, this might be better out here stretched out. There we go. That's a little bit better. A yeah. bit more wider angle. Yeah, it's coming in so a second. About 15 more seconds. Yeah. Uh, it does work on mobile. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it should. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> or Some tab people have... on mobile. Oh, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Somebody will have to help you. It doesn't work on Fire TV app, but it does on my laptop. Ah, uh, okay. okay. So certain well, apps, yeah. The betting is over. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's very short. It's just two minutes long. Is this the right way? I think it's the opposite way. Yeah. Just to match up the colors. It really so, doesn't matter. So hold hold the top down and put them down just so that they're, they're centered in the screen. Let's just hold see. the bells so they can't ring them. Right there. Yep. Okay. Yep. You ready, cats? Are you ready? All right. Let's go. And let it begin. Oh, oh one each. Ring. One each. Double ring. And the door's open, so Atari's taking it out into the, <laughs> oh, into no. the hallway. Oh, no. You'll have to All right, close Sprite. the door when He's he comes in. He's coming back. That's okay. There we go. Oh, finishing his chewing. What is he eating? What are you eating? That's three, three for Sprite. Three for Sprite. One for Atari. Come on. There oh, you go. Atari, here he comes. He's, he's coming back. He's 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 recovering. Sprite oh, again. Sprite four to two now. Oh, oh. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Oh, oh that was Sprite again. Sprite is destroyed. Atari, hit the bell. You Buddy. Want, don't you want treats? Look at the bell. Oh, a little harder. Oh, that's oh, Sprite again. Six to two. Oh, no. <laughs> he's lost it. No, he got it. Hit the bell. Hit it. Atari. Good there kitty. We go. Good nice kitty. Solid ring. Who's next? Oh, oh Sprite. Sprite. Seven to three. He's just destroying oh, this round. Oh, Atari. That was Catch. quicker that time. Good job. A little job. bit quicker. Yep. I love Sprite's cat brows. There you go. <laughs> Do you have cat brows? Yeah, he does. A little bit. The... That was oh. Atari. Yep. There oh, we go. Sprite. Sprite. And he's at game point. It's nine to five. Sprite is going to win, but. By how much? Oh, oh Atari. Nine to six. Oh, Sprite's having trouble. Oh, it's an opportunity for Atari to catch up. Did you give up? Nope. And oh, it's over. game point. Ten oh, to six. my nope. goodness. Too late. Too late. More than three. <laughs> I well, feel so guilty when I'm pulling the bells away. Where there he's you going. go. Ah. Some treats for you. Ooh, Cat feet. Went completely the, the other way. It did. You never know. Well, if you bit bet three on Sprite, you came up heads. Yes, you did. Sprite by wow. four whiskers. Wow! Wow! Another Ooh. another um, uh, long shot bet. Three people. Three people. Uh, rich so cash. Definitely nice. now. Live yep. up to your name. Full of full of cash. <laughs> So they only bet 700, but they got and back 16,000. Wow. That's a good bet. That is a very good bet. So congratulations to Rich So Cash. Yeah. you are now. Atari H, I was robbed. Yeah, two blowouts today. Yeah, Complete one side or the side. other. Your <laughs> Pocock obviously went the other, other way this time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so sad. Uh, that was fun. Congratulations, Sprite. You came back. Got your treats.
Good on you. Oh, my. Can we get a post-game interview from you? Pierre, oh, Pierre Pocock, 3K on a 123. Hmm? Oh, overall across the... What do you have to say? Hey, Sprite, what do you have to say to the to your viewers? Hmm? To your fans? To hey, to your fans? Nope. He says, I'm, I'm hungry for more. I'm hungry for more! <laughs> <laughs> Wonder which cat got juiced by chewing cords. <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Oh, beer poke beer poke has been doing well. Wow, three three K on hundred and twenty three. And and he he came up tops the other yep. round, so That's right. Uh, so we're just, done. Yeah, I just had to focus and be better than the competition. That's pretty much it. You can talk, talk to about my that. publicist. I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. Lick, lick, lick. yeah, yeah. Grooming now. Thanks to everyone yes. who stuck around, at least till the end here. Uh, Carl G, obviously one of the developers yeah. today. Mike, Mike Soul, Soul, another developer. RC7E, uh, BR Pocock, Dan, AVC, Chelsea, Donnie, Mal, Al, at Atari Age. Yeah. Uh, Pseudo Graphics, Mini B, another developer. Prow7, Render, Render Ghost, Kev, uh, Vitoko, Pseudo Graphics, Staying Text Up Rich. Late. Yeah. Chalcedony Mao. MK Smith, another developer. Thank you so much. Uh, 8 Bit Poet. Uh, JFD62780 asked a lot of questions. Thank you so much for the questions. Kathy Man2D. Lots of names. Rod Castler. Rod Castler. Hey, Rod Castler. Hey. Um, Oof. Lots of people. And yeah. that's it for the chatters. Let's see if anybody said anything at the end. Nope. People are keeping track of the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun game. It is a fun game. Um, so we're going to be back on Tuesday mm. for our holiday show. And we have a special secret reveal from Muddy, Muddy Funster. Funster. That's right. I'm so we'll see what game that, that is. It's for the 7800. Yes. It's not specifically a holiday game but it happened to land on that day mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll act as it's it's a present for everyone the unveiling the unboxing no box but the <laughs> unveiling of a new game from muddy funster and uh we've been playing some other holiday games mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. with snow in them or something something like something something christmasy or holiday -y or do you have a santa hat do you have a hat? I thought you might. I think I do. It might be buried in the back somewhere, but I do somewhere. Mm, yeah. yeah. Buried. I'll find it. <laughs> um, oh, and Al says, was a great show. Thank you to everyone who showed up, especially to all the developers who took the time out of their day. And yes. James and Tanya for making Thank all this Thank you for happen. everyone for joining us and, and agreeing to chat with us or yes. even just sending answers to your questions. Yep. Everyone were able to make it. Yep. Yeah. Gave, gave something to the show today. And yep. uh and for the wonderful games and the opportunity to play them, it's fantastic. And yeah, uh, it's great. Yeah. It's 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 draining. <laughs> it's a long day. It's a long day. But it's I don't worth it. feel that bad, but I am hungry. <laughs> yeah, you just play games. <laughs> well, I did. You did all the talking. My brain had to keep thinking. Yeah, the yeah. Whole time. You're here. The thinking part is, yeah. is 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 done now. So. Yeah. Um, so we'll be back on Tuesday yes. evening show, okay. and then we're off for a couple of shows. Well, yeah. A yep. little bit of a break, and then we're back before uh, New Year's. So back we'll be for back a New for New Year's, Year's show. countdown show. Yeah, that'll be fun. So uh, we will see you all on Tuesday, yes. and also hungry. Yes, we are. Yes. So we'll see you then. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone. everyone. Have a great night. Have a great night and weekend. The rest of it, I guess, a couple hours. Bye. Bye.